<laughs> okay, welcome back. Another unclicked without Dennis Anderson. We are here with Morgan Wade. Mm -hmm. um, I guess Dennis quit the podcast. What a jerk. Yeah. Uh, he didn't officially quit. Indefinite break, I think mm -hmm. is what we're going to call it. But uh, the kid filming the video part, he's just uh, a little pulled thin and wants to step back for a little bit. But yeah. uh, solo for Trey, solo for you. And then hopefully going forward, we have another co-host. He couldn't make it today, but um, so... Won't fired be just on the me. first day fired on the first day <laughs> literally barely hired so um we'll uh, keep who that is under wraps for the for the time being but for now we have mr was a the, the best week morgan wade that thing yeah. yeah so i think it was supposed to be a w going back and forth i think it was i always thought of it as a box like it was like a a, yeah, a video camera this, right yeah something like was, that was it like that i don't remember i, I haven't know. seen that in a long time like you posted that that clip yeah. from that and i that's probably the first time i've seen that in years yeah it's like when i started talking i had no idea that it was my voice like when i was watching it so yeah <laughs> what you bought you bought something with so your tired. money <laughs> so tired i think I, I just i'm just like i'm i must have been so tired <laughs> it was cold too it was cold yeah so me tired and cold doesn't work mm -hmm. so uh i have to give a shout out to unclicked <laughs> Fuck. I need another host. <laughs> <laughs> Detraction Coffee for the unclicked. You gonna shout yourself out there? Yeah, right. <laughs> shout out to me. <laughs> Seven dollars from every bag goes to get somebody flown out here to do the show. Nice. I'm pretty sure I should hit them up because I'm uh, last time I talked to them we were pretty much there. So, nice. um, but pick up a bag of that. Uh, who would you fly in? Who would I fly in? Mm -hmm. mm. Who That's do you want to see? Oh man, I hadn't thought about that. Give me a second. Matt one. Hoffman. I knew that was the answer. I said one second. I took a second. So how is <laughs> that? That is one of my questions. So shout out to Hoffman, yeah. of course. I always, I, I think it's still on the ride Twitter. Just the bio was praise Matt Hoffman. So shout out to, yeah. <laughs> shout Matt's, out to Matt Matt's Hoffman. Awesome. Um, he's doing good after the car accident. I saw he's posting again. Have you? Yeah, have he's you? doing better. I, I haven't talked to him personally, mm -hmm. but um, I've been in contact with april mays a yeah. little bit about it and she's kind of given me a couple updates but said he's doing good yeah so yeah, doing a lot better it's gonna be a while though i mean head injuries are head injuries so yeah yeah i, I mean it's scary shit crazy enough it's the first yeah. time matt's ever hit his head um so <laughs> he's taking it he's taking it really easy <laughs> let's not start off the podcast with lies yeah but that i mean was, it's that great. was an obvious one <laughs> fuck i mean he had that other car accident years ago with yeah, the cadillac dude. yeah and then it's like, like this a is semi just... drove over his car yeah thankfully, he should have died basically thankfully it drove over the front of his car not the part he was sitting in yeah but... so yeah it seemed a little scary for a little bit because you weren't whenever you don't have much info yeah. it's always a little bit scary so it's good to see him posting so yeah. a few posts uh the other day so yeah i mean they like april hit me up before it was public just to let me know so you know the whole just so you don't find out through other yeah, things and yeah. i was like oh dang but yeah uh but yeah apparently they're expecting a full recovery so cool great to hear and his wife is good and no yeah. kids in the car and stuff like that yeah. so, so uh definitely. why heart goes out to jc because she's she's had it rough i know what a strong woman <laughs> yeah she's awesome <laughs> insane <laughs> imagine just being married to matt for 30 years and just being like okay yeah. so you're gonna go to uk to be part of an event okay cool oh you're gonna go jump off a cliff today <laughs> Like I thought you I were think just that was kind go. of a spur of the moment thing though. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Oh, you jumped off of a cliff today then basically. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Savage. He, I mean, we're going off on tangent already, but literally <laughs> battle of Hastings. He's like, Oh yeah. yeah. He's like, show me a photo. And I'm like, Oh, when was this? He's like, Oh, about like four hours ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like you woke up at dawn and jumped off yeah. of a cliff today. Like base jumped. Like you are awesome. You are savage. I saw he showed me like I saw the the GoPro footage. It was so sick. Too. I can't even fathom it. Even you've jumped out of planes before, right? Yeah. yeah. First time I ever got an airplane, I jumped out of it. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 I was four. What, how old? Wait, wait, what do you mean? I was uh, seventeen mm -hmm. or eighteen, maybe. I'd never been on an airplane before. Never flew anywhere, done anything. And so you drove to Roots Jam. I drove everywhere, yeah. Yeah, okay. I always we always drove everywhere, yeah. And um, I literally was with my cousin, and it was his birthday or whatever, and, and he was like, not he was forbidden from skydiving by his parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, it's Greg is this guy right here, and um, <laughs> uh, 
he basically said, oh, we're going to go. We were in South Carolina. I forget what town it was in. It was, it was like three or four hours away. He had some friends in another town. He said, we're going to go visit my buddy, whatever. And we basically got in the car. Like, we're going skydiving. I was like, sweet. <laughs> so we went, did it, came back, and literally, like... Uh, Asked for forgiveness? No. I actually told the story at his funeral. Oh. And that was the first time his mom heard about it. Really? That's yeah. amazing you kept Isn't that, that secret for, the, for that Isn't long. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Damn. It was, it, but it was a fun memory. So. Yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. That's cool for them to hear, you yeah. know, like willful disobedience. It was, it was like, literally like, she was like, if you do this, I will kill you. <laughs> And he was like, all right, so we're not telling mom. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. And so you, uh, well, shout out to Greg. I don't know his last name, but. Alia. Yeah. Yeah. Rest Gregory of Alia. Yeah. Yep. He was a police uh, officer murdered in the line of duty. So. Fuck. So savage. So just. Mm-hmm. Whole other subject. Yeah. That's a whole, whole other thing. subject. Yeah. That's, um, you drove out from Texas. You're here with the family. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Natalie's family basically got some like hotels and stuff and we're doing like a little family get together out here in San Diego and hanging out on the beach. And we were like, yeah, we'll go. So we drove out. Cool. We're going to, going to West after this. So Woodward West. Woodward West. Yeah. And that's dirt week. Cause they yeah, just finished the trails week, yeah. up there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I talked oh. to Hucker. Uh, a month or two back or whatever and he was like you want to come out and i was like well i think i'll be in san diego so yeah sure cool yeah so yeah. a couple of days there and then just beeline at home mm-hmm. yeah we'll be out there for like most of the week i guess and cruise home cool that's good nice little, little trip been having yeah. fun so far what's your uh what's your daily life back home in tyler daily life yeah well i mean i guess like normal and then you know the last year has been probably a little bit off I'm sure because I know you do a lot of shows on the regular yeah, basis. I do, I do a lot of shows. Yeah. Um, whenever they come up, I jump on them because why not make money riding my bike? Yeah. Um, and it's just fun doing shows. Is always has always been something that I've enjoyed doing. And um, yeah, so when that comes up, I go and usually it's around the Texas, you know, like Houston, Dallas, State Fair stuff. Uh, no, these are like school shows. Oh, school shows and stuff. Okay. They're they're happening now. The state fairs are about to kick off. So literally after. Let's see. I think I'm doing a Odessa fair for like 10 days or something like that in early September. And then late September, Texas State Fair kicks off. That's 28 days straight of oh, wow. three shows a day. And then after that, straight into ASA high school tour, which is like what we were doing here last time I was yeah, here. Yeah. I hung out with you. Uh, a couple, I guess it was two years ago, wasn't it? Or was it a year ago? Probably two years ago. Yeah. Because I was like. It was 19, was, early, early 2019. Yeah, because yeah, that was so two years ago. Yeah. Because I was like shortly yep. after ride. Yep, and then uh, shoot straight out of that is I think I believe the Miami Dade County Fair, which is like another twenty days. So you have a so. full schedule of yeah. shows. Yeah, okay. which is good because money will start coming in again. <laughs> yeah, so that was <laughs> that, that puts me into like December, I think. Yeah, so I mean, on a, like shows seem to be kind of like the uh, expected money. It mm-hmm. seems like yeah. So that's mm-hmm. some, but then with a. You know, when you're home, what are you doing? I, I know at some point you said you don't really ride that much at home because you didn't have a park. Right, right. Yeah. But we built the skate park. That's what I was. So yeah, yeah trying to set that one up. Yeah. That's, um, so that's, yeah, like I mostly hang out with Cotter at home. My son, he's a little five year old dude that's just gripping and ripping everywhere he goes, which is so much fun right now. Um, but yeah, I was able to build a skate park one town over in Longview, Texas, mm-hmm. which is a half hour from my house. <laughs> The skate park I grew up riding in Tyler, uh, the one from Road Tools Five, that that one is twenty eight minutes from my house. Okay, so it's, so it's the same same. How time. big is Tyler? Tyler's hundred thousand people, maybe something like that. A hundred thousand very spread out people. Yeah, ish. Texas. I mean, I'm sorry, it was California nature of it. A hundred thousand people, twenty eight minutes away. That's a big city. I mean, well, you it know. Take, it's on the other side of town. I have okay. to drive through town to get to it. That's okay. why it takes that long to get okay. there. It's so a big county. Yeah. I can be in town in like ten minutes. Okay. So, but we live outside of town a little bit. So, like, you know, you've got Tyler. We live in the outskirts. There's actually a little town, like a. It's not a suburb, even. It's just like another little town over that we live closer to, but we have a Tyler address. So. Okay. Okay. Um, how'd that, how'd that part come about? Cause it seemed like, I mean, at least from the, the, you know, thousand mile perspective, that was like, you got to design the park, you got mm-hmm. to build the park. Like how does, how oh, does yeah. something like it that a, happen? It, it was a dr- dream setup basically. Yeah. So like, 
uh, my buddy Brian Dodson, mm-hmm. who has been in like the local like East Texas riding scene for years and years. Back when I had the warehouse, he was one of the dudes that was always helped build the warehouse and was at the warehouse with mm-hmm. us. Um, he has been pestering the city of Longview to build a skate park for like it took him like three years basically to get it done. But uh, eventually came to the, to the agreement that if he raised you know forty grand, the city would match it, and then we could build a skate park. And they gave us a tennis court, like a dual one court with two you know, yeah. courts on nets on it and basically said we could have that to, to build the ramps on. That's crazy. You did all that for 80 grand. Well, yeah, that, I mean, he raised a little more than that. So we went a little, a little bit above that, but not, not by much, Yeah. but, uh, also like I, through dealings that I've had with skate light in the past, like I, I put a sticker on my helmet at X games in 2019 to get skate light for a ramp in my yard, which I'm still working on getting that put together so oh that's cool hopefully i'll have a nice big ramp in the yard at some point but i've got a good relationship with skate light and uh they basically hooked us up pretty pretty good on on that end and made it so that we could do everything we did so you you brought up several things that i do want to talk about you had the 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 warehouse Mm -hmm. ramps you first off then you had the 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 Tyler Park that obviously was the Road Fools Five mm-hmm. chest protector <laughs> type thing. Little oh, kid, just saw Jay Miron chest protector on alley oop uh, 540 thing and just busted it. Like it was so nice. I thought his name was Simon Tadron or something crazy. Um, that I know you've discussed several times, but I feel like that had to be like a a pinnacle moment. And I and I feel like people have talked about their reaction to you but you've never talked about what it was like seeing that video the road fools fools? yeah like it comes out and you're like holy crap i'm in this video with all these guys (laughs) like did you know who they were when they showed up okay you know like i don't i mean you did an alley of five but you could have also just been like I don't even know what that trick's called that I just oh, did. Oh, no, you no, know, no. I, I, was, I, was well in, I was well into it. Okay. I knew who everybody was. Oh, yeah. I had posters of everybody on the wall already. Okay. And so I had watched the other props. Like, I think Road Fools 3 and 4 were on, like, repeat at my house at, yeah. that, at that point in time. And so did you know they were going to be there? Uh, No, I didn't. You were just, mm-hmm. just an I normal just showed up, I just showed up to go ride the park. And had, and had a pro ever been to your park? Is this uh, like is this like your first interaction with like sitting on a deck with pros, or is this? I'm just trying to wonder if this. I'm like, is this a think. because from the outside perspective, this is, you know, the this was your first little. Yeah, people got a I, glimpse I learned, of you. I learned backflips the next week. Okay, on that horrible box jump. Yeah, flat. It was like a flat wedge yeah. landing. Literally the next week, I just I was like, I'm doing it. And I just tried it and landed on my head first time. <laughs> well, not on my head. I got my hands out, but I stopped upside down. I did like the scorpion where like your head hits the back tire <laughs> and like stopped and I was like, uh, and landed up, you know, in a handstand basically. And yeah. then the next try, I pulled it and I cleared the whole deck. No, no lake jump, no mattress. I had jumped in a lake a okay. couple times on like right. one of those like cheesy huffies and stuff, yeah. but never like a, a couple times, maybe not. I I didn't like train to do a flip or anything like that. I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and I tried it, and it didn't really work the first time. Second try, I pulled it clean. That's Third try was the next day, and I broke my forks because <laughs> I augered in, you know, front end and first. Augered in. I went through f- three or four pairs of forks within like a couple weeks of that. Just trying backflips. I could I could see that. I would pull one, and especially like, yeah, even if you pull, even if would... you pulled it clean on that landing, just like casing <laughs> a little bit, like that landing. No, like when I pulled it, I pulled it. Like I yeah. went all the way. Like I was going like down the landing. I was I was going <laughs> I'm fast. Sure. Yeah. But then the ones that I just went up, those are the ones where I would catch front wheel on the deck. Because it was a small box too. It was like a it was eight full, foot deck. It was a four foot tall though, or something like that? No, right? or was it, it was five foot tall. I think. Man, it's been a long time. I yeah. want to say it was five foot tall, okay. but uh, it was like an eight foot. It was a kind of a mellow lip and, an, and a, <laughs> a wedge landing. So. Yeah. What a so when you saw Road Fools Five, what was your reaction? Because they weren't necessarily like they weren't mean, but they were like they're like there's this fucking crazy kid looking <laughs> oh, like dude, Tabron. No, I was stoked. Oh, okay, I was stoked. Like first off, like Troy McMurray was and is one of my favorite riders. Yeah. Like back then, like amazing. It's, second to Hoffman that'd be pretty sick actually yeah I guarantee yeah Troy's got some amazing stories yes he does (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, he does. But yeah, no, I, I like SM Video Four. I had that on repeat too, yeah. and like that video part is still one of my favorite video parts. Yeah. Um, so that was I was stoked. Like I don't, I still like you just said they were kind of making fun of me or whatever, like, and I was like, that's no, the no. first time I've ever even thought of that. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Literally, right now is the first time I've ever even thought that. You know, I'm like, like a... wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have I been getting played all these years? No, you know what I mean. Though no. it wasn't like it was like totally. You know, it was like what's the quote? The looking like freaking Tavron yeah, out there. Jamie yeah, Ron. something like Jamie that. Jamie on chest protector, look Simon Tavron. Yeah, 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 something like mm-hmm. that. You know. But, yeah, they didn't know my name. That's fine. I didn't care. Yeah, I was just stoked to, that it made it in the in the cut. That's cool. Because I mean, cool. obviously, I I lived it, and yeah. and it was cool. That that was that was the first time I was actually around like a lot of like big name pros, and it was cool to see that they were just normal. Yeah. It was just a session. It wasn't like you, you're so used to watching videos where there's like music and it's edited and everyone pulls everything and there's a crash every now and then, but for the most part, everyone's just ripping and shredding. And then you're there in real life witnessing it. And it's just like, Oh wow. That took 20 tries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they can't just do all of it first go. Yeah. Pre, and, I mean, pre, pre internet, that was yeah. the glimpse into how it was on a road trip. That's what made mm-hmm. road full such a, such a magical thing for a lot of yeah. people. I think they kind of got away from that in the later years. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when I, whenever I started getting invited on the trips like that farther in, uh, and probably even a couple before that, it kind of got towards, we have to have the gnarliest riding and it was less about the trip mm-hmm. and more about the riding, which yeah. of course it's about the riding, but like what made those video like the reason i love those first like handful is because of all the the footage of everyone just goofing off yeah yeah kind of the the somewhat, oh my gosh a yeah. little like, bit like, of a like robo with with like the finger bikes and oh, stuff yeah. like holy yeah. crap like that was hilarious yeah yeah and like that's like that's the stuff that i think makes makes uh the the professional riders real people to yeah. to the kids watching for sure yeah what uh how old were you when when that all went down? I just got my driver's license. Sixteen. Okay. Oh, seven, maybe seven. No, I was, I was sixteen. I was turning. No, wait a minute. That was that was two thousand. Hold on, my brain's slow right now. That was two thousand. So I think that was the first. So I was seventeen, about to turn eighteen. Okay, young man. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know that they filmed the Alley of Five? Or did you know? Oh like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They did they were, ask they were, you and stuff? Oh yeah, I, 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 of course. You know, I'm the local kid that, like, go. I, I, I'm I sure went, you went hard that night. I went well. In general, I always rode harder than everybody else. Of course. In the parks. That that was you know I was the dude. You know, every skate park has the dude that yeah. does that. You know, goes, the local bro, the local dude. Yeah, and that was my title at the park, not officially, but that was as far as what we're talking about yeah and so of course i get there it's funny like because there were some trails that some of the other guys were working on on the other side of town and everyone was like hey yo let's meet up at the trails today so there was a trail session going on and i say trails it was like two jumps you know yeah in some like clay and sand which is like should have backed with that it was great oh yeah um but they all over there and i was going to come to the park to pick up one of the other dudes that didn't have his driver's license yet and take him out to the trails. We didn't have cell phones yet. Uh, no one had, like, there was no way to tell. Yeah, so like, I got there leaving. and I was like, nope, not going to the trails. Yeah. So we ended up staying at the park, obviously. And the other dudes were all just like, what? Come on. They were all, they, they were oh, pissed. Oh, sure. They were, be, yeah. I, I would still talk about that today. But it, it like, wasn't, I mean, what can you do? It's yeah, not like, yeah. it's not like they could, we did it on purpose or anything like that. No, there was nothing we sure. could do about it. But yeah, the, the other dudes, sorry, Cece. Um, <laughs> they, they all kind of got, got left out there yeah, and missed out, but it was, it was cool getting to, getting to be a part of that. And yeah, they, I mean, I, I was just riding around, you know, show off mode. Cause I'm the little local kid. I'm just like, oh, I got to do all everything I know how to do. And I was just hitting everything I could. That's cool. That's cool. And I tried the L85 cause that was like, I had done it a handful of times. I think at that point I had it where I could do it, you know, pretty regularly. And I, I think I tried it. And of course everyone was like, what was that? It's like <laughs> this goofy kid with the full face and the chest protectors. <laughs> so, I mean, when, when I watched the props interview, uh, your mom said something like you got laughed out of the chest protector. Is there an actual story to that or no? No, not really. No. I mean, like obviously like, it's silly looking. So. 
<laughs> Understandable. <laughs> I don't. I don't recall a specific instance of yeah. anything that was like that. And I, to be honest, I don't. I've never given a crap about what other yeah. people think. Yeah. Like literally, I don't care. Mm-hmm. So if somebody was making fun of me, fun of me for it, I probably had no idea. I mean, obviously, I had no idea Troy was making fun of me. I don't think. Come on. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that there was like, you know, if you are don't care if you're yeah, if you're a little kid on like a, you know, and you, this video comes out and you're like, oh, my God, like and then it's just not, you know, perfect. Like you could I could see it just being, yeah. I'm, you know, these kids, these you, kids these days. Have you watched the movie Monsters, Inc.? Uh yeah I have. There's a scene at because the start I'm a, because I'm a dad. Yes, now. yes. Where where Mike gets his photo on the front of the magazine and it's covering his face. Yes. And he's like I got on the magazine and, and it's the like, barcode oh, right over his face. I'm on the magazine and he's excited about. It. Yeah. That was how it was. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you can imagine that. So. Yeah. No, that is. A, if, a, the, if there was a barcode over my face, I yeah. wouldn't have cared. What a great analogy. <laughs> 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 so you go from Road Fools Five and then how do you end up going to Roots Jam? Do you have um, Do you have sponsors? Is it your parents and or you and your friends? Did your parents take you, take you? Like how do you drive out there? With yeah, them? how do you? Who funds the trip? You know, I'm pretty sure I paid out of pocket to go myself. I want to say I was with like the Empire crew before Empire. I think it was before Empire. It's a trend. It was trend back then. Yeah, but um, man, who was I with? I think Joel Moody was. I think we we it was like a road trip. We all oh, road really? tripped out to it. Yeah. Okay. So you were in the scene at this point. Yeah. Empire's yeah. letting you in. Okay. Yeah. I just. Yeah, uh, I, I feel mean, like there's. I, I knew a... Tina and Tom way back in the day, and all the guys because we would get out to Austin. And I'd ride the you know the Ramp Ranch comps and stuff. Okay. So I knew all those guys. Oh, yeah. and, you know. Um, Do you have footage in those old those mm-hmm. old ones? Yeah. I should oh, yeah. dig that up. If you look up the uh, T1 FBM comp. Hmm. The one that Taj, Taj did the gap yeah. to pegs at the top. Yeah. yeah, I did a flip to sprocket on the this spine. My, my more Taj references from the the tray one. I was like, I was like, I was a Taj nerd, so I only remember Dude, Taj's. Yeah. Taj's oh yeah, Dude, Taj. is that the Buckins? Is that the Buckins tail tap contest? Uh, the what? The Jimmy Buckins tail tap from around the world. I don't remember that. Oh geez, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it was it was a comp that like obviously. <clears throat> Taj and yeah. Crandall put yeah. on, yeah. Um, but oh yeah, I had that was I was freshly on Mutiny, and you know because I wrote I was riding a green like lime green looking that, not yeah. lime green but it was kind of a dark green like Punisher, okay, which is like essentially a flatland frame. Steve had tube, short top tube. It was like the only thing that that Steve Inge had because mm-hmm. I had broken all the other frames he sent me. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah. How how thickly well those things? I was still breaking them, but um. But yeah, I was riding that frame, so I was only on that one for a short while. Okay, and that's the same. One, I think that was the same one that I was on at the uh, Roots Gym too. So that one the lasted. Roots Gym, I had it for a little while. Not not a lot, maybe six months, something like that. I yeah. don't remember. Yeah, you're probably smoking frames back then. It all blends together. Yeah, all but works. um, but yeah, I was freshly on Mutiny, and I was just doing flip to sprockets on everything I could find. <laughs> I had I had the solid cranks with the one inch spindle. And like the huge crank arms, yeah. and it had uh, the sharp sprocket with like the quarter inch thick teeth and yeah. the motorcycle chains. You yeah. remember how popular those things mm-hmm. were back in the day? The garage door opener chains and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. And uh, that was back in the the Whipperman days too. Those timing timing belt chains or mm-hmm. whatever they were for eighteen wheelers. Yeah. And yeah, there were the middle of that horseshoe bowl. I did flip the sprocket one eighty in the comp and dented the coping <laughs> with my sprocket. <laughs> And that dent was there until the day they like <laughs> took the stuff out. Every time I went back, I would always look and be like, ha, 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 "There it is!" It's like, kang, kang. oh man, it was brutal. It was brutal. Some of the stuff I used to do, I I look back and I'm just like, yeah. in like a in like a what was I thinking type way, like or a, like or like fall, how did I survive? I would fall apart if I tried that right now. Yeah. <laughs> The miracle of yeah. gummy, gummy like dude, ligaments and stuff like that, dude. I, I was talking to Michael yesterday, and uh, we were talking about Woodward. There was a uh, we were out at OB, and there was like a bowl to bowl gap that he was doing. I was like, oh man, that's like the one in lot eight. And we were talking about in lot eight, there was like a it's like a seven foot quarter into the hip bowl, mm-hmm. like that volcano transfer. I used to like, I used to suicide double truck that, and I was like, dude. I don't know. I, I I don't know even know how to start with that trick. So now. like a like a lip to lip, but like an eight yeah. to six, basically. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Steve, like yeah. it's scary to jump, and yeah. like I 
right now I'd look at it and be like, mm, mm, do I, I need wanna, that right now in my wanna, life? I'm not sure I'm going to jump it straight. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I used to go hard in the paint. Yeah, you, you, and <laughs> you and Woodward were a good match. Like yeah. it was like unlocking all the all but the just, all the conversations. Basically, people talked about it for a while, <laughs> and then you would come in and and open the door, yeah. you know, type thing. So open the door. Open keys. the door. The keys. You, you know about the keys, keys for the skate park? I do know about the keys. Yeah, uh, it's cool. Back bringing it back to the skate park. Yeah. So that's I think that's how we got here. So tangent. Yeah. yeah. Back to the skate park. Um, Dot, my friend Dodson raised all the money. It's called Dodson Park. Cool. Dodson's, like Action Sports Complex. Because awesome. we didn't want it to be called a skate park so that no one could say, bikes aren't allowed. Like yeah. kind of crap. Yeah. So it's for everybody. Um, we don't care. Mm -hmm. If you're having fun, come have fun. Yeah. Just don't bring a motor, please. Um, like dirt bikes and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, not yeah. cool. E-bikes um, and all that. <laughs> he basically raised the money and we had uh, a general idea of what we're going to build. And then um, Saxton was originally going to build it. And with Skidmark and uh, some schedule stuff came up and it got pushed back and then the Rona happened and then like it got pushed back even farther and the contract with the city to get the thing done was literally going to expire oh. by like the end of uh, yeah. 2020 or whatever. I forget what the actual date this was. Money, this money but it was actually literally it like, blows up and it disappears afterwards. Apparently, yeah. yes. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, but it was one of those things where it was like, we have to get this done. Yeah. And uh it kind of the way schedules were working out, it just fell in my lap. Cool. And I said, I basically was like, Brian, we can do this. And he was like, okay, let's do it. So I designed it all on SketchUp. And Did you do it for free? No, I got paid. I okay. Got, we got paid. Yeah, because I just was like, it, because just because I mean, I feel like I, I feel like paid 80, as much 90, as, 100 thousand dollars to build a park of that size. So I didn't is, get paid. Like, as much as what, Skidmark would pay, charge, of course. Oh yeah, no, yeah. It, we it was a labor of love. Everyone, yeah. uh, almost everyone, kind of helped with it. Like it was, it was like volunteer basically. Yeah. So I was out there every day for three months straight. Yeah, pretty much. I took a couple break. I used to, I, at first I took week, weekends off, you know, Saturday Sundays off, and then I I had to go do some shows at one point, so I was gone for like a like a week and some change. But then after that, it got kind of got crunch time, and it's like ah, we got to get this done. So I was out there twenty four seven, about fourteen hours a day. Wow. Well, shout out to you. Shout out to twenty four seven. That doesn't make any sense. I was out there seven days a week for about fourteen hours. I'm a day. still out there right now, mentally. Always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we got we got the thing done, and like Skate Light was a massive, massive help. Yeah. Like, had they not given us like a really good like discount on the material, like that would have been our whole budget probably. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's so we were able, and we were able to get all the wood and stuff before the spike in. All that yeah. stuff. I mean, stuff was starting to get more expensive, but it wasn't nothing like it is now. Yeah. And uh, when you buy in bulk, like we did, I mean, we had like a goodness, it was like a thirty thousand dollar wood mm -hmm. deal, and you get good discounts yeah. when you buy that much. You you pay significantly less than what the number is on the, yeah, on the shelf when you buy deal. that much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, you get a lot. Cool. I mean, like we one of the guys uh, is you know, military and we were going to use his military discount to help like, to get like 10% off mm -hmm. at from the stuff we bought from like, you know, one of the major like lumber yards, like you get like a military discount and we went to use that and they're like, Oh, the one you're getting for bulk is better. Oh, we're like, okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> we'll yeah. keep that. So it was, it was better than 10% from like the, the mainline stores. That's cool. If you buy a, a lot at one time and then we were able to, yeah, we got it done. Everyone put in a lot of effort to get it done, but what, uh, I mean, I feel like that's that story just like, you know, you have one motivated person in the city and they don't give up for three years. Mm -hmm. And then and then, you know, people tend to think that that shows up overnight, like, oh, my city yeah, doesn't oh, have no. a park or my town doesn't have oh, a no. park. And it's like you just need to be that one person mm -hmm. to make that happen. Go to all the meetings. Yeah. Keep keep the squeaky getting, wheel. Yeah. Gets the oil. Seriously. And it wasn't yeah. just Brian. It, I mean, there was, there was course, a crew, yeah. but Brian was definitely at the front of the. His name, the park's named after him. He yeah. did the most. He he did yeah. not want it named after him. Oh, I'm sure. And yeah. we we literally like said, nope, <laughs> this is the name. And he was like, okay. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So you guys. We, yeah. we made we made him we made him do it. Cool. Like, the whole crew that like kind of put it together. What uh and and the, the like Scott Karen, the guy that at the city that runs parks the parks and rec stuff at in the city of Longview was awesome. 
he was he helped us a ton too. Didn't really get in the way. There was only like literally the only hiccup we had is we when weren't. Tried, to, they wouldn't let you build the double loop. They yeah, no yeah. double loops. Yeah. They they wouldn't let us build anything over eight feet tall. No. Oh, and I wanted to build like a vert wall and some other stuff, and it was just like ah, I'm just not comfortable with that. Maybe in the future, but and it and you know that's just that's cool. Yeah, eight, I mean eight it feet. was like that. That was nothing in the yeah. grand scheme of things. Like for the most part, he just said, "Cool, do it," and we did it. And the opening day was the game of bike stuff, right? No, no, no. Oh. It opened in um, mid middle of December. Oh, okay. Ish. Way off. Yeah, way off. Yeah. We had um, a lot of people. Out. There were like three or four hundred people there. Oh, cool. Opening day, and like a bunch of dudes from like Mexico City were there. Riders. It was sick. It was rad. Like they came, and were just shredding. Uh, everyone was just shredding. Because I mean, like, the park is set up like kind of like an early two thousands park, yeah. really. Or like you would expect like a detour course or something of that nature, but tamed down a little bit. Uh, the whole eight foot tall thing. Yeah. Um, but it, I designed it with sections on purpose so that there wouldn't be collisions and stuff. Yeah. So there's literally like seven different like areas where you could literally have seven different sessions happening at one time and no one's going to like get in each other's way. But if it's empty, you could ride the whole thing like one park. Cool. Obviously. So yeah, you could, there's lines that go all over the place. But at the same time, I mean, Larry Edgar came and – that yeah yeah he yeah, yeah, jumped he, over stuff. you know what he yeah did. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> we have this thing where uh, i had this idea to, to give out keys mm -hmm. for the like if you unlock like a line or do something for something memorable or hilarious at the park you get a key and the idea is just for having like so people can have something to take home to you know remember the park by and whatnot and the keys are like these little wedding favorite things i found they're bottle openers mm -hmm. which is what this tattoo is all the builders got i see the, it i see got it the now. key yeah. the key tattoo that you can put on your keychain which I've got one on my keychain too, actually, an actual one. These little guys, nice. And uh, you know, so you get keys but is for it, unlocking is it engraved? stuff. That one, I, I yeah, I did a oh, handful of them. Nice. Where it's like because I was the first one to, to foof new this a specific rail or whatever. So we we had like a list going for a while, but it's gotten you know where we're just like yeah, cool. I ordered a whole bunch of these things, and we just hand them out. And there's like there's funny ones and there's gnarly ones. Like Larry came and got thirteen in one session. <laughs> Dude, it sounds it, like Larry. It was like he literally came in like because I have a couple that like I want it to be. It's not like you don't have to be like something. No, no one's ever done. Yeah, get a key. yeah. Like so, we posted that rail ride one, and the guy in the in the he got a key for that, right? Like the, the uh, tires across the rail across the little chasm thing. Yeah. Oh, was that uh, Dustin? Even uh, I don't know. Or Dustin because Dustin Orm did one was a rail ride. Uh, it was um, the whereas the quarter to quarter and it's got the it's got oh, the castle oh, and the tires. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Gator so, Pit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. So like that was that was a key. yeah. So like you can like it's kind of like it's, it's just a, for, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. Yeah, it's, it's a cool, cool thing for fun. But at the same Motiva time, motivates people. You have I'm sure. to earn them. Yeah, you, exactly. you have to earn them. And like this one, the black one, you get for the the ramp crew got yeah. it for getting the, the tattoo. You don't get the key until you get the tattoo. Yeah. So like, there's one guy, Matt, doesn't have his, his tattoo yet. So we'll see. I heard he might be getting it this weekend That's as funny. we speak, but we'll see. So there's like one lonely key out of the nine builders that like didn't get done because he didn't show up the day of the tattoo thing. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Now he's on the now he's on the bad list. At MG2, blow him up. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he's cool. Like he's awesome. But like, uh, he he'll get it eventually. I'm yeah. sure. But. But yeah, so you have to earn you have to earn the keys, and we wanted the other ones to be where you have to earn them too. And it was really cool because like, fast forward a little ways to like when we we're doing that game of bike thing, which we'll talk more about here in a little bit, I'm sure. But like, so many dudes showed up, and it, it was like raining the night before, and mm -hmm. it rained the day of. But we kind of we made it work. It was still awesome. Um, but the night before, like Matt Hoffman drove into town, and because he was our ref, and like we went to the park because Matt hadn't been in the park yet, and it was like eleven o'clock at night, and there were like a bunch of dudes out there riding oh. in the water. Oh, really? It was soaking wet, and they were riding. And this one dude literally like one eighty the spine with water all over the ground and all over the skate light <laughs> and i was just like that's a key <laughs> he gets the, he gets yeah. the, the waterworks key or whatever we called it i don't remember but it was cool because like i gave it to him i filmed it and like i gave it to him and like somebody else is like oh he got a key and everyone's like ah, freaking out yeah so it's 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 become a thing it's become a thing you yeah. know and that's what i wanted it to be something cool like where like you earn that and like then you it's almost like a little a little club but it's not ridiculous like we have a couple like if you air 10 feet out of any quarter you get you get a key yeah I mean, it's no joke because yeah, the highest quarter is eight foot. That's so yeah. ten feet. You got to go higher than the quarter is tall. You and Larry got that one. I don't have it yet. Larry, I don't have that one. Larry yet. got that Larry one. Got, Larry yeah. was the first one to get of it. Course, he, yeah. he did it out of the seven foot quarter. Fuck. 
And then uh, after the box, and then uh, let's see, Jaden, Jaden got it, got that one. Mucha. Yeah, he he went like eleven feet out of like He's eight a foot. Oh my gosh, yeah. he showed up and got a couple easy, easy. Um, yeah, I love watching Jaden. Yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a fan of him. Uh, it but, was just uh, yeah, I mean, we're just talking about getting him out here soon. Dude, so oh, that'd yeah. be sick. Yeah. Um, he kills it, but yeah. So we got all these keys and stuff, and it's just it's just for fun, and and you got to earn them though. That's cool. What was I the? Forget uh, where, well, I forget how we got back to this, but no, it's fine. I mean, we're, we're just kind of running through running through the parks at home and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and then uh, I guess we can get to the game of bike uh, eventually. But um, kind of just the the career aspect of it. You had Roots Jam, and mm-hmm. you had Gravity Games, and you know you had you know this. The CFBs were real big. Back yeah, then too. I guess this, I guess it was the roots. Yeah, what like so roots CFB, and then kind of you started getting the invites to all the rest of them. Yeah. So my point. first big uh, pro comp that I rode was that uh, Austin one, mm-hmm. the T one FBM jam. That was like okay, yeah. I'd say that was probably the first like where there was a bunch of other dudes riding, and like I was I was shocked. I got fourth place in like amateur. No, pro. pro. Oh, yeah, shit. and that was like uh, I had met Gary at one of the CFBs before that mm-hmm. in uh, at uh, Lake Paris, whatever. Okay, yeah. And I was riding AM and Gary. I think Gary was riding pro in that comp. I, that think, was, I, I think I may have rode AM at that one. I've, I've, yeah. Yeah. I remember Gary, Gary always kept calling me AM pro. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, you're, yeah, you're the AM pro. I was like, oh, whatever. Like, yeah. But um, it's a compliment. I didn't win. I didn't win. Yeah. I'm, I qualified second, but the dude who qualified first like took a gut shot and was bleeding everywhere, so he was out. So technically, I qualified first. And then who won? I don't remember. I got like fifth or sixth. Oh wow! Blew it. Yeah, I blew it. <laughs> big time. <laughs> I, blew, I blew it big time. But um, yeah, it's okay. That's how it works. But like uh, the T1 FBM gym is that was where I like actually like got, like met Gary. That's that's where I can kind of consider like the first time we actually like kind of hung out and whatnot. Okay. But. Was it like the scene from Step Brothers? I beat him. <laughs> you beat There's him. so much room for activity. Yeah, I beat Gary. He got fifth. I got fourth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got the Step Brothers reference. I think you it, snuck I, that one in there real quick. I think it was... Are uh, we best friends? <laughs> instantly. There's so much room for activities. <laughs> um, I think mikey won that one and then it was Wiz and taj and then i got fourth uh, so i was yeah. just like to is me it the that one, was like is it the one that like Wiz was like icing down that big ass rail and stuff the rolling was it that one or like did up rail look when he looked back or probably. something crazy that's um, what, yeah probably something technical so but that was like eye-opening for me because i was like holy crap i can hang with these guys because yeah, yeah. i didn't i had no idea i just went and i was like well i know i'm better than like not to sound like a dork but i was like i know i'm better than like that well, you also have to stuff. justify going to California, and, right? Well, like, well, this this was this was the one in Austin, the oh, T1 okay, FBM. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, I got there and I was like, okay, I know that I'm riding in this level, but I'm going to be at the back of the pack. Basically, it's what I what I thought. Mm-hmm. And then I wasn't at the back of the pack. Like oh, I've just missed you know podium by that much. And I was like, holy crap! Kind of you know realization. It wasn't you know like oh, I'm amazing. Nothing like Gary when he hits his head. You know I'm a badass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Do I know that? You story? know that story. Was that at the trails? Yeah, he, he hit his head at the trails, oh, and they yeah. had like amnesia every five minutes. Yeah. And then we told him about his war ride to Double Whip at at uh, Metro, <laughs> and he was like, "I'm a badass." <laughs> and then he forgot about it two minutes later. Yeah. We put all the answers to all the questions he was. That asking. was a bad idea. He freaked out. Yeah, he freaked it, out. Yeah, it's just so Sorry, pe- Gary. Pe- yeah, people get it. <laughs> Gary was concussed and you yeah. know when you start when you have somebody that's concussed they get in this broken record mode and they ask oh, yeah. the same questions or they say the yep. same things so Gary was saying the same thing and we started we wrote the answers down on a piece <laughs> yeah. of paper and put them in his pockets individually different so he, pockets yeah, he so question. Like, his first question came out and we we're like check your pocket he pulls the card out and he reads like oh oh Oh, oh! He like like yeah, legitimately it didn't, it was didn't like, like it. <laughs> yeah. So we took that away, and a couple minutes later, he was back to normal. We're like, we're not doing that again. Yeah, yeah. Then he gave himself a tour of his own house for like for the first time, like four or five times when we got back. Yeah, it was that was a weird. Yeah, day. Was a, that was a that was that was a beginning of helmets riding dirt, and then was it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure after that he started. Yeah, because I think he did, like a, he did like a tail whip and just slid out and went. Look. Yeah, and it like it wasn't a bad crash. No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it was a. Uh, yeah, so that he started wearing a helmet then, like riding kind of trannies and stuff yeah. like that, and then eventually he had the other fall, and then he rode, he rode helmets for for street all the time, full time. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. Um, 
I think God, I made that move a little a little bit before he did. Yeah, did. Yeah, for those people who people don't know, <laughs> Morgan and I know each other very well. So this is is a little bit difficult when you know the person so well and you've had a kind of a lot of yeah. random experiences over the years and I was I, I called you like I was watching the other like I like marathon through the other mm-hmm. podcast yeah. cuz I was on like a 16 hour drive and just went to town and like it was so crazy. I was watching like the Gary one and like all, all these, and, like I know of all you guys. I felt like I was in the conversation because yeah, I was right? like, I was there for that story. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah it's it pretty funny. It's fun. It's, it's fun. fun. It, it's, it's interesting in a sense. I don't listen. Well, I listen to them at double speed before I, before I put them out, but right. that's about it. So it, well, the sound of you, your own voice gets yeah, too that's weird normal. Yeah. You've already lived it once. So it's like true. Yeah. Oh, I know what I'm about to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I knew why, that I said what I just said. Or I why did I that. say that? Because I didn't want to say that, but I said it. <laughs> it came out anyway. Yeah, welcome to podcasts. Mm. Um, <laughs> fuck. What you got? What <laughs> you got know. for me? Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. So what, this, what is, this is where I'm, I, I mean, I'm just going to fast forward through it. You killed it for a long time. You fucking won Gravity Games. You got some X Games medals. You got a bunch of Nora Cups. You got the first ever video part Nora Cup. You got mm-hmm. a ramp Nora Cup. And then you got to ramp Nora Cup the next year. Mm-hmm. And then I felt like at a point, your BMX changed around you. Does yep. that? Yeah, no, that's, that's the way that's I exactly That's, the way what, that's I exactly feel. what happened. Because you have changed. It's like that song where you're like, my, all my friends have changed and I've stayed the same or something. <laughs> but he's like totally delirious. But I in still, your, in your I instance, I still ride the same as I always have. Yeah, you have stayed the same. And BMX. This is my observation. You can say if it's right or wrong, Mm -hmm. but contests got less about the highlight reel and more about the perfection in 45 to 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. And, and street riding got a little bit less about the, the one, the one bang and the, the, you know, kind of the gnarly esque stuff and got a little favorable towards connecting yeah. things and and manuals and yeah. and slow and low but not in a I know not you're in here, neg- Dennis, but thank you for keeping that alive yeah not in a negative <laughs> i'm not saying that in a negative way but it became a very popular aspect of technical grinds and stuff like that and that yeah. is would you say that fits your bike riding what it is like <laughs> <the> currently <laughs> no obviously not so no i don't do that yeah so it, your I respect you, it, but I, I it that, seemed I like you had like that. a big rise, and then and then the the downfall of it kind of came a little. So bit here's quick. like my my attitude towards contests and coming up with a contest run mm-hmm. was find the biggest gap that no one else is going to touch, do as big a trick as I can possibly do over it, and hopefully pull it. Maybe maybe not, but do that out of the gate mm-hmm. first first. Thing, just start off with a bang mm-hmm. because I'm going to have the most energy and I'm not going to be too tired to crank at it later in the run. So yeah. I start with the heart, the craziest thing I can think of, basically, or come up with on the course. And then after that's done, if that works, hey, cool, that worked. Then I try to just ride out the rest of the run and do other big tricks and stuff yeah. too. But but and then you know you always want to finish with like a, some kind of a a punctuation mark at the end hopefully not a question mark yeah not a dot 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 yeah or a, or a dot 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 <laughs> but like i think like the the height of my contest riding it was always like start off with something huge and with a flip fakie on the yep. buzzer and yep. like that when that and i was the only one doing flip fakies in contests at that point in time yeah which they kind of I'm not saying I'm the one that brought that back, but they kind of yeah, they were kind of an old school trick. It was an old school trick. Yeah, Yeah, Lee Ramsdale taught me that trick on a on trick on a road trip, and 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 it was like unreliable uh, because half half the time people did it, they or more than half they wouldn't pull the rollout. Shout out to Lee, shout out to Rick Thorne, but like Volker (laughs) was the only one that was pulling rollouts basically. (laughs) And I and I had them dialed, so I was like, cool, I can I can fire this out because as long as I'm pointed at a quarter pipe at the end of my run. And I know I've got a couple seconds left. I can get this done, you yeah. know. And like that was kind of like my formula for for a contest run. And it didn't always work, obviously. Yeah. But when it did, it did work. I yeah. mean, it was either like I'm either gonna do a really good run and be contender for for the to to win or be top three in the contest, or I'm gonna be at the back of the pack. Yeah. And you know, do tours for the most part, I was always at the back of the pack. Yeah. Because it didn't work out. But those that was around. But the time. do tour was almost the beginning yeah. of that. That because was there around wasn't the time the when, when like the do as many tricks as you possibly can and land them perfectly to get a good score. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, my, my favorite comps were always the jams where you could like have a few tries at a mm-hmm. trick and it still like, it didn't hurt your score. It helped your score. If you crashed a couple times, as long as you pulled it Yeah, yeah. because you're doing something that no one else is doing yeah. or that is, is actually new. Yeah. So is that, 
I mean, it's got to be hard because like Dutour was the biggest thing. So it mm-hmm. was like, all right, so my style of writing doesn't necessarily fit this. And then. So I wrote, I wrote every Dutour Dirt and Dutour Park comp you know, from okay. the beginning up until 2000. 10, 11, whenever I ruptured my spleen, mm-hmm. I missed a detour because of my spleen. That was the first time I missed a dirt, a detour dirt or part comp. And like me and Nyquist were the only two that, that actually did that yeah. the whole way through all of them. That's and crazy. Like, I, I literally rode every dirt comp at detour. I didn't make finals at all of them. I qualified first once. One time. In dirt? In a dirt, yeah. Wow. Detour dirt. It was uh, Portland, I think. But um, I might have even been riding somebody else's bike. Did, in, did everybody else crash? No, I actually I'm did a good run. I actually okay. did a good run. <laughs> Can you believe it? I did a good run. Um, but then I got like 12th in finals. Then Gutler, last then place. Then the did the, the front flip and the, well, whatever it was. The, the, seven, the 720? 20, yeah, that was the... In uh, no particular certain yeah. order? No, well, the, the taco and then the burrito and then the, <laughs> yeah, and then the tostada. Yeah. yeah. I, it was a formula, man. Yeah, that's worked. what I'm saying. That's what I don't like, blame anybody. Yeah. That, I mean, guys like, it, the guys that figure it out, yeah. dude, run you, with it. Yeah. That's cool. Like, that's awesome. It's working for you. Um, do I like to watch it that many times in a row? No, but it's okay. Like it's still, it's still gnarly tricks, you know? Yeah. Shout out to Mexican food, by the way. I love Mexican food, but that was I it. That's eat, it. You know what I'm I saying? It's like the, ing- the ingredients kind of get mixed around, but it's actually still the same. Same thing. Yeah. The yeah, same thing. So, yeah. um, did you feel <laughs> like a, yeah, <laughs> fucking podcast. Tangent. You can't, yeah, I can't, <laughs> can't let that. Uh, but so yeah, did you so, feel like from the beginning to the end where you're like, wow, I, uh, I'm, you know, this is this is going in a separate direction at all. No, I, no? and I still feel. I mean, because I know at a point you said you did want to ride feast events oh, too yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, like those courses look fun. Like those are my style courses. Yeah. Like big ramps, big transfers, yeah. big gaps. It's just like I don't do you know quad whips and yeah all that. But stuff. it's got to be hard to go and be like, all right, well, <laughs> I did the single hardest thing, like. Kind of how Bazanzan when he you know before before so Drew, he, Drew, he got I, hurt he broke I his leg or whatever. I absolutely love riding with Drew. Yeah, it, like he's one of my favorite humans to ride bikes with on the planet. Yeah, but we also he also annoyed the living fire out of me at contests <laughs> because he would do the same gaps. Yeah, like and it would be like oh who's gonna find it first? Yeah, and it I, I never was actually annoyed at Drew. Like don't take that the wrong way. Yeah, but I like know it was always like oh golly like yeah. now there's someone else doing the same stuff. Dang it, you yeah. know. Um, but it was still awesome. I was I mean I'm gonna be freaking out more than anyone else in the crowd when I see him do it. Yeah, because I'm excited. Yeah. you know I mean, um, but we had a very similar way of looking at a course, which made for really fun sessions but when it came to like contest runs it's like okay i gotta come up with something different yeah yeah which made it more difficult but in a good way yeah if that makes sense what uh, but i think the the main change that happened for me with contests was like x games for is the biggest example or the easiest one to point out uh park went away they don't do park contests anymore they do a bowl contest yeah yeah and when concrete kind of got entered into the mix I've always not enjoyed riding concrete as much as wood just because it's less forgiving. It yeah. hurts to fall on. And like, it's different when everything's blended together. Um, yeah. It makes for like flowy lines. that are cool. And it's fun to watch dudes shred that ride that style, mm-hmm. you know, like chase and Larry and like the, like it's really fun to watch Gary. They really fun to watch them ride like those style things, but it's a different genre maybe i mean it's still it's, it's, it's no, it, still it is similar because you, have, but you have the van you have the vans contest you have the feast contest yeah you get the but people it, ride it, that and you get the people ride that so exactly but then you know you've got like what you were talking about is like the perfectionist side of it yeah as opposed to just balls to the walls um so there's that change on top of the, the courses the big the course changes yeah. you know and i think when kind of when nate was kind of removed from the situation building like the x game or just helping design the x games courses is when they really went downhill in my opinion yeah um i mean there's still awesome stuff that happens i'm not taking away from the comps but like for my style riding it 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 got it was like dang that's a bummer yeah yeah no I, you know i i see that i see so I mean, and now it, I'm just now. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, damn, it would have been cool. I mean, I know X Games only has limited spots, but seeing you cruise Pat's house would have been pretty funny, ah, like in the, a good way. You know it. what I mean? Like, like it would have been like got the wrong logo on my helmet, buddy. What? What do you got? No, oh, it's, it's not an M. So oh god, yeah. <laughs> I got a whole yeah. 
I know. I I mean, fuck. I don't know if I should say any of that publicly. <laughs> uh, it's all good, man. I was. I, 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 I said. I said. I said, a, I said a comment on Instagram, but I don't think it's as intended as it meant to be. A lot of the you know the mm-hmm. rock star dudes are rock star and rebel dudes are Olympic focused and yeah. and hurt or they're foreign. Like the only people that I think were actually missing is they should have invited fucking Nyquist back. Mm. Because he would have killed it. He might not have done it though, because, because of, of the Olympics. Close to the Olympics. Yeah, but yeah, but maybe, maybe, maybe. But, they, I mean, Bruce, maybe Bruce turned it down. Bruce turned it down. That's what I'm saying. Is so, people don't realize that, that yeah. Bruce turned it down. Logan turned yeah. it down. Durs turned it down. Uh, mm. Justin Dowell turned it down, and he he rides for Monster. But yeah. like, but uh, Nyquist and then Marcus Christopher should have been in there. Mm. That would have been a good one to have. Been cool. Those it are was the fun only to watch. Two, I enjoyed but, watching it. It's yeah. the first time in 20 years I watched it on TV instead of being there. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah, it was weird. I mean, it was even weird being there. Yeah. So it was. Like, I would have loved to have ridden the best trick comp because yeah. I, I wouldn't have done a trick. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, he would just jump over the entire. I would have done. Park. I would have done a gap <laughs> or yeah. some kind of a transfer, something that stands out. Yeah, I thought the best trick comp was was rad. I mean that. No, it was cool. Tricks were gnarly. Yeah, yeah. But like, that's what I mean. That everyone I mean, that, was focused on. It, it, there was the, no line. That's the there difference. Was no everyone was focused utilizing. on utilizing a s- trick rather than a stunt. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like when I look at like a best trick contest, I, I'm like, okay, hey, I'm gonna do a stunt. Yeah. <laughs> it's only doable here. Yeah. Right here where we are. Yeah. I mean, like 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 Battle of Hastings or something like that. Like that that only worked because of the ramp the way the ramps were set up. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. A product of the environment. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like that, I I would have enjoyed seeing uh, dudes look at it more that through that lens, but that's not what was you know geared, that's, that's was kind of what i'm towards, that's so. kind of what i'm getting at is uh, hey yeah. i practice this uh you know the fucking the trick that sandoval was doing whatever 360 that was you, wild i don't even dude it was it, that, was, that was the most mind-blowing thing of the entire event wow. in my opinion it, that first one he did and he made it look so easy yeah. and he just washed out dude <laughs> yeah. it was fucking <laughs> insane early. that that was that's a possible trick i don't even yeah. like truck to I would have loved. Truck, I would have loved to see or something. Jacob Bailey without a hurt knee too. I know because I, I was like, I, was, oh, I know, what, I know what he wants to do. Oh, I want to. I was. It. That was one too. I, I, I don't know if you could hear me on the broadcast, but I was like, I was actually holding the camera, going, <laughs> "You got it, Jacob!" In the corner, <laughs> like I was like trying so hard because I just wanted. I knew. It, I knew it would be one and yeah. done, and yeah. he wanted a uh, double, double, double flip, flip the open, do- loop, yeah. open loop, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I was rooting for him. That's for been on my list for a long time. Oh, yeah. That trick. Yeah. Both Drew and I had that on our, our list for that Dark Woods, that Red Bull edit. We yeah. both wanted to do that trick specifically, but it just God, didn't, we could talk about so much out. shit. Shout we out can. to Bazan. Shout I out get, to I know, I know, I know. I, I got time. Like, Let's talk. Shout out to Bazanzan, but the uh, not shit, no but actually, just shout out to Bazanzan. Yeah, we fucking definitely. love you. Uh, He's a beast. The Dark Woods. Yeah, let's talk about Dark Woods. Let's talk about uncontainable. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Because I know, Dude. I know, Drew's talked about it in the sense Drew, of like Drew's that a, you made Drew's it, a dick. Yeah, you made it real because he was like, "Oh shit, you can get hurt doing this." No, he he didn't tell me what it was. <laughs> what? He I showed up. I had no idea what was happening. I got there and literally, he was like, "Okay, let's go check it out." And we rolled up, and when I saw the ramps, that was the first time I knew what we were doing, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> Is this dude? And there's a reason behind that because, like, there, there is a story behind that why it was like that. And it's, you know, it's a little tit for tat thing with me and Drew. Like, so I had an idea for a contest that I wanted to do. This is years ago that involved building a course and no one's allowed to see the course before they're uh. run. So you take your, their first time seeing the course, you have like, a, like one minute to, to look. Just roll around and look to make sure you're not going to jump into it like a, a set of stairs, stair set, yeah. Or, or yeah, yeah, just to make sure that you kind of get an idea. But you literally, it's like, hey, your first run on the course is your, it counts as your contest score. That's mean. And then you get one, you get two more runs, and one of those gets dropped. So you get two more runs, and you get to watch everyone else ride, and you get two more attempts. Oh, I like that. So I like three that. runs the first, total. Yeah, the first run but counts. Your first run has to count. Yeah. And then like the next one is averaged with it. Okay. Um, and then you drop one. That was my idea for a contest, and I thought it was a pretty cool idea. And it, it just, it just never kind of materialized. And I had Drew was on my list to invite to that. And I, and I was talking uh, with Luke Seal about it back when he was doing stuff. I don't know if he's still doing stuff. Shout with- out to Luke. He hates me now. <laughs> Why? I 
fucking blame ESPN. I don't yeah, know. Whatever. Sweet yeah. tea. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for the peanut butter. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Looks awesome. But we were talking about it, and he was like, I think I think like Red Bull will go for this or whoever. Like, And it was kind of like, we're going to pitch it, hopefully. But it, for, for whatever reason, it just never materialized. And I even had the course designed and all this stuff. And my idea was practice everyone shows up a week early and you practice but you ride different skate parks around the area and use that as like a hype machine for mm-hmm. the locals to get them to come out to the event but every park has something that is going to be in the course yeah an aspect of it mm-hmm. so wherever we would go there there were like bits and pieces cherry picked and kind of put together somehow for the course and my idea was you know that like because I designed the course and everyone knows I designed the course, everyone's going to think it's going to be this ridiculous bonkers thing, but it wasn't going to be like that outrageous. It was just going to be a really fun course. You Mm -hmm. know, they had a little bit of stuff for everybody. And the other thing was I wanted to invite the street dudes and the park dudes, like the two, like, like ends of the spectrum and have them ride together and have aspects of the course for everybody so that it could be like an, more of an old school feel where mm-hmm. everyone can ride in, in, in kind of a simple then, session type. Early. I wanted to judge, have the judging done by like aspects of the riding. So like, did he boost or stay low to the ground? Did he was he technical or was he burly? And like, have different aspects so that each judge has one specific thing to give a score yeah. on and kind of see if that would work. And I don't. I think it's probably been done since then. I, I don't know. I think but the, like, fir- the first few X Games were judged like that, which sounds kind of corny in a sense. But, but, in, but to, in this, in this it aspect, would... it almost... It, well, in, if it's done right, it does work. And that's it. I yeah. wanted to see if I could make get to where like a street dude could ride against a ramp dude, Brezzy Monkey, yeah. and get scores that compete to each other and actually work out on the same course. Yeah. But the big catch was no one could see the course until... Yeah. And it was uh, Brian Foster once made this comment that just said, like, your true style is your first time through a set of jumps. That's very true. And, like, you know, if you're like, which is me on yeah. trails, that's your true style, you know? Yeah. So, like, and that was so I wanted to call it, like, the true style comp or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. your first run is your run, you know, that. Yeah. So, but the thing was, like, I couldn't tell Drew what it was other than I was like, hey, I've got this idea. It's going to be sick. I want you there, blah, blah, blah. Oh, cool. What is it? I was like, ah, I can't really tell you. It'll kind of mess it up. He's like, oh, I see how it is. He's like, yeah, I got this thing too. I want you to come ride with me. And I was like, oh, cool. What is it? He's like, I can't tell you. And I was like, okay, fine. Play that game. And then I got there and it was uncontainable. Oh, my God. And I was like, sweet. (laughs) (laughs) The very first thing I did was drop in on that thing and get blasted. That was was literally the first drop in. Yeah. So you flew to Canada. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, did you fly up on the ramp? Yeah, if I so we kind of like went back and forth on the bottom a little bit, and, okay. and goofed around a little bit down there, and then I, you know, cranked in, flew up to the top, and then when I dropped in, that was the crash. What's what's the size of it? Like what? It, I want to like, say somebody asked me that just the other day. I want to say the like the quarter wedge landing thing for yeah. the sub, like ten or twelve feet tall, yeah. I think, and then it was sixteen foot up above that. So it was, the sub, yeah, it, was 16, it was like a 16 foot sub box on top oh. of whatever. Yeah. It, and was, it was a quarter wedge or it was a quarter. It was a real mellow quarter, quarter. but enough okay. to kick you up there. I mean, yeah. it would, it would yeah. launch you up there. So yeah. like at the top, it was steep enough to launch you up to the top. Yeah. And I, I want to say it was like eight feet back or something like that. <laughs> and I mean, Drew was doing like whip to manual to turn down in and had and already done that by the time you showed up to manual to turn down. in. he was, yeah, he was doing stuff like that. Like, and I literally like the, they had like a behind the scenes video for that that edit and i was like dude like i'm this is freaking me out like i literally got up there and i was like it was one of those weird blocks where yeah. i was just like holy crap like why can't i do this like <laughs> why can't I, this shouldn't be this hard and, and then drew's like oh hey just do it like this and he would just do it and then he would fly back up and he'd be like yeah, yeah check it out and i'm like okay screw it and then finally i was just like all right we're going this time we're going and i dropped in and just I did. I don't know. Know what I did wrong? I just got yeah, to the didn't. bottom leaning wrong or whatever, and front wheel like washed and just plump face plant. Brigham mortis rolls, what I call it when you're like <laughs> knocked out and your arms like stay yeah, like this. Yeah. I did the rigor roll. <laughs> Sorry, I've, ne- I've never heard that term. <laughs> it's Sorry, it's yeah, a good one. It's a good one. Well, the 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 Michael Jackson thriller <laughs> aspect of it, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> a little snore in there. Uh, I did that. Tooth came out, broken nose, bruised kidneys, uh, face was all jacked up, pissed blood for three days. Sick. Uh, but, Great but time. Thanks for the invite. The next day, I so there was that, the thing he did the flip drop in off of, yeah. the, the real tall one. Like I was like, I'm not leaving here without doing that. So I did it like the next day with all that teeth missing and stuff I, I went up and i dropped in and i stopped i said like, hey cool i did it and can't, I, you can't leave on a crash no no and then yeah. a couple days later he did the the, the the hanging wall ride thing oh yeah holy crap dude it's a pure holy confidence crap. pure confidence because like we we built it was we built it on the ground yeah and we all did it like on the ground and yeah. it was like super chill yeah had the exact same setup it's not moving a little bit, you know, like it was for him, but like the exact same setup. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know how like if you're if you put a two by four on the ground and you you can double tire across it, no problem yeah. all day long. Oh, yeah. You put it 30 feet in the air. Hey, it's so easy. <sighs> and it's like, dude, but that thing was how high was that? I mean, it had to be 40 or 50, right? It was death. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was like four or five containers tall. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It he, not, did it it cool. he did it a couple times. He did it a couple times. And it was literally down like it was the last day they had the stuff rented, and it was like you had to do it. Sunset was happening, and it was like yeah, they're waiting for the wind or something, right? Dude, yeah. it was gnarly. It but was you gnarly. you saw it. Oh, yeah, I was at the bottom. You, you I have that on my. I have the video on my phone that really? I filmed from the bottom. Yeah, I have to get that. Yeah. yeah. What? Uh, fuck. And yeah. I was standing next. And to his, I was standing next to his girlfriend too, which was even more nerve wracking because oh, like God. she was like. I'll catch him. Don't worry. A mess. Yeah. Oh no, that was that was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. I got I got you, <laughs> dude. Freaking. Oh my gosh. And then the ice pick on the quarter afterwards, which is like almost just that's as even scary. gnarlier. Yeah, it's no, almost the just quarter as scary. Is at the edge of the back of the containers. Yeah. So it's like even farther of a drop because yeah. he's on the top of a quarter, and yeah. he's like, nee, nee, nee. and I, have, I also have a video. We went up top before he did it. And he, like, the gap between the two containers was, like, I don't know, eight or ten feet or whatever it was. Yeah. And Drew's just jumping across it. And I have a video of that, too, where he just, like, jumps across and then I pan down. Yeah. And it's, like, what the are fuck? you doing? Drewby, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. There's That's a, Drew. That's Drew, though. Yeah, that is Drew. That is Drew. That's the that same, yeah. same for, for Nagel at the... Uh, the Detroit Stadium oh, man. thing that was because we we were just going around and just like because there was a lot of downtime for that and it was mm -hmm. like a six day seven day shoot and yeah. uh, we're just on top of the stadium literally on the roof with whatever I don't know 150 foot drop or something like that and uh, Tyler fucking hangs from a bolt on the back of the on the back of the stadium one handed and literally like a bolt that's like you know yacht around. And I was so freaked out. He was like, oh, shoot a photo. And I shot a photo, and it was like, it was like, he didn't like it. And he was like, oh, I'll do it again. And I was like, dude, I'm out. And I was nope. like, I'm walking away. Nope. I can't, I can't be, I cannot participate in such behavior. I cannot <laughs> encourage it. And it's the same thing with Drew. I've been with, around with Drew, yeah. and he's been hanging off of stuff before. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, how are you so comfortable? It's built in. Yeah. It was a different breed. So. Building. I'm not afraid of heights by any means. Like I'm, I'm, I'll stand. Like remember when we took that photo on the back of that dam down here yeah. somewhere? Yeah, that didn't bother me one bit. Yeah, not one bit with that huge drop. Like I, I don't care about that. Like yeah. I, I like being. I kind of like the feeling of that. Not like, not like Hoffman, where he's like, yeah. No handrails in his house because he likes the feeling of being able to fall. <laughs> no handrails in his. Does he not have handrails? I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> like there's he gets a, stair sets with no handrails. Yeah, there's no handrails in his whole house, and like he has like those balconies on the back, and the one's like three stories tall. And he was telling me about this. We're on the top, and he goes, "Yeah, I like the feeling of feeling like I could fall." And he puts his toes over the edge, and he goes, <laughs> "Yeah, that's awesome." <laughs> No it's more than built in with Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Born. <laughs> Sorry, I have to cough that one out. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. I think you got the two biggest laughs on the on the podcast for me for the most part. <laughs> oh, fucking no handrails. No handrails. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Coming from the guy that did the first handrail. Yeah, ex exactly, right? <laughs> like you would think I was where I was like kind of laughing about like the, how does this fit together? Yeah, like you would think he'd like handrails because <laughs> yeah. he's a bike rider who did the first yeah. real handrail ever. But he doesn't have handrails in his house. 
gonna have to talk to him about that one. <laughs> Is it? Did he get him removed? Did when he, he build the house? Yeah. Did he build build the house and then just request no handrails? What did he do with the handrails? Where did he put the handrails? They just never put them in. Yeah, they, they never built it. They I built know. it that way. I know. He's probably here. He got. I've I've never seen his house, but it's awesome. I've Dude, seen the awesome. reflection photos. I've seen the patio. It's unreal. Yeah, that's cool. He has like skate light on the outside of his house too. It's it's dope. And he should. Matt Hoffman <laughs> yeah. should have yeah. a fucking unreal house. It's amazing. And he should do whatever Matt Hoffman He's got these wants windows. I mean, he can tell you about this, but yeah. like these windows that are like massive, like I don't know, ten by ten or something mm-hmm. like that. And you can't get double pane double pane windows that big because like the the glass is too flexible or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me how like yeah, no one will make these because like I want them this big. I don't want any like seams in the in the wall and stuff. And they're all on like rollers so they can slide open. So the whole inside of his house. You can roll the windows open mm. and it's like open to the outside and it's just awesome. But he has these huge windows that he didn't want any seams in them. And he's like, yeah, so I tried to figure something out. And it's like windshield glass for cars or something like that. Because you can't, to keep the insulation in or yeah. whatever, like that was like that was like the fix. Crazy. And I don't know that that yeah, was just done like, anywhere. He was just like, oh, this will work happen. and just made it happen. He basically just dreamed it up and made it happen, which is amazing. That's Hoffman. Well, that's kind of Hoffman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's probably a better explanation for what no, I just tried sure, to say, but, but like, I, I got the, that I was the, the gist, gist that I took from it. I was like, Whoa, that's yeah. cool. Um, I never thought about that. <laughs> I forgot how we got here. We're talking um, about, we're talking about Red Bull <clears throat> events and like dark woods and we were things. talking about, uh, the well, cli- it went to contest continue. and then the, the yeah so it went we're to, like it went to i think like, we're like six degrees away so yeah, yeah. just um, roll just roll with it man what uh during the peak of that you mentioned a couple of times before that you had uh, a couple of offers from big name brands mm-hmm. what what big name brands were those i don't know if it was ever like because you were riding for mutiny you've been riding so, for mutiny literally since the beginning like I, when when drop the hammer came out mm-hmm. is when i got all the offers okay so i wrote mutiny was my first bike sponsor i always say my first sponsor was my dad yeah because he would drive me all over the country to go to contests the cfes like california CFE, like my dad drove me there and like um my mom drove me like to to some of them too but like that was like my dad was my sponsor basically yeah and um but my first bike sponsor was mutiny bikes and Steve Inge basically saw me ride at like a demo in Dallas somewhere and was like, I want to hook this kid up. And then hit, talked to one of the other dudes, that, a mutual friend, rider, and got my info and sent me a, a bike. And I broke it the first day I had it. And then his, <laughs> his wife basically was like, don't send him anything else. <laughs> He's going to cost you way too much money. <laughs> and he, but he did anyway. Yeah. And here we are. So uh, that's the whole story right there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Steve always, like he was the, like... When I look back, I'm like, okay, he's the one that saw something and mm-hmm. was like, I believe in this kid. I want to, I want to help this kid. So for me, like that was like, I'm loyal to Steve, yeah. you know? Yeah. And like, whenever we filmed drop the hammer, like that entire section filmed it in a month, like, yeah. because they told me late in the game, like, Hey, you want to part in this? I don't even I don't even know if you were involved in that. Or no, if it was, that, I mean, it was I was, Glenn. It was Glenn. It was Glenn. Like, yeah, I was a kid, but you know, when you I were was working happening. for Ride, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, I mean, I didn't have any. I, I, you were just an intern. They said, <laughs> well, they said, go shoot this photo, go do this. I wasn't planning. Right, right. I wasn't planning. But things, like, yeah. it was literally like the deadline was not Coming too far up, off, yeah. and he was like, hey, can you film a part? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I filmed that part with Walter, and like, we went on a bunch of trips, did the whole thing, and filmed all that stuff, and. The video came out at Nora that year, and literally the next, well, at at the the Nora Cup party, I had uh, let's see, I think Mark Owen with Hoffman mm-hmm. came up to me and and mentioned, hey, like I know you sent us a sponsor me video years ago, but would you like to? And I was yeah. like, ah, no, I'm cool with Mutiny. Like, thank you, but like I'm cool with Mutiny. Like I don't want to, you know, honored. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent yeah um and then eastern same night eastern at like literally within you know an hour or so that's great that. yeah uh, and i sent them a sponsor me video too <laughs> same <laughs> one then. or a different one same one same one yeah. same one went to that's the way yeah. it worked back then boys yeah it was like i mean i rode a, an eastern hercules <laughs> before great. that yeah. heavy it was, yeah it's a 50 pound bike dude yeah. it was heavy they I, was, swung, I have they, a picture of that I'll, they swung I'll, one way and then they swung dude, the other way i'll find a picture after. of that so you can yeah, throw, throw that one somewhere. In. Yeah, so you can see how sweet my bike was back in the day. But like, um, yeah, and then the chest protector of bikes. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Dude, like triple pierced top tube or something ridiculous. Um, but then at Interbike was that, that week, you yeah. know, like the next day it was like Diamondback and there was a couple others. I That's great. Remember. Yeah. But I, I know the, the, the dude that was running the Diamondback program, he basically said, hey, I know you get, oh, Felt was one of them. Because oh, yeah. I know you're getting a lot of offers right now. Before you say yes to anything, call me. I'll beat it. Crazy. And I was like, honored. Thank you. I'm going to stick with Mutiny. That's sick. Yeah. That's a. I love you, Steve, but that was the dumbest thing I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually feel that way? It was pretty silly. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were, the, the, yeah. It was silly. Yeah. It was a lot of money. Yeah. And I, and I was, you know, yeah. going to keep it real goes wrong. Yeah. I didn't go wrong. I'm fine. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. it's not, it's not about money. It, it's not about money. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I've never been that way, but you know, it's when you look back and you're like, Oh yeah, that probably would have been a better choice, you know, yeah. in hindsight. Did but, you ever talk about it with Steve or no? Or you just said no? No. Yeah. I just no. said, I just said it, no. may, it, may, it may have been one, you know, like the, the molar. Steve would have made me quit. Yeah. Steve yeah, would have fired kind of, me probably. He would have been like, no, you're off. Yeah. Go yeah. find something, and it was like because he would have known that I had those lines. Like yeah. that's that's how that relationship was. Yeah, you that's know? cool. So, so, but so no, I never talked to him about it. But it was it was one of those things. And then you know, after <laughs> right around that same time is when Joe and Gaz took over. Yeah, and I was obviously real good buddies with those dudes, and it was like sweet. Yeah, like this is cool. Like we're making something new, and and. But even then, I think it kind of like the going back to what I said earlier was like mutiny kind of when they took over it was like kind of the changing of the guard and mm. kind of the changing of the style the of the brand the team as changed well a little. yeah so i think it took think, it took a couple of years but it definitely it it, it changed yeah. yeah where the separate that was the, yeah. the beginning of the separation in a lot of ways so yeah. um did you kind of feel that way with etnies too was it kind of the same thing or was it no no etnies uh because you were on there for what, I was seven on years eight years for a while yeah, yeah. and that was literally like I just got a call from Pova and yeah. he just said, Hey man, like I got X number cut for my budget. I can't afford it anymore. Yeah. And I, and I, I'm not going to, to give you an offer. It's an insult. What I can pay you. Oh yeah. So you're off. Yeah. And, and he fired Jamie the same day. Fired. He didn't fire. He, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Both Jamie and I got cut because yeah. we were the, the expensive, we were the top dogs. We were the expensive right? ones yeah, on the team dogs, at yeah. that time. Well, we were the ones that all the contests and getting all the, the coverage and, from yeah. like TV and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it is what it is. So was there ever like a, a low point with it or was it kind of just like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just keep on going. You know, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't like yeah, how I, mean, I said with, you know, kind of the, you know, you're the top of the game in a sense. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, like, Oh, you know, like, so, Oh, it's kind of like the, the, the BMX train is like going in a different direction than I am. So for thing. me, there was definitely a, a, a like a switch, mm -hmm. <laughs> the old you know track switch. Yeah, um, and that was when I went from. Like, so I've always done shows. I've always loved doing show, school shows for like middle school kids and stuff. I love doing that a, type of stuff. A underappreciated aspect of BMX. I think a lot of a lot of riders. I don't know this for a fact, but I just get the feeling that a lot of riders probably not necessarily look down on shows, but they're like, no, no, I'm. I'm too pro for that mm -hmm. i'm doing this and you know if they're if you're doing a contest series or whatever that's that's cool if you don't have time that nothing wrong with that by any means but uh and then you've got riders that only do shows like there's a lot of guys that are just show show yeah. dudes Make and like they're 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 making it might be squeaking might, might not be whatever but they're making it and um that's cool that's cool too but it's a different it's a different type of rider if that makes sense mm -hmm. um and as far as like skill level goes, I mean, half those dudes are just as good as all the other dudes. It's just a matter of they knew the right person at the right time. They're in the right spot at the right time. They got the contract for whatever company or their this contest, whatever, yeah, it, whatever the scenario. I my gut's making noise. Was that that was really your Mexican? Yeah, it was yeah. like, hey, give me some Mexican yeah. food. The sunburn and the Mexican food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, so like, I feel like I was like able to kind of ride both those trains at yeah. the same time yeah and because i was able to go to all the contests and i had all the sponsors and stuff levi's and etnies and maxis and all the forgot all about, stuff forgot about levi's and yeah. like so like those like literally like i didn't need to to make money doing shows i didn't need to do that with all the sponsorship 
you know, the the checks come in. Dude, what is going on down there? <laughs> Damn. Nuclear reactor. It's malfunctioning. Watch out. <laughs> about to blow this place up. Did you hear about that guy that went into the, uh, it's like a Home Depot, and they called a bomb threat because he said he was going to blow the bathroom up? <laughs> it was on the news. There's a news story. Look it up. Dude, it's hilarious. It's like a news story. Bomb threat called into Home Depot. Guy said he was going to blow the bathroom up, and then, like, the police got there, and they're like, oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Somebody was, yeah, somebody was feeling a little sensitive that morning. Yeah, a little sensitive. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. But uh, maybe they just didn't want to clean up. So, I, and, yeah. <laughs> Get this fucking guy out here. <laughs> Never know. Made the news either way. Yeah. But so I, I feel like I, I was able to ride, you know, both both those trains pretty, yeah. or, or navigate the middle somewhere at least um, pretty well. Because I, I always did shows anyway because I enjoyed it. I enjoy it. I didn't need to, but I did it because it was fun. And it kind of. When, you know, Etnies and Levi's and all that ended, all that income just disappeared. <laughs> Come on, here, buddy. All it's, that. <laughs> it's amazing that I can hear it through the microphone. Uh, yeah. I can't tell if you're turning more red. <laughs> Not really. I don't really care that yeah, much. Yeah, I know. But, um,. So you had I'm you just had making me you, lose my train of thought. yeah you had subsidized you, you weren't you weren't out on the street essentially is what yeah, you're saying yeah you and had you're like oh I'll just turn up the shows a little bit more so whenever like that ended it was like okay now I have to do shows and and combined with contests you know yeah because you stuff. weren't you weren't out out by the contests yeah. aren't guaranteed you know, no no yeah. I no I nothing had nothing changed about how I was doing in contests yeah. and, and whatnot other than like the you know the, the parks turning into bowls mm -hmm. so like I wasn't really riding park anymore but in 06 they started doing BMX mega ramp stuff and mm -hmm. Pova is the reason I do mega ramp by the way too that's another tangent story for well, you well let's get to that afterwards because I do I, of course so, I want to talk about mega ramp like I'm still competing and able to hold my own I mean even now yeah. like like yeah. nothing's really changed and it's been you know 12 years since kind of the sponsorship stuff yeah. changed. Slow, yeah. I still have a lot of sponsors, but I don't have a lot of like paying sponsors. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, uh, like not like the, the big money sponsors and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to get a Tom sponsor or something like that. Dude, seriously, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> um, no, I, know, I know what you're just saying. Blow, blow it but up. Just kind of the, the typical because you have you have other brands that you work with and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Kind of, kind of this. You kind of. Uh, so half of my sponsors are like gun industry sponsors. Yeah, that's a gun. And those, I don't really. I mean, it'd be awesome to get like a paycheck from from those, but I'm fine with accepting toys if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, because those are worth money as well yeah but um but yeah so and, and I'm, i have a lot of friends in in that industry and i'm a lot of military you get a, you get a lot of different experiences as well oh yeah yeah, yeah. so, so I've, i have a lot of like buddies from like the military and whatnot and we go hunting and do fun yeah. stuff like that shoot so. pigs from helicopters yeah yeah yeah. it's crazy mm -hmm. it's so really fun they're like an invasive species before everybody freaks very out. very right? invasive yeah. yeah wild wild boar are not indigenous to america they're uh -huh. brought over from europe they were released You've said this a lot of wild. times. You're like, you're like, I have said this a lot of times. It's, yeah. <laughs> because people are always no, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yes, what yeah. the pig did you Bacon, bacon is Problem delicious. Is one, one pig literally will create 65 pigs in one year. Really? With how fast? Like mice. They're, they're mice with horns. They're able to have a litter of piglets up to like 13 pigs, I think, mm -hmm. at the age of six months old. And every three months after, they can do it again. Wow. And then those piglets in one year are at six months old having more piglets and it's just like wow wow they explode yeah. so in like texas oklahoma um arkansas Even louisiana florida mississippi like too, all the way over to florida and i mean if you get more the more west you go it they they turn in they, they haven't really gone that way so much it's probably because the heat but they have a lot of javelinas over there but javelinas have I, like I, what is that a javelina um, is is like a smaller version of a, oh, okay. of, a, of a wild boar basically but it's indigenous to america it's actually Hmm. has been here it wasn't brought from somewhere else and um so the problem is they destroy they eat up crops like uh, there's a guy in uh pretty close to where i live that has a sweet potato farm he's got 108 acres or 110 acre sweet potato field and in one night uh one herd or a sounder is what they're called a sounder of pigs probably like anywhere from like 30 to 80 some odd pigs eight i think eight acres in one night oh wow of sweet potatoes yeah that's like a near a, like a tenth of his crop yeah yeah for the season yeah so 
guys like that are like, get these pigs off of my crops. They're destroying my livelihood. And they also, they kill livestock. They kill people. Mm -hmm. Not it's very rare for yeah. them to kill people, but, they, but it, it does happen. They have uh, tusks on the top and the bottom. And every time they chew, which is what they do all night, they root and chew, the, the tusks rub against each other like this, and they sharpen each other. Mm. So they're like razor sharp on the inside edges. And they're right at femoral artery height. That's in your leg, right? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. That's the one that um, you get poked there and you bleed out in, yeah. a, in like a minute yeah. or so. That's the one that, um, oh, what's his name? At Metro Jam. Poked his lever into it. Fuck, was I for that? I don't know if I was there for that one. Toronto Metro. Uh, oh, the only fall I remember was AJ and Naya. I'm having a, a total brain fart right now. What the uh -huh. heck's his name? He's the one that did the bike flips and stuff. Rope for Standard. I think he's from, from Florida, maybe? God. What the heck is Dave? This? No, I was thinking of the dude that wrote for Miracle. No. He said Florida. I don't know. Maybe. I'm not sure. Shout out to that guy. Glad I'll, he's alive. I'll think of it when I'm not trying to think yeah. of it. Um, but Poke yeah, lever. He, he, he cut the ball off the end of his lever, and it was like sharp. Mm. And he did something, and he stepped over his bike. His bike landed like this, and he stepped over it and went boop. He had like uh, khaki pants on. Yeah. And they turned red. I was not there for this they because red I, I would have instantly. I would have known. And I like literally remember went this. Whop down his leg, and he had a pool of blood about three feet in diameter under him in less than like fifteen seconds. Blah. And he's like, Ugh. he falls over, and the medics saved his out. life. Yeah, ran over and jammed his thumb into the hole, and basically put all of his pressure, his weight on it. And he's like freaking out, get off me! Yeah. He's like, I'm saving your life. Shut up. Yeah. And literally, yeah, saved his life. Blah. But he just he didn't cut it the hole. He just nicked it, and it was just. It, you bleed out real quick. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, pigs. That's that's the the, the main um, threat for humans yeah. with pigs. Not very. It's not very often or likely, but it does happen. Um, so, but the main thing is the agricultural impact of how much they destroy. destroy yeah. And what, there's way too many of them. So. What uh? What else? You've gotten to do some charity rides. You've gotten to do uh -huh. some like conventions, some other stuff. Yeah. It seems like it pretty integrated in that world, and that was kind of yeah. just being from like who you are and what you're mm -hmm. into. Which, you know, yeah. obviously, you're a Texan. I've been to your house and, yeah. shot, and shot guns before. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you, is it... Like, fire... A lot of people are really terrified of firearms because they don't have any um, experience with them. Yeah. They didn't grow up around them. They don't understand gun safety. Um, and they it's 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 a scary thing. The only interaction a lot of people have with firearms is what they see on the news. The bad news. With, like, yeah. bad news. Uh, like, Natalie... For instance, like her when she first your moved, wife, yeah, my wife when yeah. she first moved to Texas, she was terrified of firearms. Like we would go out and target practice in the back, and she would like it freaked her out. She'd be in the house like, uh, like it like legitimately freaked her out because the only experience she had with firearms was friends of hers at school getting mugged or yeah. shot or committing suicide or you you stuff, associate stuff like the that. sound you of gunshots yeah. with it, and a lot of people just the idea gun ooh, scary bad ooh, bad things happen but what they don't understand is like the fact that a lot of crimes are prevented by yeah firearms yeah. by people like you and i the good guy with a gun the good guy with a gun like a, a, a number that like a lot of people conveniently like throw out is like thirty thousand gun gun deaths in america every year or whatever i think it's like 2017 some, something like that thirty thousand huge number yeah. awful awful number yeah but 60% of that is suicide. Suicide, yeah. Okay. That's not homicide. Yeah. That's a problem that would happen with or without a gun, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And that's a that's a big problem that should be addressed. Mental health. Yeah, mental yeah. health. That's a huge yeah. problem that should be addressed. Because... That's the underlying issue for most problems yes. in the country. Homelessness, guns, yes. yeah. you know, and shootings. So, okay, so let's cut that number in half. Let's, yeah. say, let's say we're at 15,000 now. Okay, well, let's look at... Um, accidental i yeah. didn't know it was loaded like that number's pretty big too i forget the actual stat on that but that's a, a, another pretty big chunk out of it and then about 80 percent of what's left is gang on gang crime yeah which is if you're not in a gang and you're not doing something illegal you have no real worry of being yeah. involved in that which again that's bad those most of that stuff is all illegal anyway yeah <laughs> like yeah. so okay Let's take that out. Yeah, you make you guns get down illegal, to the actual number, and you, you take out uh, justifiable killings, shootings, where someone's protecting themselves or their family, um, and the number drops even lower. And it actually, the, the actual rule number in 2017, I think, was about 1,400 oh, homicides. Yeah, 
And when you look at the total number of people in the country and compare that number, we're actually one of the lowest on the list of countries for like yeah. how dangerous it is to be around firearms. And a lot of people don't understand that. And I'm sure people are going to, you know, Vulcan well, freak I mean, out, like, whatever, because they're so ingrained yeah. to, to think that bad, 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 bad news, you know? Well, the, I mean, I, I'm definitely not well-versed on the subject, yeah. but I think my underlying, not that we need to go into the full debate, but my underlying mm -hmm. thing is if I imagine society 50 or 100 years from now, mm -hmm. do I imagine everybody with guns or without guns? Doesn't you, matter. You know, bad guys are still going to have them. Well, you know what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah. a, like an ideal, uh, you know, type thing mm -hmm. is like I imagine it without guns. And okay. so, like, what, how to get there? I have no fucking mm -hmm. idea. That is very so dirty, very muddy. We'll, I don't we'll know. I don't think, know what the right answer is. And I'm not saying like think. Think about this without guns. Let's say without guns. Mm -hmm. Let's say it happens. Well, you turn the computer chip do, off in their brain, do, Morgan. Do people? <laughs> do, pe do people still want to murder each other? Of course. Yes. yes. How are they going to do it? Uh, uh, take them to uncontainable. My my point is, no, I they're know. still I was... gonna find a way to do it. Of course, yeah. And I mean, guns aren't guns aren't the highest mm -hmm. like rate of that uh, homicide that, either. That statement is very very optimistic. Of course, oh, yeah, you yeah. know. So I'm not saying no, I'm not. It's not with, an actual argument. There's nothing wrong I with just, that. I think I, that's I, just yeah. my 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 like my overarching yeah. statement and i'm not yeah. making it i get it i get it and i understand that another, but, but the the reality of it is people are still going to try to kill each other and they're going to find a way to do it no matter what yeah whether it's a firearm or a knife i mean look at like the uk they cracked down real big on on guns and yeah, now everyone's getting lot, stabbed yeah a lot of knife murders. <laughs> a lot a lot yeah. and yeah. i have a really good friend who was swat and like counter terror in london for like 15 years and when he hears people talk about how the UK is a leading example of what to do about get rid of the guns, he laughs. He's yeah. like, no, we went to gun crime every day. Yeah. There's still guns. Yeah. People are still committing crimes with them. The bad guys still have them. They're still doing bad things with them. Yeah. We had to deal with that all the time. Yeah. They come in. Mental health. Mental, mental health. Mental health. Mental is, health. The, is, the actual, the other, is the actual The other answer thing I was going to say caring is for people. The, uh, the year I was talking about um, with those stats, that same year, the number of people that – called the police and felt filed a report because they used a gun to stop a crime mm -hmm. the presence of a firearm not fired mm. the presence of a firearm say somebody's trying to get yeah. away they showed it or whatever yeah. like leave me alone like Warning i, shot I will shoot you whatever yeah. whatever it is yeah. um that happened was over two million crazy that was reported yeah I've had an instance where I had to, I didn't even pull it out, but yeah. the person knew that I had one yeah. based on my body language yeah. and it stopped it instantly. Yeah. It was a road rage situation. Guy cut me off. I honked at him. In hindsight, I shouldn't have honked at him because it made him mad. That's what I could have done differently. That's yeah. what I learned from the situation. But I, he then gets out of his car, starts screaming, saying he's going to kill me, all this stuff. I drove around him, went down a different street, tried to get away from him, followed me, came up beside me in traffic again, got out, starts screaming. I drove off again. Three times this happened. Wow. And then that's a the lot of self control, time, actually. The for last you. time he is screaming, coming up to the window, and I'm blocked. I can't go anywhere. Natalie caught her in the car. Dougie is next to me, Dougie mm -hmm. Oliveira. Yeah. And I said, Dougie, hand me my backpack. And I grabbed it, put it in my lap. He's at the window, and I'm watching my perfect. I never looked at him. But I, in my mind, I was like, okay, this guy, if he produces a firearm, I'm going to deal with this. Yeah. And I had already made the choice in my head of what was going to happen. I'm trying to get away from this guy. I put the bag in my lap and I unzipped it. And as soon as I unzipped it, he said, oh, okay, sorry. And he left. I didn't have to pull it out. Yeah. There was a gun in there, but yeah. I, I didn't have to pull it out. Surprised you didn't have it closer. That's another thing I learned from that situation. Yeah. I mean, you, just, I, knowing, I went, just knowing you. Here's the thing. Yeah. I, and this was a few years back, but like the, you, you learn from every situation. Had he produced a firearm and wanted to kill me because of I honked at him, it would have happened. After he on cut me off one or two, like it, this first or second well, time no, he walked up. No, the window even if almost. it was the last time, yeah. I wasn't prepared. Yeah. to deal with that. Yeah. the way I should have been. So I learned from that, which is why in areas where I can legally carry my firearm because I have a license for it, I have it where I can get at it if I actually need it. Yeah, better to need it and not have it than have it and not need it. True. True. So yeah. 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 There's a lot of. But the thing a, is, a, I, a, uh, it, there's a, polar, a, there's a, a polarizing subject here's that, the thing. Will, that will bring a lot of comments in, I'm sure. That's fine. But, that's yeah, fine. That's and fine. I have no problem talking about it. I don't. You got a YouTube channel? I don't have any YouTube channel. You sign up for it and reply to the comments. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. <laughs> um, Go ahead. I like 
there's a lot of responsibility that comes with, of course, yeah. with carrying a firearm or having one for self-defense. A lot of responsibility. I do not think everyone should have a firearm because not everyone is responsible enough. Now, I don't. I also don't think that people should blanket not be allowed to buy them because you don't know if they are or if they aren't. Mm-hmm. Everyone should have the option to if they want to. Yeah. Um, now, mental health, all that stuff. It that's a that's a a long sticky that's conversation. A, yeah, that's a dirty one. And there's a lot of ins and outs. It's not black and white. Yeah, that's, that's a, not black that's and kinda, white. That's my and, that's my view on it. I see it from both my, sides. The way I look at I it, I don't have a gun. The way I look at it is, I hands down will protect my family and someone that I don't know on the street mm-hmm. if they're in danger. Yeah, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, and I have no qualms about it. Yeah, but I don't want that to ever happen. Yeah. That is not something I look for. That's not. I, I will always talk my way out of a situation if I can. Yeah. I drove away from that dude three times. Yeah. I was. That's what and I, I was. It wasn't like I was just kind of like, ah, bang, 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 bang. you know, like that. That wasn't it. But it was like, dude, you've now pushed me into a corner, and I cannot physically get away from you right now. And I don't know what you're gonna do. No. And my family is in the car, and I'm not willing to 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 put that. Yeah. To risk that. Yeah. Most and it, you know, and it's. It, it yeah I had, I had adrenaline for a while after oh, that. Sure. it was like yeah what the crap you know and and i'm glad nothing happened but the presence of a firearm that wasn't even shown the the thought yeah it was the thought of a firearm completely de-escalated. neutralized yeah. and de-escalated that situation yeah because big boy wasn't so big when he when he thought yeah that i had a gun yeah and I was not trying to fight the guy. I never said a word to him. All I did was honk at him when he cut me off. Yeah, which isn't which isn't uh, that big of a deal. So uh, you know that guy's mental health could have been compromised as well. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, but that's not something I ever I ever want to have to deal with. But it is something that I will try to prepare for for sure if I can. Well, let's go. Let's switch something a little lighter. Yeah, let's go a little <laughs> bit lighter. Yeah. The all the stats. That I got those are from like the government like yeah. crime okay. stat websites. People can look. I encourage people to look that type of stuff up because when you actually like kind of look into things like that, you don't just take what you hear. Yeah, like you learn things, and a lot of stuff you hear on, on news and stuff they're trying to push an agenda. So yeah, it's just, definitely it's it's yeah. a it's a wild world with uh, look into it how you can. There's lies, there's damn lies, and then there's statistics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can make statistics say whatever you want them to say if you omit the proper piece of information. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, selective. Yeah, headlines. So look at the whole thing. And don't read headlines only. Yeah, look at the whole thing. Um, But uh, gladiators in BMX. Gladiators and yeah, humans? like kind of the you know the the dying breed, the <laughs> you know the tough guys, people that just go face first into the wall, <laughs> that are willing to go face first into the wall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. is that a who who has that these days? I mean, I know you mentioned Dennis. For, Dennis definitely. Uh, man, I feel like, or or if if, if that's a hard question. Just a, overall opinions about the state of BMX now versus, I think BMX has gotten more technical mm-hmm. all the way across the board, which is cool. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, there's the tricks that are happening now in both park, dirt, street, everything, like take a lot more skill i was watching um i say a lot more skill it's a different different i guess it's more involved maybe i'm not sure what? i was watching a um practice well no it was uh it was an old contest i think i want to say it was an old contest just the other day uh, like there's like a one of those, like mid 2000 bmx accounts or one, one of those accounts early 2000s bmx yeah or, yeah like that's yeah, they've that's been killing it lately uh they've been posting a lot of stuff from old comps and whatnot yeah that I was at, you know, and I'm like, oh, cool, this is sweet to get to watch, you know, these runs and whatnot. And like, I think what really stood out to me was the uh, they posted Doyle's run from 2003 uh-huh. X Games, I think, Dirt, and it was like the big, the big banger trick he did was the three whip mid set, yeah, which yeah, it's a banger trick, it's awesome. But when you compare that to like the stuff that's happening now, like I'm just like, dang, like was it really like, was it really that different back then? Like, and and it's. I feel like everything's just become more dialed, mm-hmm. and because it's more dialed, 
you can add in something else. Yeah. Yeah. The more comfortable you get with something, the more you can do, you know, and I think that's across the board. Yeah. But on that, you know, the flip side of that is you still can't beat that. Yes. Yes. You it's still fun. can't beat like, dude, the stuff that's just yeah. like pure, like gnarliness yeah. and style. Like some dudes have it. Some dudes don't. It's funny you, you say can, that because I know you didn't listen to Trey's podcast and he said pretty much the exact same thing. Yeah. No, I'm saving I'm saving Trey's for the long drive I have on the way home. Nice. Because I know I can just hit play and listen to it and yeah. enjoy it while I'm cruising down the road. Cool. Um, but yeah, I start I, I almost did it the other day, I put it on, I was like, No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm save this for a drive. <laughs> no, but you're yeah, you're you're not wrong. I think the other I mean I I feel like I may have said it a couple of times. It's just the lack of variety in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. you know, kind of the like, all right, I'll do the three down whip bar. Well, you some, do the three some bar dudes have, whip. some dudes have it and some dudes don't. I just but, wish, I wish like no foot can, no foot cans got scored well or something, right. you know, like a variation or yeah. like combinations, kind of the stuff that, that Dennis used to do or Drew used to do, or just kind of the, the, the perfect execution of a, of a simple trick where if it was like somehow like, Hey, you know, you can do all the hardest stuff, but like do one. Do you wish grinds were required in vert contests? No. <laughs> but I mean, like you got to do at least four different grinds. At the same time, though, like a mean ass tooth cr- toothpick across like four boards is or three boards is like well, a, yeah. is pretty amazing. Yeah. Also, it would especially when you get to see that now. The o, the OG comps all used to have they would yeah. do different like yeah. Smith grind one side, feeble grind the other side, ice grind you know, and like feeble grind on vert ramp has to be the scariest thing on the planet. <laughs> Let's be real. Uh, yeah. Is insane. Vert ramps are, yeah. are scary in, in general. In general, but in a general. feeble grind on a five foot quarter <laughs> is scary. Yeah, it's got to be scary. I've never done a feeble grind on a vert ramp. Never going to. So, eh, nah. You, you can, can. You can do it. You can. You can do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did it on the the quarter at West. Did you? Yeah. The oh the mega ramp quarter. Yeah. Oh my god. You would. I did a handful. I did a handful of lip tricks just to do it. Yeah. So do you think, I mean, so are you entertained? Do you watch BMX these days? Like, are you up on it? You know, are you going to watch the Olympics? Like, did you yeah, watch X yeah. Games last week? I did. You know, yeah, so. yeah. And, and I'm still very entertained by BMX. And, yeah. and I don't follow it like I used to. Of course. Because I've got other things going on. Mm-hmm. I got a five-year-old that is center of my world right now. Yeah. You know, and like that, that's, I wouldn't want it any other way. Um so I do, I do try to keep up with, with, you know, stuff that's going on, but I also miss a lot too, but like, yeah, I'm going to watch the Olympics. That's, that's a milestone for our sport. Um, X games is fun to watch. It was weird cause it's the first one I haven't been at in person in, yeah since 2003. Right. Um, I think, of, it, I think it's, like a, weird... it's like a, it's like a 0.5 X games, you know, it was like X well, games 2020.5 or something, you know? Yeah. I thought this, I thought the, like. It was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Like I enjoyed the the scenario. Mm-hmm. Being at Pat's house was awesome. I thought the setting was really cool. Um, the one thing that is was not there that is usually there is a lot of screaming humans. Yeah, like yeah. the crowds, and that's a part of BMX. Like I'm um, BMX. It's a part of X Games. Um, like the the crowd is is wild. It's, the vibe it, 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 adds the vi- to it. it yeah. changes the vibe big yeah. time. I mean. Yeah. Um, Granted, you know, the park Be- and the mega ramp stuff are a little bit different, a little bit different, but like, it's crazy. Like riding practice all week on mega ramp with not really anyone watching, just a couple people watching is totally different than when you drop in for your run yeah. and there are, you know, 40, 60,000 people watching. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in Austin on the, the racetrack at night. The lights are on the ramp, and like the crowd from the top looking down was surreal. Yeah, there were forty thousand people around the bottom of the ramp. That's amazing. Like that—that's the number I got from ESPN. Yeah. So that's what they said was yeah. down there. Because especially, at, especially the night of Mega Ramp, because dude, it was like the Kanye night too. So I it remember was basically looking down like, and being like, "What yeah. the heck?" And like the crowd disappeared into the darkness. Yeah. You know, because the lights only shone on, on so much of it. You know, and it was just, it was so wild, and the noise—it's—it's it's totally different. Yeah. So there's that aspect of it that wasn't there, um, but I thought it was fun to watch. I mean, yeah. it was—it was they did a good job with it, and like the judging, I thought was on point. Like for what was done, like I thought it was, I, I had no problems with it. Twelve sixty versus uh, double backflip three sixty. Um. Or the Aussie roll or whatever. I think when I asked some people, people in the comments were like, 
it's not a double backflip 360 it's an aussie roll and i was like well i asked ryan williams what he was going to do and he said it's double th- backflip 360 it's so a, I don't it's know. a three flip with an extra flip there you go so that's it's what it is but tomato you can call tomato. it whatever you want but which one which Delaware. one wins which one's harder you think because somebody double, has done double backflip double backflip back no hander versus that no 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 double backflip 360 well, was it wait no I, wait Oh, the twelve. You're talking about. You're talking about in park. I yeah, yeah. I was best thinking trick. dirt. I was thinking dirt. In, yeah, best trick. Ryan did the same trick in both. Oh yeah. Um, the twelve sixty. Twelve sixty. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That seems seems to be the consensus from all yeah. the people I, that Ryan would, kills could, it. Could I love. Feel, I love Ryan. Yeah. And like that was amazing. Yeah. Um, but like that twelve sixty was okay. was freaking gnarly. I mean, that's what everybody said that yeah. d- directly in front of Ryan Williams too, yeah. because I was like, oh, does that win? You know, and everybody was like, yeah, yeah. like Sandoval. But yeah. worth all, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I have no idea. Did, I mean, did Ryan have an issue with it? No, no, no. Huh? I think he was. I mean, I think he was disappointed. Well, I think yeah, he I didn't. Mean, I think he didn't know. It's, all, it's so. always like it, yeah. if if you're putting forward your what you consider your best your best foot, and it's not good enough, it's disappointing. Yeah, I think that's, that's I think that's, that's what it was. Yeah, I mean, that so. that doesn't matter what. I don't think he was debating it. I think he was just right. like, fuck. You know, yeah. so it is what it is. But, I mean, like uh, Todd Mayan doesn't know handed. He does. Yeah. Oh, crazy. I mean, it's on Resi. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I was in, I literally I, that's this is the first time I've looked at my phone. I, does Resi count? It's a gray area. Gray area. It's a gray area. What if it's black Resi? Does it count? Is there another kind I of Resi? I'm just joking. <laughs> just trying to get you to get it, give an answer. I think that's the only kind of Resi there is. So here's the deal. Personally, yeah, I don't call it counted until it's on a real landing. Yeah. The stuff is gnarly that's happening on big like nitro stuff. Would not we're talking be, about we're talking about nitro basically. Yeah, well, so, like, I mean any I mean any box jump really. Well, I, I mean, mean like what somebody does something at the Woodward resi. Oh, if you do it on the Woodward resi and you don't yeah. do it on real jump, yeah. it does not count one hundred percent. No, right. no sir, no. Because there's a perfectly good ramp with the same lip right there. You should be able to do it on both. Period. Okay, fair enough. That's a good. That's that a, a good, good answer? answer. Yeah, because it, that makes sense. Because in the in the nitro world, yeah. it doesn't exist. So you can do it yeah, because there are exactly. some of those tricks that you can't do them on a real box jump or anything. That's yeah. like so. Like when I I did I did the one handed double whip. The first mm-hmm. time I did it was on in a nitro show mm-hmm. in South Texas. I did it on the jump to the to the airbag, and I rode out of it. And like the the trick, the mechanics of it are the same it's all there you land it's a little bit squishy but you still landed and rode away now the resi is a little bit harder to ride out on because it can be slick if you land a little off mm-hmm. you where you might pull it on a real landing you're probably going to slide out on that so but there's all that so you have to land it solid so you did do the trick but finding a jump that kind of matches that jump is pretty hard to find impossible yeah yeah and i mean a lot of those tricks like the one hand double whip for me personally it ain't happening on a regular box jump. Yeah. No. I yeah. did it on uh, Mini Mega at, at that uh, Mongoose Jam mm. in 18. And that, that was too reeling. That was honestly, like, to, for me, like, yeah, I pulled it. And then when I did it on Mini Mega, I was like, okay, it's done. <laughs> I, actually, I actually did it. Yeah. For real. Yeah. And it wasn't as clean as it was on, on the Nitro jump. But, like, f- personally, I, I felt like I had actually pulled it when I did it on a real landing. That's cool. And then... Oddly enough, this this is another side story, but like whenever like uh, X Games came that year, I was like, okay, everyone's going to expect me to do it on the like I got to do this trick at X Games on Mega on the on the full size one, and I'm like kind of stressing out about it, and I was like, well, what the heck am I? What's my run going to be? Because I, I, <laughs> yeah. I was going to do the whip drop five tail whips. Yeah, I was going to do the whip six drop tail whips. Yeah, and then I was like double one handed double whip the jump, and then what am I going to triple whip the quarter? Like holy crap, that's six tail whips. Like, yeah, no, I can't do that. <laughs> and I was just like, ah. and I I remember mentioning that to Natalie, and she just goes, do it on the quarter. Wow! Shout and out I was to Natalie. Like, I was like, "What?" And she was like, "No one's gonna expect it. Do it on the quarter." And I was like, uh, "I've never even done a one-handed whip air before." I was yeah. like, "I don't even. I don't know about that." And she was like, I'm "Telling you," and I was like, "I'll think about it." And then, sure enough, come contest. I like practice. I did a uh, a one-handed whip, like just a single whip, probably twelve or thirteen feet. On so here's on mega ramp a 12 or 13 foot air is like a five foot air on a, like an eight foot quarter <laughs> yeah so that's... like it sounds gnarly yeah but when you work out the ratios and how it feels when you're riding it it feels comfortable going that high because of the size of the ramp it doesn't feel like you're you know going higher than you've ever gone in your life when you you know because most people haven't gone 
you know, 12, 15 feet out of a quarter pipe. Yeah. Yeah. A regular size quarter pipe. Yeah. So the ratio wise, the, the big tranny and everything going faster feels better. And that's about comfortable air height. Okay. Fair for, enough. For instance. So that's like, yeah. Which sounds, we, we sounds can talk, a little, we can talk a, little wild. a little more in depth about this, but on along the same lines as the does resi count thing. I honestly think that if you don't go over 15 feet in a mega ramp event, your quarter shouldn't count. Ooh, spicy. I'm, I'm saying it. Yeah. That's because literally the comfortable height, like I just said, is like 12, 13, 14 feet. That's the comfortable height. If you're not going, it's called big air. If yeah. you're not going yeah. even the comfortable height, and doing like a crazy gnarly trick. Okay, yeah, you did a crazy gnarly trick, but come on. Yeah. You got to go a little higher. Like, anyway, that's another story. Yeah. So, like, I did the one handed whip at the comfortable height, and it literally works. It's more quarter pipe one handed whips are more comfortable than box jump one handed whips. It literally goes out and then comes back naturally. Uh. And I was like, whoa. First go, I was like, yep, yep. And I landed, and I was like, oh boy. And then I, I came down, and right then I was like, "Oh yeah, it's happening." So I'm, and then you, I'm not, well, I was like, "I'm trying it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if it was happening. I was like, it's, and I'm then you, it. you didn't try one in practice. I didn't try. It goes one back. In it goes back to the, the conversation so, from earlier, of the triple whip thing. When I did my first triple whip, I've I have never attempted a triple whip <laughs> in my life <laughs> under twenty feet over coping. <laughs> that is a- <laughs> Oh, that is a crazy <laughs> statement. That so, is a crazy statement. I've never tried it in a foam pit. I've never tried it like at Woodward in the foam pit on a box jump. I've ne- I've never tried a triple whip before. And like literally, I had in my head that I wanted to do a triple whip at whatever X Games that God, was. You are, that stadium. you are a different fucking type of person. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I gotta get a good score. This is like Tangent City, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. Yeah, go no, ahead. it's fine. I, it's fine. I was like, I gotta get a good score down, so I'm gonna do a double whip. And all during practice, I've been doing double whips. I've been jumping the jump, dragging the brakes a little bit, and then doing like 15 mm-hmm. foot comfortable mm-hmm. height double whips. Felt good, felt clean. This was in the stadium in L.A. Whenever they had the rally track around it and they got dirt all over the ramp. Oh yeah, whatever that, year one. that was. Yeah. The and Coliseum one. Eleven, maybe. I don't know. I have a anyway, horrible. Yeah. yeah, it was that one. And I was like, hey, I'm going to do one run practice. I the, one, don't. the one that I got up on the rolling, and I was like, I'm going to jump mega ramp. And I was like, why the fuck am I going to jump mega ramp? And then I got down. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> I should have. I got Walter up there that time. and he, That was he, the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah same and year. And I was yeah. like, you're going to put on my died, helmet. Right? You're going to put on my helmet. You're going to get on my bike. You're going to do a rebel run, and they can't stop you. And then they they kicked him off before he had a chance to do it. And I was like, dang it. I wanted him to do it so bad. He was all in. Yeah. No, that was at X, at X Games. Yeah, at X Games. Yeah, I that's think what he, I was thinking, he too. he jumped the one at, at West, I think, oh, eventually. He did. Yeah, but, um, no, we were, we were, we were plotting. Yeah. We got foiled, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm sorry, Walter. Uh, I wanted it to happen. Yeah. But, but anyway, yeah. I, I digress. Tangent on the tangent. Yeah. We got all we're the tangents. We're killing it. Yeah. We got all the tangents. So I was like, I got to get a good score on the board. So I'm going to do a double whip, but I'm going to go higher. Because in practice, I always kind of hold back a little bit. But when it comes to game time, I'm like, I no breaks, death grip. I pump as hard as I can down the landing. I don't ever pump the quarter yeah, because I want to be like comfortable when I take off. You got to take off right or you're screwed. So I pump the bottom of the landing as hard as I can, and I just go. And I went to do the double whip to get my solid score. I think I did like a tuck flip over the jump and then i was like yet air double whip and i was because i went faster i went higher significantly higher and significantly like 20 feet or something like that and i did the double whip and went one two and i was like at the top when the second one came around and i was like if i catch this i'm gonna catch it and keep rotating and just do like a 360 double whip to fakey on mega and i don't want to do that (laughs) so i was like i'm gonna die so i was like three it is so i just did it again I just let it go again and I got pedals, feet on pedals, landed and looped out. And I was just like, holy crap, I can do it. And I think it was like 21 feet or something like that. So you're, you're literally saying that you had no, you at the bottom of the quarter pipe, you had no intention of doing it. Was a double three. Whip. It, yeah. I decided is, to do a triple whip at the top. I, got, I literally got the chills because I could just imagine. So the quarter is, is 27 feet, right? Yeah, 27 and a half, I think. So you're above Two 20. So you're 50 feet in the air yeah. looking at your bike. And, and going, I was like, well, I'm going to crash if three. I don't do another one. So yeah. I just did another one. And it came around and, and I And you said you did the, you did the, you, you motioned the whip around. Like yeah, you, I just yeah. went, womp, womp, womp. And I, just, I was like, one, two. And then I was like, nope. And I just did another one. And then, but I was in the back seat a little bit. So when I landed, I looped out. And I was like, 
okay, I guess we're doing triple whips now. And then I was like, well, I've, I've got three more chances. So I'm, I might as well just get the triple whip because I already tried it. And now, if, cause now if everyone knows I'm trying to triple whip and I do a double whip, the score is going to be worse. Yeah. You know, so it kind of, it kind of screwed me over a little God. bit, but then all three times I crashed, I crashed all four and didn't get a score on the board that year. Yeah. Really. I mean, I, I got, so you survived, but I don't you think got I was last. dead last. I don't think I was dead last because I think there were some other gnarly biff ups that yeah. year. But oh, like, I think it was that year. Yeah. That was the year Buckworth got second, I think, mm -hmm. or third. He got a medal that year. I think. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. So I was like, okay, well, that's a bummer. And then you know, fast forward to 2013. It took me a couple of years to get it. It's so great. It, but I got it in Brazil. It's the first one I pulled. Yeah. And that was a and gold? every triple whip I've ever done has been over twenty feet and has been gold or no no no, no I got I got third in, a third in Brazil. In Brazil and then you got and a gold I, in somewhere. I got second in was... that same year that was the year of the world oh, tour okay. X Games. I yeah. got second in Barcelona uh -huh. no 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 fourth in Barcelona second in Munich and then first in L A that's okay that year. yeah so I got all I got the whole I remember being very I got happy. the whole gambit that year I was very happy when you got it in, yeah. in LA. thank you yeah. I was oh, happy too. I was I'm happy sure too. you were. I'm sure you were. Um, there were some other people that weren't, but that's okay. Yeah, fuck them. I don't be, know who he'll be okay. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> Vince? Uh, maybe. No, it's literally just a guess. But <laughs> yeah, Vince. Probably, Vince had yeah. an amazing run yeah. that year. Yeah, he had so an amazing hard. run. Uh, I I mean, fuck. Let's just keep going so there, and then we'll go back to my oh, original oh, thought. Oh, was turn the tangent back. I'm gonna turn yeah, it back a little yeah, bit yeah. to the one-handed double whip. Okay. So my one-handed double whip. I had didn't practice it. This is where you were trying to go. No, because go what direction. what made me talk about the trip whips was I had never done one over under twenty feet. I'd never tried one in a foam pit, and in, then the dub one handed double whip. I'd done it on the two two jumps to resi, oh, yeah. the real yeah. one, and then it, and then it was like, well, I'm not doing it practice because I don't know what's gonna happen because it feels believe it or not, yeah. it feels really wild. Like it's, I, it's I could imagine it's crazy. It it, it feels you're, you're as on, awkward because as it, it looks. it's a. I mean, I assume you know when you you have one hand on the bars and you're trying to control everything. It it's feels a, is just as awkward as it looks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's whack. Cause your arm goes with it. I assume you can't, yeah. you can't stop it. You have yeah. to, you have to be nice and stiff. Yeah. Like you got to manhandle it a little bit, Yeah, but it, it evidently it goes. Um, and I tried it my first run or second, whenever I tried it. And I, I think I pulled out, I popped out a little bit and I knew it as soon as I took off. That's the, the problem with mega ramp is like, as soon as you leave the lip, you know if you're casing or you're landing flat. Fuck. Instantly. Yeah. It's like, yep, mess that one up. And then you just you're just long for the ride. Cause you've got however long it takes to go all the way up and come all the way down. And if you're out, it's one time I, I, I say I jokingly say I did a forty foot air because I did a twenty foot over coping air and I landed twenty feet under coping. Fuck. So I dropped for forty feet literally yeah. 40 feet before yeah. I made contact with the ramp and just exploded everywhere. But like that was in the side of the Staples center. But so you literally Mavro actually filmed that one in slow-mo. <laughs> like I, he'll and, send me the clip. Mavro is a machine. He, he said he, he slow mo and he, I'm shaking my head on the way down. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then it Cause you have time to think about it. You're just like, this is not fun. Or you're know, like, this is fun right now, but it's not about. Yeah. To be. Yeah. And uh, I think that my front wheel, I think, blew out on that one. And I, my head hit at the same time my front wheel blew out. So everyone thought my head exploded. <laughs> I'm I glad was, it didn't. I'm glad was, it was just a front wheel. I was fine. <laughs> Say it was just. <laughs> but, yeah, so the one-handed double up, the first one I landed low and kind of blew off. And then the second one I did, like, the squirrely bob, like, one foot off, like, woo, but I, I pulled it. Yeah. And, Yeah. So got second place with that one, but like I've never tried a one hand. And then the next year was uh, nineteen, I guess. Yeah, it was eighteen it was that first, and then nineteen, and I did it like first try, and it was like pedals came in the sticker, and I was like I could not do it any better than I did it. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, yeah, I'm not. I'm peaking. I'm not doing. I'm not gonna one up that score. Yeah. So that's why Michael and I did doubles because he he is in the same position. He was like, I'm not gonna do better, and I just did. Yeah, and then they tried to stop us, and like, no, I was sick. That's another sick. story yeah. too. But. Well, I, <laughs> I literally said, "Get out of the way! This is happening!" I screamed it at, at homie at the top, and he just goes, "Okay." Fine. And yeah. then we and then we did it, and then afterwards, of course, everyone's like, "That was so good! It was the best thing ever." Yeah, it was great. Burr. You really brought the vibe. Yeah, but uh, I've never tried a one hand double up under twenty feet either, <laughs> on a quarter at least. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> that's not a trick that I that I just do to do. I would imagine not. Um. 
I don't even well mega ramp <laughs> mega ramp is a whole other topic so uh let's just start at the beginning because you said pova is the one that got you to ride mega ramp yeah so 2006 x games they had it at the home depot center mm-hmm. that was the year that it was down the park course was down in the uh tennis stadium well a and great they, year they, i almost wanted to talk about that one but you talked about you talked about that contest a little bit on the podcast with doyle um, but that was like one of the best X Games courses. Oh, yeah. Awesome. It was seriously, it was, awesome. it was such a cool scene with the, the stadium was, around. There's no footage of it, by the way. Really? Because I, because I think it was I a year. My, my run from TV. Do you? I have the actual run, yeah. Okay. Because both of them, actually. You're good about that, by the way. Because one of my, yeah. well, one of my uh, brothers, my brother's old roommate from college, filmed like T-boated filmed it. or something? Yeah. yeah. And, and sent it. So I have, I have, I think he put it on YouTube or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I struggle to find footage from that, but, um, so go ahead. It's 2006. Two thousand six. So that, Pova. that, that year I show up to ride park and Pova, what did he, I want to say he was like, Hey, bring your full face. And I was just like, okay. So he was like, I had my full face and I knew they were doing mega ramp for the first time with BMX because mm-hmm. there was some weird stipulation where they could have the ramp at x games if there was no bmx comp for three years or something like that so the first three years there was only skate i forgot about that it's so fucking weird it is what yeah, it is yeah um everyone I, like all the dude the skaters that ride mega like i love all those dudes yeah like they're we're all good buddies like that that's actually a, a fun crew because yeah. all the skaters it's fun all the bikers that ride. it's, fun, well, it's funny that's something the bikers yeah. like we all like some of them are just in their heads Vince. the whole time. No, they're just they're just in their head the whole time, so they're not really interacting with everybody around them. Yeah, and yeah. they're not really. It's practicing. a fucking head game for sure. And yeah, there's. I was actually talking about this with Mike Kell just the other day. We were at the park chatting about this with one of the uh, the local kids down there, and like he he was talking about how like there's like there's a crew of dudes. It's like myself, uh, Mike Kell, Dougie, and uh, like. Uh, Curtis Downs mm-hmm. definitely the year he he rode with us was yeah. definitely in in the same group like we're just having fun yeah like literally it's a big it's it's a session like mm-hmm. we're we're up there to enjoy riding our bikes with each other and we're goofing off and having fun like uh, Curtis and I were doing like doubles runs in practice filming each other with the GoPros and stuff mm-hmm. and like just having a blast with it like I love riding with those dudes and like the whole week of practice that's all we do we just goof off and then there's the other dudes that literally are just inside their head the whole time and yeah. are just like in the corner like not talking to anybody just being by themselves and that's how they do it yeah it's cool it yeah. works for them obviously yeah oh uh our willie is in in the crew with us too yeah. by the way he's yeah. like session the whole time so fun to ride with but um and then you got all the skaters that there's not there's not like headbutting or animosity like everyone's stoked for everyone yeah. like when someone pulls a good run it's awesome and the skaters are all just as stoked for the bike stuff and we're stoked for this like it's it's fun and like we actually find we've been begging for like years open up practice for everybody at the same time because they always separated skate and bike for some for yeah. some silly reason the medics are there the whole time they just separated us out so they couldn't skate and there was always be like a couple skaters that wanted to skate and we'd be like yeah come skate and they'd come skate with us during the BMX practice. And then, and then there'd be a couple of bikers like me and Michael or whoever that want to ride. And Dougie that want to ride, like, keep riding after our practice. Ever. And the skaters are usually like, yeah, it's cool, whatever. Hang out. But technically on paper, it was always separate. So finally, I think um, Sydney X Games was the first one where they were like, okay, it's open for everybody all day. Mm-hmm. Literally, it's just open all day. You can come and go as you please, whatever. Because we always kind of did it anyway, but now it was like official, like it was just open practice. And because everyone gets along, it's one person at, at a time, you yeah. know, like, yeah, you, can. you can't, unless you like coordinate it, you're not doing doubles runs, you yeah. know. Um, but, and it's, it's so much fun because you have all day. And like in, in, Sydney, like Michael and I rode for like eight hours one of the days. That's crazy. I say one of the days. It was like multiple days. It was like me, Michael. Because it's the Brown, only time you Brown. get to ride like, the ramp, too. Right? We, we just sessioned it. Yeah, we only get to ride it for like yeah. when it's set up at contests. You know, yeah. like we don't have it in our yard, like Bob. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, but like, so bringing it back off that tangent, 
we all get along great. Mm-hmm. So there is no weirdness yeah. with the whole bike. Do you think it was like Danny way? Because that was like his gig in the beginning or something. Yeah. I like think that. it had something to do with, but, like, it, but isn't it like it the birth of big air? Isn't it like Hoffman's in the corner right there? Like didn't Danny got isn't, his isn't he? Yeah. Isn't from, he credited? Yeah. No, like yeah, in, like in the birth of big air, Danny says he got his inspiration. Yeah. From that. And then, and like, I'm like, yeah. Danny's awesome too. Like, yeah, I like kind of weird. I like Danny. I like Danny. Yeah. I get along with him. I'm sure he's nice. I don't have any issues with him, but there's, there's always, there's always, there's always been weird stuff yeah. in the past. Yeah. It's not weird now. That's what I'm trying to get okay, at. Cool. There's, there's nothing weird now. Um, so 2006 X games comes around and Pova's like, Hey, I want you to try out Mega Ramp. I think it's right, right up your alley. I think you'll, you'll like it. It'll be sick. And I was like, no. <laughs> and he was like, no, seriously, I think you'll enjoy it. Like you should at least try it once. And I was like, eh. I don't think so. And he was like, go up there and take a run. I went up, I looked at it, and I was like, mm, no, I'm good. I went back down, and Pova literally like badgered me over it. He was like, no, dude, take one run, and I'll stop. I won't bring it up again. Take one run. I was like, fine. So I finally got up there, and I, I did it. Dropped in, jumped it. Straight jump? It. Just straight, straight yeah, jump. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. You I just did know. like a straight jump. And uh, it took me, I think it was, yeah, the first year, I, never, I didn't flip it. I just straight jumped it because yeah. I was like, it, it kind of freaked me out a little bit for good reason, I guess. But like, I dropped in, jumped it, landed, grabbed a bunch of brakes, and did like a 12 foot air without trying, like literally no effort. Yeah. And when I landed, it was like it was over, but I was like riding down the quarter back up the landing, and I was just like, holy crap. And I was like, <laughs> that was the best thing ever. And, then, and of course, Pub was like, duh. Yeah. So I went back up and like, they, they had pry me off the ramp. Like they closed practice and I was still trying to keep going. Like That's I was amazing. having so much fun. And cause it's a roller coaster. You just hang on and yeah. it's, it's an adrenaline rush. And like, it checks off like all the boxes. And I was just like, yeah, this is, this is tight. And then from there, like, yeah, that year, I think I did like a 360, which was more which like is, a 450. Yeah. Which oh, is wow. way gnarly. Oh, yeah. dude, I over rotated and was like, Skirt! and I pulled it. I yeah. rode away from it. But it was just me. There was open practice for anyone that wanted to try it that year because they didn't have Experiment. a field. Experiment. Experiment. Yeah. Did they, they have a competition that year? Yeah, or they the, did. Oh, okay. They literally said, if you ride practice and you want to be in the contest you're in, that was that was how you got in. Is, that, first, is that the, the year that year. Gary rode it? Uh, no, no, no. The, oh, I think Gary year. wrote it in uh, in the Staples Center. Oh, okay. The next year. Yeah. So this was 06. Yeah, and then it was in Staples 07, 08. And then it just, I yeah. think it was Home Depot after that. But um, so. And then that was, that was the rest is history. The three dudes that were in mm-hmm. were Robinson, Keggy, and uh, Alan Cook. Oh, wow. And then they were like, we just need more riders. So ride practice. If you want to be in, you're in. And I was the only one that did it. Wow. There were four of us in that first comp. Wow. And I got fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And I didn't care. Uh, but no, it was it was awesome. And then the next year, because I had been in it, like I didn't they did like they did like a qualifier thing or something like that. A couple more dudes wanted to be in it. I think Anthony started riding it and McCann and you know, like just kind of Built yeah. the field up a little Buckworth, bit. Buckworth, Mira probably got Buckworth Mira, Mira was, got in there a Buckworth's little bit. First year was was the year in the Coliseum. Oh, okay, yeah. Because he was he had never ridden it before, and I remember he he was kind of like freaking out about it, and I was like, hey, just chill out. Like, yeah, this is how we co- we go about this. Like, and I I helped him kind of like get through the nerves yeah. to take his first run on it. But well, shout out to Pova. Yeah, Pova for for smacking you on the ass and making right? you drop in because yeah. because of. I mean, <laughs> produced a lot of fucking amazing moments over the po, years. Yeah. So Pova's awesome. Um, but yeah, so that was the start of it, and it just kind of kept going. And I feel like I I always felt like I couldn't really compete in that event. Mm-hmm. Like I never went into that thinking I can get a medal for a long. Because I mean, like I mean, especially in the beginning, Robinson and those dudes were so keggy, and those dudes were so yeah. far ahead of everybody else. Well, because, I couldn't do any tricks in the quarter pipe. Yeah, I I could do a tabletop. Yeah. I literally that was that was like I could do a tabletop. This was before I started doing one handed tabletops. It was like now I, I wish I could if I could get away with only doing one handed tabletops, that's all I would do on it. Yeah. I would not do tricks in the core pipe because it looks good, it feels good, it's what feels right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it you know, and it produces the best photos every single year. Exactly. Too. Yeah. So. Exactly. It's, well, I don't know, those one handed tail whip photos are pretty wild too. <laughs> I so. still think the one-handed tapes look more classic. Yeah, for sure, just, for sure. But. You can get into it. I can't do that on a small quarter. I can't do it. I've tried, and it just doesn't work. 
because yeah. literally I take off straight up and and do like a one hander. Mm-hmm. I stand up on the bike, straighten my knees out, do a one hander, and then at the top I just turn and bend my knees and twist, and the bike folds. And it, that's how it works. And then and then you just kind of like pop the bike back, and you just on the way down fall back into it. Uh, yeah, I'll take your word. There's for just it. not There's... enough time on, for me on smaller stuff because I'm not I'm not good. Well, yeah, it sounds like. It sounds like everything moves in slow motion a bit because, uh, yeah, it, because yeah. if you have the conscious ability to be like, well, I guess I'm doing three tail whips and actually get close yeah. to it at the peak, There's time. you know, yeah, There's it's time. crazy. So, um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel like I could, I could compete with like what you were saying with like Kevin and those, and then the, the year Mira rode. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Like he literally did like an 18 foot flare whip. Yeah. He was gnarly and landed like dude. And he did the three six, and he was the first to do the three sixty flips, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Air yeah. traffic control. Yeah, I coined that name. Who? Alligator I, wrestler. Well, air traffic control is no handed, right? Yeah, no handed three flip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Mira was so yeah. fun to watch. I yeah. was so bummed he didn't ride more of those. Yeah, because like he just did the one, and I think it was one of those things where like. He didn't. He thought he should have won, maybe, but he didn't, and he just did, was okay. I'm, I'm not into it. Yeah. Which I can't remember who won, but Keggy. Keggy. No. Keggy did a twenty one foot flare whip and landed stickers. He uh huh. Yeah. He did a flip double whip to twenty one foot flare it whip. It is called big air. Yeah. So um bonkers. Well that's and talk. I I I couldn't compete with those tricks though. I'm like, dude, I can't oh, yeah. come yeah, close especially. to that. But I mean you could, you came into your own, of course, too. Well, yeah, and so. it just it just took took me. I was a late bloomer. Yeah. What about and, then, and my dad <laughs> My dad, like, what year was it? I think it was the first year in Minneapolis. He was like, hey, you know, you're the old guy up there now. Yeah, that's and I was point. like, what? And I thought about it for a second because, like, it was always, like, Keggy and Kevin and, you know, like, Alan and, like, mm-hmm. all these dudes that are, like, the greats, you know? And, like, I'm just, like, the kid that's tagging along, basically. Yeah. And I was like, shit. Oh man! <laughs> when did this happen? Like, how did I turn into the old guy up there? I I still don't feel like the old guy up there, but apparently I am. Yeah, it's that's part of life, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I did want to <laughs> talk about the uh, invention of a third obstacle, and the <laughs> the obstacles and the uh, well, the, the the metaphorical obstacles of of how it came about <laughs> and getting it yeah. to be scored. And all that stuff. Te- technically, it wasn't scored. Uh, okay. I, so yeah. I heard. Yeah. Fair so enough. I heard. So it helps your overall impression. I and think, and that's where they. And how much it. you uh, credit you me? Uh, how much you credit me for doing the double whip? Also, you throw that in there. Too. <laughs> you helped. Yeah. You definitely helped. Yeah. You you gave me a nudge. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it. It was something you wanted to do already. Yeah. Uh, this oh, guy yeah, just gave you a little monetary me. nudge. No, it, that wasn't on my radar. No? That wasn't. Did I, some, was I the one that suggested it? No, it was Michael. Oh, okay. So. I have a horrible memory. So I, You were there. That was China. You, right? Yeah, you were on the lower deck. Well, let's, hold on. Before we get, let's not get ahead. <laughs> how, how does it come about? Okay, so there was a contest that happened in Moscow, Russia. That was a mega ramp event. Okay, um, and it was re- it was really a really weird thing that came about, and like they had this huge prize purse, and they flew us all over there, and all this stuff, and then uh, we got there, and there was no money, <laughs> so it was like, oh hey guys, we still we don't have any money for the prize purse, but we still want you to compete for zero dollars, yeah. and we were like, we got no. a, we got a case of vodka for you. I yeah. So the contest never happened, but we all hung out in the hotel in Moscow for like four days. It was like on a military base, and everybody was really bombed. It was weird. Yeah. It was a, a military museum, a Russian military museum. So yeah. they had like all these tanks, and they had cool stuff around. But it was it was strange. <laughs> I'll just leave that there. There was some weird stuff that happened. Yeah. But um, yeah, some dudes started shooting blank blank rounds out of a rifle at Will Blunt and the whole dirt crew because they thought it was funny to watch them jump behind dirt. Wow. I have never heard that yeah. part of the story. Gnarly. Wow. Came out of a door with a gun with like blanks in it and just started shooting. Bah, 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 bah. And they were like, oh, crap. And they all jumped behind like the dirt hills and stuff. And they all these Russian dudes started laughing at them. 
Oh my god! And it was like, what <laughs> is going on? That it, was it. It was like, it was a. They were blanks. They yeah. weren't, they weren't no, really I know. The, the, the whole contest was like supposedly like mob backed and all that stuff. It was, like, yeah, I mean, I, who, I've heard I so many different stories. I don't know all that stuff. I just know I showed up to ride the contest and it didn't happen because there was yeah something with the money. So I don't know all the ins and outs of how that yeah. worked out. Um, so it was on the cool top, on the to top of the mega there, ramp. The they had built. So hold on, before was it the same? It, they shipped same the ramp. X Games ramp mm-hmm. there. It was the ramp, same ramp. Everything was the same. Yeah it, yeah, it was, it was literally the best that I had felt that ramp ever set up. Wow! It was like the vert felt perfect, the rolling was perfect. The it felt good. I did my runs like that. I was gonna do. We had one day of practice, mm-hmm. and before everything kind of went downhill, and like I was like, "Yo, like this thing is set up. This is fire. Like this is good." And I, it was me and I forget who else was riding, but maybe Vince, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and like we were, it, it felt good. Like I was doing like the three flips and flip whips and stuff, and it felt good on the jump. And like the quarter felt good. I didn't really, I don't, I don't ever really do like my quarter tricks until it's game time because it's, the risk, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. I, I just do tabletops because yeah. that's all I want to do. Yeah. Um, but it felt good. I was going high and landing smooth and stuff, and I was like, man, this is this is sweet. But they didn't because they things got kind of halted. They never put the rail so like the the way the top is they have the two big jumps on the outside and then the smaller jump is in the middle mm-hmm. right and the roll-ins match it so they're taller on the sides and the lower ones here but there's a deck across between the two upper roll-ins so there's that drop where the people drop in for the lower jump mm-hmm. and they had not finished putting the railings up pretty much all around they were, they were like there was like desktops like everywhere, house everywhere. Up there. yeah it was Hoffman. Yeah. it was Hoffman's yeah. house. um <laughs> And, but it was like, okay, well we can still ride. So like, we don't need those railings like to, to go up there and ride. It was just the very top really. Yeah. And, um, I was like, Ooh, I had thought in back in, uh, Munich, Germany, I had, I remembered like looking at that and thinking, Hey, if this wall wasn't here, how sick would it be to jump in? And I want to say rooftop or somebody was up there and we, we had the conversation. I, I don't remember if it was rooftop or not, but, um, I remember talking about it with somebody mm-hmm. and being like, that would be sick to jump in over the the lower roll in and land and then, and then ride the, the bigger set, you know, but then it was always like, oh, yeah, we got swerve over what, whatever, you know? Yeah. So I was like, okay. And I'm, that was kind of in the back of my head. And then when I got up there to, to ride the practice, the railing wasn't put in. You're like, ah. And I was like, ah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, this might need to happen. And I remember, I think, uh, I think it was, I think Elliot Sloan filmed it. I think, one of the skaters filmed yeah. it and like, I was like, let's do it. I'm doing it. Like, and it was just like one of those things where I was like, yeah, this has to happen. There won't, this won't have be another option. I have to do this now. Yeah. And so I got in the back corner, did it, dropped in, jumped fine. And it was like, the speed was perfect. Cause usually there's a little bit of variation with like the roll ins. Cause there's like higher, so whatever you have to get it just right. But hopping in and landing, it set you up perfect. And mm. I was like, nice. I did it a couple of times and I didn't do any tricks. I just, just jumped it, you know? And then, uh, I posted that on, on my Instagram, like, and it was like over a hundred thousand views. Like people, tweaking, it was just, sure. blah, blah, blah. it got, yeah. yeah, it just went yeah. crazy. And because of that, I, I hit up the X games guys, like the, the California skate parks guys. And I was like, Hey, like, let's take this rail out. And they're like, yeah, I don't know if it'll work this, that, whatever. Like, the content, this was Minneapolis from Minneapolis, I, I believe the first year in Minneapolis. And they they were like, Oh, maybe this, that, whatever, and it just didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, whatever. I'm like, not gonna cry about it. Yeah. And then uh fast forward to uh Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. It was in Sydney, and they had it set they had it set up, and it was me and Michael riding practice because and just a, and for people that know when when they do x games kind of overseas it's a little more loose it's a little more relaxed because the yeah. security guards are like yeah. kinda, there's like you know they're not necessarily there all the time they don't get it they're not so necessarily the guy that was at the top was like basically just up there to say hey it's clear you can go because yeah. there's medics down the bottom there's someone up top with the radio hey there's no one on the flat bottom drop Good. it's clear ramp's clear go and but he was one of the dudes that helped set it up 
so I, I'm looking and there's these two bars, like poles that stick up, scaffolding poles, and there's a piece of scaffolding across the, t- the, the top of it in that middle section right there where I jumped off in, in Moscow. And it's just the one bar. And I'm just like, normally there's like a banner or something across there. So it's like a wall or they'll put like yeah. actual put wood, you know, so it's like an actual wall there. But there's just this one bar and there's like a little pin. And I was like, my Kel's over there. And I'm, I was like, hey, man. He's like, what's up? And I was like, you got like a, a crescent wrench? And he was like, yeah. I was like, let's take that bar off. And he was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, I was like, tell you what. You give me the crescent wrench and tell him I forced you. I did it. You can you can blame it on me. And he was like, "All right." And so he gave me. I took it off and I jumped down it a couple times. And of course, Mike Hell was just like, "Dude, bro, dude." Like, yeah, he yeah. was like looking at it like, "I wanna," but screw that. Like kind of yeah. like had like the like the the healthy reserve, you know. And uh, and then shortly after, I was like, "I have to." start doing tricks because i had had all these things floating in my head since moscow like i want to three it i want to whip it i want all these things i wanted to do i was just like dude so i the first thing i think i did down i think i did like a turn down down it which is pretty savage actually yeah it it felt good and it felt fine hit the jump fine cool came back up we sessioned it like mike kelt like didn't touch it the first day he was just like dude like i don't know about this like he wanted to i could tell he really wanted to but it was like and I, but I, and I started doing tail ups down it that, that day. And like, I did like, I don't, I don't remember, like I did a, a handful Yeah, and it got yeah. to where it was, it was comfortable. I was like, okay, yeah, I can do it. That's exactly what I was going to say because I was there in Sydney and yeah. I think we shot a couple of photos of uh-huh. it and, or maybe even video too. I don't know. And I, and I just how casual yeah. you were with it well, was you have, like, I think it's like 16 foot of drop. Yeah. By the time I'm hit, like, it's only like. 10 9 10 feet mm-hmm. to the deck yeah but then where i'm landing is like another full sheet down so it's literally like a 16 foot vertical drop and it's kind of i mean going back to what you said it's kind of it's kind of surprising that it almost does work because yeah, of, because you do that drop and you you would think you don't get as much speed because you need yeah. to go to the quarter but you're yeah. you're moving at it when you, Sorry, when you the, do it so the, you're actually Branson, come on out you're actually moving forward when you do it, so it adds that little bit extra yeah. speed because you're starting from a dead stop on the roll in, and you're rolling. Yeah. So that 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 that's true. Yeah. Forward momentum kind of travels carries, carries, carries a little you. bit. Yeah. But yeah, so I got comfortable with the tail whips in practice before the day before, and then it was like game time the next day, and yeah, uh, I had I had some like personal stuff that was really rough that I was yeah. going through yeah. that 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 day actually, yeah. um, but. It's not a full excuse for why I didn't ride good that day, but it's it's an it's, it's it weighs on you. It. Yeah, I mean it's um, some family stuff. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, but the next day, like that was actually kind of the one thing that took my mind off of that that stuff, and so it was like, okay, I can just focus on something else. Yeah, and um, we lost a baby is what it, what it yeah, is. Yeah, I, don't, I, know. I yeah. don't want people to be yeah. like you know. But anyway, yeah. um. That being said, like, it, it, yeah, makes my eyes burn. <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so I could focus on riding like the ramp Yeah. and Michael was like, I was like trying to get it like, dude, you have to, you have to do it. You have to do it. And, uh, I could tell he was like, Oh man, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Whatnot. So we get up there and literally like, who was it? It was, uh, Was it Jay or was it Jay? It might've been Jay Tui or one of the other guys. I can't remember who it was. One of the other guys was like, yo, how is that thing like to jump in like that? Cause they, they didn't ride practice as much as we yeah. did. Did Jay ride? Mega yeah. Ramp? Oh, yeah, okay. he did. He did. Okay. They had like a qualifier the day before okay. and he killed it. Oh, of course. He killed yeah. it. Oh my gosh, dude. He killed it. It was awesome to watch him ride. Oh, yeah, he did. I love yeah. watching him. Ride. Yeah. But, uh, I forget who it was, but it, it was, somebody else wanted to do it too Mm because they saw me doing it in practice and they were like how is that and i was like i was like dude it's it's sick you should do it but oh no 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 no. i remember who it was it was um oh gosh the name is 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 totally i'm blanking on the name now i mean how many people ride mega ramp dang it i'll come back to it i'll come back to it i have the face in my my head but the name's gone who's he ride for because i hit my head a lot i I mean he's uh does a lot of shows um 
long hair. Looks like a surfer, bro. Uh, Alex Landeros. Thank you. I'm sorry, yes. Alex. I, I, no. yeah, I was trying really hard. My brain does that sometimes. Uh-huh. So that's it was what Alex. I, that's, that's what I'm here for. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was Alex, and he was like, "How is that?" And I was like, "It's sick. You should do it." And yeah. and so he was like, "I think I'm gonna do it too." I was like, "All right, cool." So I, I got up and before the thing started, I was like, "Hey guys, I just would like to ask a favor. Like, I'm towards the end of the pack because of my previous standings. I was one of the last ones to go. I was like, please, if you're gonna do the drop in, just do it on your second run so yeah. that I can do it first in a contest. So, That's cool. So that yeah. I can get my first, the first one I can do it and be the one that kind of presents it to the world in contest form. And they were like, yeah, that, that's cool. Like, everyone respected that and was totally cool with it. So no one did it the first run. And then my first run, I did the whip drop in and then it was just game on for everybody. As yeah. far as I was concerned, I wanted everybody to do it. You yeah. know, I was like, yeah. this is sick. This is cool. This is something changing. Mega ramp. It, it changes it and makes it fresh and, and something different that's yeah. like, cool and like and uh helps solidify that maybe we could do it again and again and again and again you know and just the progression of of the sport so to speak it it, it really is and that was kind it's of very the art- niche sport but well yeah, yeah but it, i mean you have you have something that's two obstacles and then naturally there's a third obstacle that just comes about with not a forced thing whatsoever yeah. just just via the uh the foresight of yeah. creativity or and whatever uh uh huevos of somebody (laughs) you know like yeah and it's it's such a cool thing and it was like and it's a way to progress this event without just people going higher or further Mm -hmm. you know like it's a it's a cool thing what was really funny about it was like (laughs) the athlete meeting the day before oh i'm sure oh my gosh (laughs) so just be (laughs) be candid and be real it had to be i mean it people were fired up yeah people were fired up that didn't want anything to do with it and thought that it was going to sabotage them getting a good score yeah and <laughs> yeah it, it, the judges were like scrambling they were like we need an emergency meeting cuz they saw me do it in practice and they were like oh crap yeah yeah. What do we do if this happens in the contest? And it's like, how do we score it? Yeah. Like, and we, we can't stop to, Morgan. We have yeah. to figure this out. And yeah, because it was happening. Yeah. Like it was definitely happening. There, I mean, and we posted it, you know, so it was it was out there, and like it was like, yeah, this is definitely going down. Um, so they had this emergency meeting on how to judge this thing, and what was decided was that it would not count against you if you didn't touch it. Mm-hmm. It would not be scored as like you know an obstacle an obstacle yeah. but there is an overall impression aspect to the scoring and it will not hurt your overall impression there you go it can only help yeah. your overall impression so it doesn't matter if you don't do it yeah but your overall impression could help goes up a little so bit so what if you was have the reaction stance. from the people that were not participating in the drop um there were some choice words in in the meeting and doors slammed and stuff and people screaming and and walking out and slamming doors behind him <laughs> and then there were people snickering yeah yeah because it was like i mean holy crap like this is like <laughs> get the popcorn and just like watch this happen yeah you know? yeah and uh, i mean every every year there's always somebody that has you know the whole attitude of what do I have to do to win this? Of course. Rather yeah. than just yeah. do you. Yeah. And if it's awesome, you're going to win. Yeah. And you know, that's just different people are wired differently and that's, that's how it is. You know, it's, it's cool. Like it is what it is and it, it comes out in the end, you know? Yeah. I don't always agree with judging, but it, I don't have to, do I? No, definitely not. The, the meeting was definitely spicy. Oh, I'm to sure. To say the least. Yeah. And, uh, some people just, you know, they just, upset and it's okay. it's one of those things okay. where you can look at it as an obstacle or an opportunity and the, yeah. the people that were for it or saw it as an opportunity to do something cool yeah and people are against it saw it as an obstacle because they couldn't compete. but it didn't it d- literally like um it's also hard to spring oh now there's a new obstacle in no, this and, you and know and that so. was never like I, that was never an intention i never yeah. had any, i just thought i wanted to do because it, it was cool and yeah different, of course you know something yeah. new um so come contest day, I asked all the guys to you know at least let me do the first the first one in the comp, and they all 
were like, yeah, that's really course. cool. That's, that's that's super cool. Actually, and it ended up being like Michael and I were the only ones that actually did it in the comp. But like Michael was, I was like, yo, what are you gonna do, man? And he's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think he was thinking like turn down or something, and then literally like out of nowhere, homie just threes it. That's cool. Like yeah, and it was like first. That was his, like he had jumped down it a couple times, but just jumped. Is it, it. still practice? No, no, this is in the contest. In the contest, it was the first in time. In practice, he threw I think it. he jumped it a couple times yeah. in practice. But like no no tra- he might have done like a turn down or something yeah. down it in practice, but didn't three it. Through three was like that was game time. Wow. And it was just like, I didn't know he was gonna do it. And I think hey, I'm I'm not sure he knew he was gonna do it necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. But he did it and it was perfect. He makes him look so good. Dude. Oh my god. Well, like he's goofy, so his feet are, it looks yeah. like a switch yeah. opposite. It looks like an opposite three, you know, like or I no, guess opposite. yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I always get mixed up because when I think of everyone oh, says switch, started. talking about opposite, I say switch is switch foot, and yeah. opposite is Swap opposite o. turn. Yeah, that's how in my head I think. No, so I it's a, anyway, it's a, that's another. Side. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole other. We could have a whole podcast <laughs> about that because no I dog, switch yeah. Smith, that man. Yeah, yeah, cool. switch sounds cooler. It does sound cooler. Yeah, oppo. It's what? wrong. Yeah, it is wrong. I said it. Yeah. Send, but, hate, send hate to this man. Well, but then you get guys like Felix that are <laughs> that are sw- actually doing switch footed opposite stuff. So then you actually need to denote yeah. what they're really doing. But yeah. for the most part, Danny Hickerson. Danny Hickerson, yeah. Which nobody knew what he was doing back then. No. So he was just a cluster cuss. Um, cluster cuss of amazingness. <laughs> I'm a dad, man. I try to stay away from. <laughs> I know. I need to get. I need to get on that level. Um, Cotter calls out guys that come over and he's like, did he just say a bad word? And I'm like, yes, he did. And then they're like, oh, he's a bad, bad person. (laughs) It's awesome. Um, so that was Sydney. That was Sydney. So, so that, and the funny thing about that was like, he did it like in his second run. So it was, but Michael was, I think a few, I want to say he was a few writers in front of me. There's a a little bit of a gap. So I was Mm -hmm. back up there when he did it. And it was funny because Keggy was announcing that one. He he had already stopped uh, competing in in Megram events at this time, Mm -hmm. which I hate because I love riding with Chad. It it would be awesome if he was still up there ripping, which I feel like he probably could, but he's adulting or something now. Yes. Um, Love you, Chad. Uh, but he was announcing, which I was really glad he was announcing, like the live feed mm-hmm. stuff. And then there was they had another guy that was not a BMX or I don't remember who, kind of a general guy or something. Yeah, but he's good, you know, announcer, just good at talking about stuff. So, uh, and it was one of those things where he tried to kind of pull like the the WWF thing out of it. Is like, whoa, I can't believe that Mike Hell would do that right in front of Morgan like that. Whoa. Like trying to make it seem like there was some kind of like, yeah, rivalry, like rivalry or like one upping or this or that. And Chad was like, no, 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 no. He was like, they were doing that in practice. Like Morgan stoked. He did that right now. That's cool. And like, cool. and the slow mo, I'm like this in the back, in the top, <laughs> like behind it, like, yeah, like as he's doing like a three. And, uh, so he, he was able to kind of put it in perspective for how it really was, yeah, which yeah. was, which was really Not good. Not play it up. Um, yeah, and no, no, not play it up in the well, other sense, but because he definitely was like, yeah. "Holy crap!" Like these dudes are, this is ridiculous. What's yeah, play it up in the sense of like the WWF style, right? Stuff. So that happened, and then the next event was uh, that was uh, November of uh, eighteen, I think, and then nineteen, it was uh, May, I think, was the the China comp. Yeah, I want to say it was early May. Yeah, because yeah. And uh, so that was the next time we got to ride the things. It was, it was that break, you know. And uh, they had it set up where they could just take out the, the middle piece. So they knew it. So they knew. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. like, okay, this, we is, like this, this is an obstacle. And yeah. the skaters all wanted in on it, too. Like, they were like, dude. Like, there was a handful of the skaters that really wanted to, to go to town on it. And But it was one of those things where, like, they were really worried about landing and shifting yeah, to and not shooting off the yeah. side of the ramp. I mean, what I mean, what in reality, what purpose does the middle jump even serve? Is does anybody win going through the middle jump? So they should probably get rid of it. My that's my uh, that's okay. my that's so, my uh, let's sitting on the chair opinion. Let's go back to my comment about fifteen feet or higher. Exactly. Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, so the. the Anyone that's serious about actually getting a good even score, on the skate side too, right? Yeah, they they yeah. ride the big one. Yeah, exactly. Because you you have to go faster at the quarter to go higher yep. and to do gnarly stuff, and you've got guys that will ride the big side and drag brakes all the way into the quarter. Yeah, skaters can't do that. Yeah, which 
yeah the, that's the way the huevos we're talking about mm-hmm. like the skate stuff blows me away because like those dudes are they're whatever they whatever they roll in on that's where they're they're going like you don't slow down yeah you're just they're in it <laughs> you're in it till it's st- till it slows down stops or so, or you fall off yeah and like um i feel like the 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 50 foot it should be if anything just a warm-up yeah yeah now i think it's cool that it's there because it, it opens up that drop gap if yeah. it wasn't there, there'd be no need for you could just have one giant roll in over the whole, you know, whatever. Or Fair have point. one one lip in the middle and have one roll in and that's it. Fair like point. mini mega. Yeah. So like I'm okay with it being there. I uh when they 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 used to do a full seventy foot gap when it was in Staples, it was fifty and seventy. Yeah. And then they made it sixty four. Fifty yeah. and sixty four or sixty two or something. They, they slowly started making it shorter and shorter for for whatever reason. I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. But like I when that started happening, because I was always the one that was like, "Yo, give me a hundred foot gap." <laughs> of course you would be. And like they like the I, I, one of the the mega ramp guys that was in charge of that type of stuff. I was like, "Yeah, I want a hundred foot gap." And he was like, "Nope." And I said, "Why?" He was because skaters won't want it. And I was like, "Do you know how to use spray paint?" And he was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Spray paint? You know how to spell his, spell BMX?" And he was like, "Well, yeah." I was like, "Spray paint BMX in that lip, <laughs> and skaters won't touch it." Yeah. It doesn't count for skaters, so they don't have to touch it. Yeah, but you know, in reality, they just didn't want. They knew what was going to happen. I mean, you go on a hundred foot jump, you're going to go a lot higher in a quarter. Yeah, bike. and the skaters don't slow down. Yeah, yeah. so uh, n- and neither not, do you. Is, is of not, course, not, yeah. Yeah. I can slow down though. Yeah. I have a break. Yeah. I do run a break, unlike yeah. some of the other guys on on the ramp. I, I run a break. I mean, are really I, sticking his foot in the tires? Insane. Yeah. No. Anyway, Hoffman's in that same boat. Um, <laughs> or Willie probably don't got no handrails in his house either. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, he might. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, so I want it bigger. But when they when they made it smaller, I had I had a little like inside personal protest that I wouldn't jump the fifty again mm-hmm. because what's the what's point? the point? Yeah, because you go there, you ride the fifty a couple times, and then you ride the seventy, and then you ne- or and you never touch the fifty again because it's like, why would I? This is better. Yeah. This is more gooder. So like I would literally I show up and this is like my little ritual every time I get there. I show up, I put my pads on, I go straight to the top and I drop in. Yeah. Like literally, I don't go up there and just sit about and think about it and this now. I'm just cause you have to knock the rust off every single year. You might as well just get it over. You flip with. it. You, I assume you flip it flip every it, time. Yeah. Yeah. Just ri- yeah. flip it or Superman seat grab. Huh. So a lot of times Superman I I would do there used to be more of a variance in like the speed on the rolling because sometimes you, you'll see like a six foot tall rolling up there and then a four, four foot tall rolling on top and it just changes and the lips are a little, the gaps are different. They were changing them, trying to find wherever their sweet spot was. So I was always the guinea pig for the big, the big, the big jump for BMX stuff. I would go up there and I would jump it and I'd be like, all right, guys, watch this, see what happens, and then you'll know how fast to go. I was like, I'm going to skid over the knuckle. And then coast, and then Superman seat grab. If I land in the perfect spot, no skid because Superman seat grab pushes through a little bit. Yeah. So if you skid and Superman seat grab and land perfect, you can no skid and just jump it and land perfect and fl- or flip and land perfect. Interesting. If you skid and Superman seat grab and land flat or low, skid more. Yeah. Skid to the first because because sometimes you have to skid all the way to the first the fifty foot roll in. Oh, crazy! To get it right, yeah. you, you kind of have to find that sweet spot. And, um, so that was always my, and if you, know, if, you if you land on the knuckle, like, holy crap, you need to like bunny hop in or something yeah. and pedal, pedal down or whatever. I don't know. I've never had to pedal down it. <laughs> I'm thick, but like, got the juice. There are a couple, like, I know James, James has to pedal down it. Yeah. Yeah. He does. <laughs> he he actually it. does. I never noticed. Oh, dude, yeah, I never thought about that. He a crank down the tallest roll in. Yeah. And he was still like just in, in, uh, Austin, he was barely making it over with a full crank. That's crazy. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've got like. I think I have ninety pounds on him. Yeah. So that's you're it. so you're one eighty. I'm just joking. What? That's a that's a dig at James. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I got you a little bit. Okay, got you. Ninety pounds. I get it. Uh, but um, but yeah. So like, <clears throat> James knows I love him. Yeah. 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 Um, I love James too. Yeah. Just for the record, I love you, James. So let's uh let's get into China. So China, they so China, they, they, they make it. So they they're make like, it. Come so on, they Morgan. Know, they know it's yeah. gonna happen, and like uh. But they had the board there because they weren't letting the skaters do it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And um, one of them, so no skaters it? done it yet, right? Uh, yeah, to my knowledge. Yeah, 
to my knowledge. Yeah. I know Danny. I talked to Danny in China, Danny Way, and like he was like, "That seems pretty cool." Like, uh, and I was like, "You know what? I'd like to see. I'd like to see no roll in from the top, just a oh, flat just a deck. straight gap. Yeah, so you have to gap it. That's, I mean, think about it though. That's what I'm saying. Is like in five years, yeah, that's what it's going to be. The roll in, just, yeah. just jump less, down it. Just jump down. It. That'd be cool. I think. And yeah. Danny thought it would be cool. He's like, "That'd be sick, man." Yeah. He was like, "That's cool." He's like, "I like what you guys are doing." Like, he was stoked on it, and he was like. It sounded like he was like, yeah, I'd like to try that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, they had the thing where you can take it out. And we get there and like I literally was like, well, shoot, I'm not going to touch the roll. So I just pulled the thing out and I went first, first, first roll off of it. First drop in. I just whipped it. <laughs> and it was like, OK, so I just did it. And I was like, yeah, that, that worked. And then the literally every single drop in I did that entire week, I did the tail up drop in. That's crazy. Like I didn't, I did not hit the jump once without doing the tail, the whip drop in, and like we did a little piece on it for ESPN, like yeah. filmed some stuff, and 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 it was that was a cool little thing that came out, you know, and like uh, and then I don't think, yeah, Michael three three that one too. Yeah, he three did. Yeah, he did yeah. that one too. That was awesome, and but we were the only two that that played with it again, and uh, we're we're up there game game time right before the comp started. This yeah. is where we were, we were originally starting. Yeah. With like, uh, and I'm looking down it, and I'm like, dang. And Michael goes, dub whip. And I was like, dude, that's gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, you got that, bro. And there's a whole other story with Michael, and you got that. And yeah, I'll, I'll, if you remember, I'll get, in, I'll go down that tangent. Mm, I don't remember. No, no, if you remember to tell me, I'll tell oh, the story okay. after right. we're done with okay. this story. All right. But um, that's a good story, too. But Michael tells it better, so maybe we should save that for maybe. when he's sitting here. I don't yeah. know. Either way, we'll he get lost him on. his teeth, so we'll it's no him. big deal. Um. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll, yeah, we'll save it then. <laughs> um. So anyway, he's like, you got that. And I was like, ah, I don't know, man. I was like, tell you what. I was like, we got four runs. I'm going to do the first three runs with a whip, and if I'm feeling it on the last one, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'll do it. If I'm if it feels right, I'm gonna do it. And he was like, hundred bucks, or so. No, I think he said hundred bucks before I said that because he was like, you got this, and I was like, ah, and he was hundred bucks. And then you were like, what's that? And he I was, was on the deck. Yeah, right? you were yeah. down below on the fifty foot yeah. rolling, and we're standing right above you. And you're like, what's that? And you like, popped your head out. Yeah. And Michael's like, he's gonna double whip drop in hundred bucks, and you were like, I got a hundred on that. I was like, two hundred bucks. Dang. And our Willie is right here, and our Willie goes, what? I got I got a hundred on that. So it's like three hundred bucks. So I was like, dang, 300 bucks. So then it, that was what it was. I was like, 300 bucks. So, and for the for the people that are listening and don't know Morgan, watching him like <laughs> wince and, and hesitate on something is almost worth the $100 <laughs> anyways. Because it, because if you actually put money up for, for Morgan and he's like, not like, okay, I'm in, you're like, oh, this is good. You know? <laughs> like, my yeah, this time. You're like, if you see him go, oh, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, Dude, it's, it's, I was like, that's a dumb, that's like, a that's a valuable moment that you yeah. created right there with that bet. So but, it was because I was like, dang, three hundred bucks. That's that's three hundred bucks. I feel like it was more. I was it, it, it was hundred yeah. from Michael, okay. hundred for you, and hundred from okay. from Ryan. Right. Yeah. And I was like, dang. And then then I was like, all right, last run. If I'm feeling it, if it feels right, yeah, it's on. Yeah. And it was like, okay, 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 good handshakes, whatever, like deal. And then come around to the last run, and I was just like. It's happening. Yeah. I think I remember it because I was down at the bottom at that point and you did your third run. <laughs> yeah. And I remember just going like saying something like my kills on top of the rolling with his, with his camera. Yeah. And then like our Willie's up there, like, like he's in the shot too and stuff. And I was just like, here we go. Huh. And I just, Come on. took the crank and popped it was like yep yep and it came right around no problem yeah. like pedals landed and then i screwed up the three flip but that's fine i was like made the 300 bucks. that clip actually is hilarious too because like the dub whip drop to the i think it was a no-handed three flip and i slid out i slide all the way down the landing and stop and end doing push-ups yeah like i literally stopped and started doing push-ups and then started doing the worm 
that clip has gone viral and been posted everywhere to oh, like man. ridiculous music and yeah. stuff. Like oh, people really? have made a bunch of funny memes out of it. <laughs> and it's always like, there's a bunch of like, uh, like positive thinking talk oh, guys oh, they're yeah. like always have a plan b like uh, make the best out of you know and they, oh, they, yeah. they do stuff like that with it but then there's a bunch of funny ones where it's like they're playing like dance music and like the lights start flickering when i start doing like dancing <laughs> and stuff. that one's pretty funny that one's gotten some some heavy mileage nice too. I'm pretty sure I've demoed you before the contest you, was officially even over yeah yeah we were down yeah. the bottom and you were just like here you go and i think i filmed you Venmoing me yeah. the hundred bucks. What's going on here? Well, Morgan, you happened to do a double tail with into the roll in, so now I owe you a hundred dollars. <laughs> and it's hundred dollars well spent. So. <laughs> and then Michael was like, he had the cash because we were there, you know, spending cash. Yeah. And then our Willie, we were at the after party, and he was like tossed because he won the contest. Like, yeah, he was loose. Holy crap! No, the, his run was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonkers the, oh, too. that was the beginning of the the, Dude, the, the beginning front, of the front real front flare. Oh yeah. my the, gosh. the above fifteen. That, I mean that oh, in yeah. the sense of the above fifteen he front flare. Easily eighteen. Yeah. On that sucker, yeah. and it was like ew, that was a zesty one. Yeah. Zesty. Yeah. That was a good, um, that was a good event. So good. Yeah. And but yeah, so we're at the after party, and like he's just like Woo! he's feeling it, and he's like hey, and he what did he do? Oh, Michael. It was Michael. Uh, basically, he goes, "Hey, he comes over, and Michael's got, or no, I had a full, like, not this big, probably about the glass this big, of straight vodka, <laughs> and like I was like <sniffs> sipping on it a little bit. I, I'll drink a little bit every now and then, you know, but mm -hmm. like I'm not like I don't drink all the time. But every now and then, it's fun. Whatever, I'll goof off. But um, I have this glass, and Zach Warden and Michael and I were there and Zach had like a bottle of vodka that he got because it was like the X games after they had bottles everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, we, I had like something else in there, a Red Bull or something else in there. And he just kept topping everybody off the whole time. <laughs> and the bottle just went, you just disappeared. But I've got this glass of basically straight vodka and our Willie walks up and Michael just goes, Hey Ryan, Hey Morgan says you pound this. He'll take twenty bucks off, like eighty bucks or whatever. And I was just like, "What? Like, what are you talking about?" And it, but he was just like, you know, in the moment, so I was like, "Oh yeah, sure, whatever." So he just grabs it. and He goes, "Ah!" And he was like, ah, "Whoa, what was that?" Like, and it was just, straight, dude, it was gnarly. But then he ended up giving me, uh, he gave me like a hundred bucks Australian, which is like eighty bucks US. So I was like, "All right, cool." I think it might still be in my wallet. He gave oh he gave you eighty Australian, a hundred Australian, a hundred Australian. Because Why do you still you really do have it? It might be I, there's uh, some money in here. No, it's not. This yeah. is this is you worth, have pounds. Worth, this is five yeah. pounds. <laughs> I knew there was something. In here. It's uh, I don't know why. Yeah, that's a foul. You you need you need to. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's here. You might as well just give him back that when you see him, and then take get real cash. That's fine. Not real cash, but you know. It's fun. money. Okay. It was funny. It was it was worth it in the moment. Um, it was it was hilarious. What uh? But yeah, that and then that obviously snowballed into yeah. Like they made an actual like door that opened for Minneapolis. Oh right really? Here. Yeah. Oh wow. Because it was so, a couple a couple months. And then did later. they switch up the judging, or is it still the same? I don't think it was. No, it's still. I I believe it's still overall impression. Because okay. you don't have to do it. Like and that was just it. Like there's some guys that were like stressing like great now i have to do this and yeah. they had no interest in doing it yeah. and i i in no way he didn't I, want that i don't want to make yeah. people do something they don't want to do you know and like so the judging it, didn't change, change no, so because the you don't have to do it to get a score you okay. know and and then and that's how it should be yeah if there's another option if there's no option i mean if it's like no roll-ins like yeah. we were talking about a minute ago then yeah do something yeah. like i mean what you can just straight jump it because like the dirt comps, the Dutour dirt comps had that drop in at the start, you know, like yeah. it's no different than that. And dudes would do tricks into that. Like I mean, nasty would three sixty those drops and to start the line, and other dudes would just roll off it. And yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what is your honest take on the judging for Minneapolis? For the, the last one, yeah. Uh, for you're the, going there, huh? yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, because in reality, because uh. I worked the broadcast. Yeah. I did every I did every job that year, but uh, I was in the broadcast booth and I talked to Scotty afterwards, and he was of the opinion that what you did was harder than what so, Williams did. 
And there was uh, there's other people that are objectively say the same because they think that, you know, uh, a double back or a backflip uh, doesn't be a double tail whip. The, the quarter, your trick on the quarter was harder than what he did. And right. I forget the middle. Honestly, he did, he did a front, a front bike flip. Nothing you, front bike flip. And, and I did, did an alley. You handed three alley. Three flip. Right? Uh, no, you, it was, it was I, I jumped down the middle and just went over and, and did the no handed three flip. Oh, okay. Or I thought, I thought 20, you went from whatever. one jump to the other. Or no, no, that's one. Oh. That's when I do higher. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. No, th- my run was uh, on the, the right side. I okay. dropped, did the right side, and then did no handed 360 flip. Okay. So he wins. Did the I? Ju- Wait. <clears throat> no, you're right. I did alley oop over. Yeah. yeah. No, I did. did. Yeah, yeah, I did. So, so I, I went to the left and alley-ooped over, and, yeah. then, and then, yeah, to get more speed. God, I remember it so much better than you do. I hit my head a lot. Yeah. But, uh, I I mean, Ryan's, I love Ryan. Yeah. No, uh, I, awesome. you, made, you, you made killed it. I actually, I actually really like um, Ryan Williams as well. We've talked about doing the podcast. He's going right. to probably do a couple yeah, of podcasts awesome. in the near awesome. future. Um, I, I genuinely do like him. He, yeah. I think he's, I think yeah, yeah. meeting him no, is, like he spells a lot of things. He, there's this, the whole scooter thing doesn't sit right with a lot of BMXers. A lot of BMXers yeah. don't like the scooter thing and they, they would, you know, be like, oh, that's stupid. Whatever. That's scooter not ride. the subject, but Morgan. Answer the question. My, I'm getting, there. I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting, I'm getting and Ryan has been very aware of that. Yeah when he kind of entered the, the, the pro BMX side, the more core pro BMX side of things yes. that was outside of nitro. And he's very like, he's been very like careful not to like step on toes. If mm-hmm. that makes sense, if that makes sense and just come in and be like, I'm better than everybody, you know, like he very well could because he's amazing. But, um, and that I give him a ton of points mm-hmm. for that, for, for being, um, at least just, for being aware of it, you know, and, and not trying to, to, to be a, you know, yeah. Yeah. That way. Um, <clears throat> that being said, like the trick wise, I think a double whip is a lot scarier. Yeah. Maybe not scarier. Flip drop ins gnarly. It is. It is gnarly. There's definitely, I think no... a double whip has more potential to hurt you mm-hmm. because if you mess up, you're going over the bars, mm-hmm. a flip, you're looping out. That being said, um, the flip drop was amazing. I mean, the fact that he had never really done it was anything literally, on it. Like, I, did he drop it even? He dropped it a couple of times, he, yeah. I, but I not. Don't, he didn't practice it. And like, he was it like, wasn't something that he practiced. Yeah. Or, and it was like, he was just like in the moment and like, here it is. And it was and, cool. And for the people, yeah. for yeah. Because I, if I remember it correctly, he didn't know if he was going to do front flip or back flip. <laughs> yeah, it was either one. It was literally yeah. like... Originally, he told me he was gonna try to front flip. Yeah, but that's what I heard too. Yeah. He was like, "I'm gonna do, I'm gonna front flip it." And he's yeah. like, "No, I'm gonna back flip it." And he had never done a flip drop before either. Yeah. That was his first ever flip drop. So I think given, given the circumstances, it's definitely crazy. Yeah, but like, apples but, but to apples. and again, again, you have to look like we talked. Like, goes, I, was, I mean, it goes it goes back to the mountain biker uh, flipping off of the dentist drop. You know, it's yeah. like, is the tail whip harder or is the backflip harder? And it's like, well, those mountain bike dudes do the backflip all the time. Like, right. would he rather flip it or whip it? You know, like, I don't, right. I don't know, you know. In but. in my point of view, like, I, I thought, I thought what I did was, should have scored a little, a little bit higher. Yeah. Okay. Fair or, enough. I, or, or, or vice, whatever makes it work out. Yeah. But that being said, I'm in no way, like, sour over yeah, any yeah, of that you're stuff. You're not that type of dude. And, like, um... The rest of his run was amazing as well. Yeah, but it's just it's just you know it's, it's you can you can tit for tat stuff all day long and it, yeah. it in the end it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I'm stoked for Ryan. Yeah. I'm stoked that he won. I'm I'm stoked for him. So that's cool. yeah yeah it was a great, that. it was honestly the best big era yeah, I think in the last. I honestly like, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah no it, yeah, the, it, it, really it had was. like it had everything and yeah. it was exciting to watch and and um, except for James. Except I think for James getting hurt that was not good. That was not good. No, yeah. no, definitely not good. Um, I honestly think what happened was the hype, the hype machine. No, yeah. because he did it after I did it. Mm-hmm. I think it was like, in the moment, it was like, "Whoa, cool, a little bit better." You know, I think yeah. I think it was one of those type yeah. of things. Yeah. Because, but again, you can you can tit for tat things all day long. Gary was a judge. Doesn't right? matter. Yeah, Gary, it's Gary's fault. Yeah, it's Gary's fault. It, what Gary was a judge, wasn't he? Fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I just hope uh, I hope he hears that. <laughs> Let's do. I got two other things. Your wife Natalie rode BMX. Mm -hmm. You met her through BMX. Mm -hmm. What has that? you know, what was that relationship like in the beginning and kind of like she ended up, because a lot of people don't know. I mean, I feel like people these days don't know because like women's BMX has progressed so far. It's about to be in the Olympics, mm -hmm. but your wife like made a all woman's video, mm -hmm. correct? And she mm -hmm. literally was like one of the earlier, yeah. you know, next to Nina and- uh, Yeah, she was one of the original, yeah. like and that's women what, BMX that's, crew. Yeah, credit, credit to her for, uh -huh. you know, like, but still to this day, nobody's made a full length female DVD besides Nat, your wife. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. So, how did you guys end up meeting? What was it? You know, like. Uh, it was a uh, Metro Jam oh, 2005. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five, 2005 in um, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. She showed up and it was, it was actually kind of funny because, like, uh, <laughs> she, I had all those stupid fake tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do that, this thing. The so, sleeve. for anyone that doesn't oh, no, no, know not this. The sleeve, yeah. You have, not, the, well, not the, the sleeve sleeve, but the, yeah, the, fir the yeah, the first the first year I went was when we did that road trip, the camping on the side of the road road trip from mm -hmm. SD to Vancouver, oh four. No three. That was oh three. Mm -hmm. so it three. was oh three, I think. Yes, I met her in oh four. That's what it was. So it was oh three. And uh we got to I think we were in Spokane, Washington, riding before the event, and I went there was like a machine that had all the fake tattoos. Yeah. And I just put like twenty dollars in it and just got a bunch of fake tattoos we showed up at, at the actual the little coliseum where the contest was went in the bathroom i shaved my arm <laughs> and stuck fake tattoos <laughs> all over it so i had a full sleeve of the press on like wet tattoos or yeah. whatever and they were so like cheesy like the hearts with tribal around them and dragons and butterflies and all kinds of weird stuff but what was hilarious was like in the photos, they all look real. Yeah. Because like, if you yeah. get about 15 feet away, they look legit. And yeah. And you're just like, well, this look like, you know, traditional or whatever. Like someone just did like, oh, I want this one. I want that one. I want, like you went through the book and just Flash art. Is yeah, that what it's flash, called? Yeah. And <laughs> they, I had so many people, like when, when the, the magazines started coming out, so many people that I grew up with at home, like that road, they're like, yo, when did you get all the tattoos? <laughs> I remember we were out, we like, were out at fake, some dude. night. We were out some night at a bar or something, and some girl came up to you and was like, was like I like your tattoos. You're like, they're not real. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me. I feel, I feel like I'd be like, oh, yeah, this, yeah they're real, whatever. <laughs> Just go with it. But like, uh, so, so like I had this, this thing. So then uh, the next year I did it again, of course, but I did both arms. Mm -hmm. So four, I did both arms and then, then that is dude, same thing. Like she saw me from across the way and was like, Ooh, like tattoos cute. Like that type of thing. And then I ended up like sitting right next to her and she was like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> but then it, it actually kind of worked. She was like, okay, this guy's funny. Yeah. And then, you know, she didn't say a word to me the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I was hitting on her hard the whole time. Oh, really? I was. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, "Dang, she's cute." Like, hit this chick, and like, nothing, wasn't having it. Nothing, dude. The last day, whenever everyone was leaving, she like stuck her tongue out at me. I was just like, "Oh, that was playful." Okay, that that was literally all I yeah. got. But yeah, there's there's like, <laughs> oh yeah, it was that's a, a whole yeah. that's a whole a whole story. But like, uh, and then like you know, fast forward to like inner bike that year, I think, which is only like a month or two after that. Was it? Well, that was know. when was Interbike? Usually September ish. Well, uh, Labor Day weekend was always the Metro Jam. Yeah. So oh, it was like, like a yeah. couple weeks later, maybe. Okay. She was at Interbike, yeah. and I saw her there, and there was more flirting and stuff going on. And I have pictures of us at that one, but oh, so cute. still nothing. And then uh, she came to Texas, and and she was hanging out with Nina, and I think Nina actually just like handed her the phone. Nina had called me for some reason, like we're gonna ride or something, and it was when Nina was in Dallas. And she just handed it to Natalie and was like, oh, someone wants to talk to you. And then that was there it. There you go. Got her number. That was so, it. So, uh, boom, downhill from there. Now we have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> but yeah, she, she wrote and she, yeah. she, she, she killed it. She, I was actually judging the women's contest at that Metro Jam that she wrote. That was her first like contest, mm. big contest she wrote where there was actually a woman's class. I think that was the first contest with a woman's class. That's cool. And I was judging it and she, she rode in a skirt. 
<laughs> Every dude with a camera was out there. She was doing like a foot jam on the wedge. They were trying to get underneath and like take photos of the foot jam. Not me. But she had shorts on, so. Not me. You were like, yeah, I know her already. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, when, when did she kind of fade away from riding? Just kind of like career uh, stuff? Or? So she rode for a pretty good while. Even after we got married, she was riding for a while. And then when she got more into school, like, yeah. Because she's a physical therapist? No. So she she was originally uh, was going to do physical therapy. That was her major. Then she switched to, well, our dog had this, his gut twisted. We had uh-huh. a Rhodesian Ridgeback for years, and his gut twisted, and like he was like dying, basically. So it took him to the, the vet ER, and they were able to like do emergency surgery on him and like straighten him out. Yeah. But his spleen was all enlarged, so they removed his spleen, and Natalie was like in there when that was happening, and the the vet that we've known for years she he was like you want to help because she was asking questions like oh this is like crazy and she actually got to help remove his spleen and stuff and she's like this is amazing because she was like she got to feel his heart and all this stuff like i mean that sounds really gnarly it does sound gnarly but the thing is like she was fascinated because of the anatomy part side of, of her brain from like the stuff she's going to school for she's like this is amazing i get to like I can see all this stuff. I can see it and feel it and whatnot. And that in her head was like a switch. It was like, I would like to be a surgeon Hmm. because I can do this on my dog and it doesn't bother me, which might as well have been our kid at that point in time, you know? Yeah. And she's like, I could do this on anybody if I could do that on something so close to us. You know, that that was kind of like the thought process. Yeah. So then she's like, okay, med school. So then she started going the med school route and putting all of her energy towards doing pre-med stuff and then ended up applying for med school for like three years, got an interview. And it was one of those things where it was like, we would have had to move to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And at that point she was, I think six months pregnant, caught her. Mm. And it was like, we're going to have a newborn by the time you get here. And it was like, they, she got waitlisted, which means she got a spot, but they, the way med schools work, at least to my knowledge is they basically will accept more people than they have spots for, Mm -hmm. because a lot of people will get accepted into multiple schools and they'll have to pick one. And then it leaves an open spot. So they accept more people and then you get waitlisted if you're there and then you get a spot when it opens up. So basically she got waitlisted, which means they accepted her, but there wasn't a seat for her at the moment. And it was kind of like in that limbo stage where yeah, do you move? Do you uproot your entire life on a yeah, yeah. on a maybe yeah, and 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 then she at the same time she got offered the job because she was teaching anatomy and physiology labs at a local college in Tyler, and she was already kind of established there, and they offered her a full time position. At the same time, we got this wait list thing, and it was like uh, so she's a college professor. Uproot, move professor, that, whatever. Officially now, huh? Yeah, so she's been there for goodness seven years i think oh wow that's cool Something like that yeah teaching amp labs and she's getting her master's right now so that she can teach lecture oh cool that's so awesome. technically she's not a, a prof but she's she is one of she's the best getting, she's teachers. getting there uh, i'll say it she won't say it but i'll say it she's she's like if you go to like rate my professor she's like one of the highest rated in a large area yeah i mean for that subject i i mean i say it all the time so she with, teaches with anatomy things, and physiology labs but it's like somebody that's like dedicated enough to mm-hmm. like you know she filmed a full dvd she got yeah. good at bike riding and like yeah. on an upper on an upper level like she was yeah. legitimately and she she filmed good. she filmed the chick flick dvd during when she was in school doing yeah. the pre-med stuff. yeah and it's like that yeah. that sort of uh dedication and passion and motivation carries into other aspects mm-hmm. and it's like yeah like what she was going to be good at anything yeah. that she applies herself to so that's cool and you guys yeah. got the family now you yeah. guys are killing it so um, little guy growing like a weed. I know, right? It's awesome. He That's rides cool. too. Like he, he like I got him one of those little uh, balance bikes, mm-hmm. and like he's never been on training wheels ever. At when he was two, he actually rode. Uh, I had him riding like the flat bottom of the mega ramp and stuff. And then uh, it was twenty seventeen. I want to say eighteen. No, he was born in sixteen. It was twenty eighteen mm-hmm. X Games. Uh, we had his little balance bike, and like. Right after the last event was park BMX park bowl bowl so yeah. to speak, and they that was the last event of the X Games that year. So as soon as it was over, like the whole shebang was over basically, and they did like a group photo of all the staff in the bottom of the bowl from up top right after the event, and so we're all hanging out on the deck because we were up there for the watching the the contest, mm-hmm. and then pretty much as soon as it was over, the bowl's empty, and I was like, "Yo, Kyrie, you want to ride?" And like the whoever was up there they're like yeah whatever go for it so I, I put his bike and i got him down in there and he was like 
scooting around the bowl, going down the little waterfall, carving the quarters at two. Yeah, that's awesome. obviously with his balance bike. Yeah, using his feet, yeah, but like, yeah. and then people started crowding in to get this huge group photo. And every time he'd come around the loop, they would part like he's like the Red Sea part, and he'd come through, and they're all cheering for him, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> loving it, dude, like just hamming it up. That's awesome. And uh, but yeah, come like his fifth birthday is in February. We got him a little, uh, Hoffman had these two prototypes of like the little kids bikes, little Mm -hmm. 12 inch bikes. And I was like, Hey Matt, do you have any kids bikes? He's like, yeah, I've got two prototypes. The blue one, like uh, psycho already claimed it for his grandkid. So, but I have a pink one, like the girls one or whatever. You can have that one if you want. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to paint it anyway. So yeah, cool. So he sent it to me, I stripped it down, painted it the same color as my bike and put like the Wade stickers on it. So it's a miniature version of my, my frame, my Wade frame basically. And looks the same and everything. Got the pedals on it. Literally gave it to him for his birthday. And he got on it and took off first go. That's crazy. First time ever getting on a pedal bike. Got on it and just wow, just shot off. That's cool. And now he rides that at the park. Hell yeah. So cool. He's been yeah. He's he's dropped in on the four foot mini on his little balance bike and like getting it. Yeah, he gets it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. What uh, the last question I had was kind of a little top three thing. Okay. Accomplishments in life in general, on and off the bike. So like, you know, three off the bike, three on the bike. I know this is hard. I know this is hard. So yeah. we could we could cut it up a little bit. I but. mean, family is is number one probably. Yeah, of course. Like, just like the being blessed enough to be able to have that in yeah. my life and and enjoy it so much. Yeah. Um. I should have. You know what? I should have done. Know, rewind. Song. Rewind. Yeah. I don't know if we, I mean, it's just hard because I was going to say accomplishments yeah. on the bike, craziest, scariest tricks he's done, and then, okay. uh, and then crashes. But I don't know if you want to. You so know. if you just want to talk about like the family stuff that that's off the bike, that I'd say that's like, we can do all, one, two and three right there yeah. because you yeah. got, you got a wife, you got like kiddo, everything balled into one, the yeah. house, like just our, the, our family, we all live close. And like, like I live next door to where I grew up, which is like. The property I grew up on is like 16 acres where my mom and dad's house is, yeah. which you've you've been there, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then when you say next door, it's not really. It's like not next door. door. It's like a yeah. couple hundred yards yeah. away, right? And yeah. then I have five acres next that butts up to my parents' property, and my house is on on that. And then so we've got like 21 acres of just freedom, freedom out yeah. there. Yeah. And then my brother and his uh, wife and four kids live. They built like a guest house in my mom and dad's house that they lived in and they basically outgrew it because they have four kids in like, you know, 1100 square foot was, it's pretty gnarly. Yeah. So my mom and dad actually swapped with them. So my mom and dad live in like the guest house now and they live in the house. The parents are very in. nice. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. I mean, but the, Wade the whole, yeah, the Wade compound, like that's, that's awesome. That's the way it worked out is, is amazing. It's a huge blessing. So cool. And then if you want to move into bike stuff, we can talk about yeah, bike stuff. on the bike. I mean, I don't know if there's, if there's three accomplishment on the bike three accomplishments on the bike yeah top three two three four whatever i mean as cheesy as it sounds winning an x games gold is huge yeah of course because it's like it's the x games whether you like the x games you don't like the x games i guarantee anyone that doesn't it's like x games whatever if they rode in an event and actually won it they'd be like this is sick yeah yeah. I mean, and it's like what we were talking about with the crowd and stuff. Like, it's just such a gnarly different experience from everyday riding. Yeah. And you had such a buildup so from 2006 yeah. to 17, I think you said it was. So it's like. Uh, my, like for, for gold? gold for yeah. go- gold was, uh, no, 17. Uh, it was. 15 or something. 11? 13. Oh. 2013 was my oh, first okay. gold. Well, either that, way, that was, still six that was years the, the of... world tour or whatever it was, 13. Oh, yeah. And then I got another gold uh, with when we did that Mega Ramp Doubles thing where mm, it was yeah. like a skater and a biker. Yeah. And, I like won the jackpot and got Bob Bernquist <laughs> as my teammate, <laughs> or he got, or he won the jackpot and got you. It was funny because like whenever he, he he told me like whenever like they were saying who got who, and he was like, they said Bob, you got Wade. He's like yes, <laughs> and I was like <laughs> I got Bob, yes. <laughs> it was the same exact reaction both ways. Like sweet, yeah. But I had actually uh, earlier in that that was twenty sixteen, I think twenty sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. I had actually crashed. Um, the night before in the BMX mega event and tweaked my leg, like my, my knee twisted kind of sideways a little bit the way I landed. And I bruised my tibia plateau. And I think I tore my, uh, meniscus when I did that. Cause like femur tibia 
and there's like a cup, the meniscus of the cup, and it went went like that, yeah. and my leg twisted. So when that happened, it like pinched and like tore the meniscus a little bit, which makes a little thing that just sucks. And just, I mean, they can trim that out or it just hurts. But then when it did that, it basically bumped into the other bone and it bruised the top of my shin bone essentially oh. tibia so every step you're just like oh oh gosh ah, it hurts <laughs> like your knee just it feels like it's falling apart so i actually had to ride that doubles event with my knee i couldn't even put weight on my on my leg and it was like i was limping up the stairs trying to figure <laughs> out like how am i even gonna ride and then literally i like, held it together just enough to actually pull my run and then you, i turned around it's funny because we always had this joke i don't know did you ever remember about the, like the Bernquist? celebration jokes were you ever in on Mm-mm, that no so bob bernquist has like the <laughs> the celebration we had n- nicknames for all his little moves that he would do when he would like pull a run uh-huh. and it was like the the indiscriminate point to nobody <laughs> and then he and he would do the lemon squeeze <laughs> he would just do the point the squeeze and we and then yeah. he had like all these other things that like he would like slide down or he would roll up the quarter and put his do a front flip and put his board on his back or oh, yeah. slide down yeah, or whatever yeah. so we had all these like a laundry list of things that he would do and we would take bets on which ones he would do in which order and like we just made a game out of it it was just hilarious because like obviously bob is unreal yeah, on, his yeah. sk- on his board and like he had all these like this little ritual he would do when he was celebrating so we all had jo- all these jokes about it and uh so whenever i pulled my run I basically went to the top and in the video, I like pointed at Bob and I did the lemon squeeze. And I pointed again, I did the lemon squeeze again. And then I went back and when I rode up the quarter, I jumped off and slid down on my back. And then he did his run and pulled it and did the exact same thing, slid down. And like, it just came out really funny. It was but good, it was but meanwhile, time. other people didn't even really know. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, no, yeah, that was yeah. like, and I'm not even sure Bob knew because I don't. I'm not sure he if if he actually sees this, this might be the first time he knows that we took bets on which uh, <laughs> which ones he would do. But so X Games would be like obviously huge as far as like uh, bike riding accomplishments. I mean, Nora Cups yeah. are equal or even a little more actually i think i think norc i would place norc winning or getting awarded a nora cup above an x games medal that's because cool. that's doesn't that's pay, everyone doesn't pay as well no, no i don't think it, <laughs> if i remember correctly it doesn't pay at all <laughs> but like uh, you get the sweet cup and and it's a it's an honor it's a true honor because it's all the other pro athletes voted on that yeah. like they're like no. hey this dude's killing it yeah and it's like it's more it's more of like a, a respect thing than anything else, I think. Yeah. For so sure. that's like that's huge. Um, as far as riding the bike goes, Baldy. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about Baldy. We can talk about some yeah. loops. You want to talk about some loops? Yeah. So Baldy loop. This one is uh, going to be good because there's some controversy. <laughs> I thought about. I was like, yeah, let's talk about Baldy, yeah, and then and then I was in the kitchen and I was like, oh fuck. So. <laughs> what, what, what? Oh, look at the cover <laughs> i mean we can't we can't not talk about it of course right uh, yeah so, we, can um, talk, we can talk about it uh i'll fight ball. you Lucy. i'll fight you no <laughs> yeah yeah it is what it is no i mean yeah but i mean it, it is one yeah, i think tuck no hander in the rock is pretty sweet though yeah so i shot that photo <laughs> that's i'm pretty was that, that your first cover that, shot that was my first cover um I was like, yeah, fuck Morgan. <laughs> I don't care about Baldy. Steve yeah. McCann, no hander at Woodward. That's the one. No. That's the one. Uh so yeah, we caught a lot of flack about that. I mean, obviously, so you looped Baldy for drop the hammer. Yeah. Um Jeff shot well, the photo. T- I mean, technically I mean you looped Baldy for yourself. Yeah, it had yeah. nothing to do with drop the hammer. I that was after that was we were, I mean, pretty much done filming when that happened for Drop the Hammer. Yeah. Um do you want the whole like? Do you want me to start the start with the Baldy thing or like how, like? Because we did so we talked about we did that road trip up to from San Diego up to Vancouver. Oh yeah, for yeah. for the Metro Jam. Did the did the loop and tour? Basically. The loop tour. It was yeah. the loop training tour. I mean, yeah. we went to uh, Leaving, Le- Leavenworth, Washington was the first one. I think we went to Leavenworth. Yeah. Le- how do you pronounce it? Capsule. There was a capsule, and that was the one that was that was actually the photo that that was used for the ads for Drop the Hammer in the magazine. Mm-hmm. Like it was the me looping the capsule yeah at, is it leaving worth or leaven i don't know i apologize to worth. anyone that lives there yeah. if i said it wrong but yeah. um you know what i always think of when we talk about that when you said said that i think of 
uh, I'm gonna have to bleep it, but what snatchy Washington? Remember? <laughs> I don't can you remember, can you remember the real name of it? On that on that trip? Yeah, was it, it was the one? With the, it was that park we rode. Fuck, tangent. The park we rode where the the skate park was made by prisoners and they had the four oh, by eight yeah. section and it literally it was like if you we ro- rode the you, trails earlier yeah. and then went over there and you rode around the corner it was g- like g- every g- section was like a different tranny and like a wedge and, they, and it was like, made yeah. for the people it was they they're like all right criminals come out here <laughs> and make this skate park <laughs> and you get this four by eight section yeah and, and everyone you make got their the own transition section. and everybody got their own section so, so imagine like, blah, 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 blah. riding that around the court and to add to that fantastic quality of the park you would just be there and every couple of minutes a car would drive by and yell obscenities at you that's right and i can't remember the name of the town but it sounded and the locals were like no we just call it wet (laughs) snatch washington wenatchee wenatchee is that it it was on our way to spokane wasn't it i think so yeah it was yeah (laughs) just uh, uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that trip that it's, trip it's a, is it's, that's my favorite trip i've ever yeah, been on the same same it was a good hands trip. down yeah. favorite trip i've ever been yeah. on the, um, organic trip. dude yeah. it was so good we, so, i tried to recreate it kind of not not like recreate yeah, capture but the magic i tried to capture the magic again and i did a trip very similar to that you were invited on it but you couldn't go for whatever reason busy guy yeah so busy but uh, we took Chris Ariaga instead, and he killed it. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Damn. He was he was shooting for plus, I think, at the oh, time. Okay. So we did an article in plus on it. Cool. It was a really fun trip. Nice. That's Slept awesome. on the side of the road in sleeping bags. The whole shebang. Really? Woke up one morning with a condom next to my head. It was great. That's... Didn't know it was there when I put my sleeping bag down in oh, the dark. Okay, I thought it showed up overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Chris Ariaga. Um... <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, but, um, yeah. So the, at any rate, so yeah, that trip Leavenworth. we we went, yeah, we went yeah. to like Leavenworth and we rode that capsule, mm-hmm. and it was the first capsule I'd ever ridden. I, in my head, I'd never even thought about doing like a full pipe loop or anything. Yeah. I was just like, "Whoa, look at this thing! That's cool! I've never even seen that before." And then like we started playing on it, and I started getting like pretty like close to the top on it, like pretty fast, and mm-hmm. it was like, "This is sweet!" And I think I actually did like a two a two and a Two and a half, two, yeah, and a quarter, two and a half or yeah. something like that, and like just kept like goofing off. It's in the it's in the credits to drop the hammer. Yeah. I think at the very end, but um, that was my first experience with anything upside downish like that. And then we we ended up going uh, that other park that had that weird like it was kind of like a capsule thing, but it had like the the fan yeah. above it that was kind of yeah. oververtish. I think it was oververt a little. It had bit. like a bubble inside of it, so you had to go. You had over to go it. over yeah. it. Yeah, so it, was it was like a, it looked like a one. like a dinner plate almost mm-hmm. with a little bubble in the middle, so you had to kind of go over it, cruise over it, and it, it was almost like every place we stopped was like gearing you a little more to do a full pipe, a little more, mm-hmm. and then we ended up at uh, Reedsport, mm-hmm. and that's the one with the. The cone. The cone yeah. that's open on the other side. So it's actually got air through it. And uh, I don't think it took me very long before I did it just because no. I did it over and over. I did it so many times that that session. Like yeah. I literally it was like, this is so fun. And I just kept looping it like over and over and over and over again. And then I don't know. Was it your idea? Whose idea was it to do it twice? I, I forget. But some somebody mentioned twice. And I looked at it and I was like, well, I mean – I could probably go like big to small because you kind of lose a little bit of speed when you go around that one at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I think it's sixteen to ten. I don't know. Yeah, something, something like that. Something like it that. gets it is smaller. Pretty, it is pretty tight at the bottom. It gets smaller. Yeah. Oh man, some of the yeah. clips of Corey riding it lately. Yeah, dude, yeah. it's so insane. Sick. Loop so sick. to fucking tire slide or yeah, whatever that the pocket, pocket into yeah. the loop thing. Yeah. Oh man, so fun to watch Corey yeah. ride. But like that thing, like yeah, so I looped it the one, one time and then it was just like okay yeah i'm gonna do it and then you were down there shooting the sequence because mm-hmm. i love that that's like one of my favorite clips yeah is you just like <laughs> i mean it was it was so like unbelievable especially at that time too like, you, we just had to never small. yeah you never even thought about something like this like what is this obstacle right well how is this possible like total fucking i had no idea yeah was so a, it worked out and then that was like oh snap cool that's sweet and that ended up making it into my into my part yeah um for drop the hammer and then fast forward a couple weeks we were i was 
down here in San Diego. I was staying with Gary, mm-hmm. and we were going to be riding in the uh, ASA Action Sports Championships in Pomona. Mm-hmm. And we saw the um, schedule, and it said, like, park practice, 8 a.m., vert practice, 9, 9 a.m., like, dirt, 10 a.m., whatever. It was all, like, early morning stuff. Mm-hmm. And then... Oh, no, no, no. Park practice was the one that was off. Everything was early morning, but park, which is what Gary and I were in, were was 8 p.m. Mm. And we were just like, that's got to be a typo. Like, there's no way that's not a typo. Everything else is in the morning. Why would park be at 8 p.m. like at the end of the night? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So naturally, we're like, cool. So we show up at 8 a.m. ready to ride park practice. And we get there and we're like, yeah, we're here for park. And like, cool. Uh, yeah, that's at 8 p.m. <laughs> and we were just like... Uh, okay, weird. So now we're in Pomona and we've got the whole like 12 hours to kill. Yeah. And, uh, I, I was like, well, what do you want to do, Gary? And he just goes, I don't know. Why don't you go loot Baldy? And I said, okay. And then that was the conversation. And, and then it was like, <laughs> sweet. Yeah, let's do it. And I think Walter was with us too. Walter yeah. was there. So Walter was like, what, what? So we, we went and I called Z and uh or no i don't think i call i think walter called z maybe i could see that yeah. but it was one of those things he was actually shooting with uh martinez somewhere out in huntington beach or something like that he was like in the middle of shooting something yeah and he was like hey cory gotta go <laughs> i'm sure cory yeah, like, no, yeah. 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 he told cory and cory was like yeah go get out of here yeah so like he he left he met us at baldy and we went out there and set everything up and and yeah one and done basically it was a one and done yeah, yeah. that's crazy so, then, Mike Hernandez was there too. Like he, he, I think he worked for the cameras. Crazy. I yeah. mean, obviously. So then the the photo comes out. Obviously, so, it's the banger in or the it's the banger and drop the hammer. Well, rewind a little bit. The same day that I looped Baldy mm-hmm. was the day that the um, BMX Plus issue came out with the fake one. No, no, it was it was it was real. It was Snowden looping that that pipe. It was kind of a tighter pipe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was in the yeah. cover of Plus. Yeah. The sa- I literally, we went back to the event and Booth or whoever had the the copy that wasn't even stapled together yet. It was just like the folded like preprint copy <laughs> yeah. or whatever. And like we were like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh. And it was like one of those things where I was like, oh, dang. Cause like, and I know like Snowden and uh, uh, Austin Coleman mm-hmm. had both had – Baldy on their list because mm. like, they were like the LA street dude, yeah, you know, true. thing. Yeah, Snowden was killing it with the loops too at that time. Yeah, so. like I, I'm so Snowden did did the the one loop, but it was it was way tighter. I don't know how big it actually was, but it was like I mean I think his head stayed in the same spot pretty much. It was yeah. like Nyo! like the bike just went around, and I I'm pretty sure Austin did it too that that same day, and mm-hmm. I think their roommate that doesn't even ride did it. No, it's a dude, Dave. It's the guy that did the crook to one hander lander on El Toro. Oh, was it? Yeah, I mean, he was he was like a gnarly rider, but he I'd like, always heard that it was like he, a dude that didn't even ride did it, and he, I was like, well, I mean, it's he's not. like yeah, he like kind of. I mean, he was he was basically like apparent. I mean, I don't want to discredit the dude, but apparently he like wasn't very good. But then like he had like a time a time period where he was just like full send, and he did a bunch of crazy shit. Like he crooked El Toro the center rail. That's gnarly. But then he. He landed and his hand blew off, but he rode away, and it was like, I mean, I'm counts. Good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it so it was like stuff sometimes, like that. Sometimes and he, like, the, the NAR adds to it. Yeah, no, I, I literally, yeah, <laughs> I believe that. Uh, I just said that to somebody, like the, uh, oh, the the Yeah Dude Sick podcast. The mm. guy asked questions every once in a while, and I was like, yeah, if you. A, a little bit of sketch in a clip like shows that it yeah. was scary. Oh, dude, I've and always that it, it, and then also it just adds entertainment value. So it gives you something else to of, look at. I, I briefly looked through like the Instagram post you made earlier mm-hmm. about on the unclicked account mm-hmm. at some of the questions, and one of them was, "Who do you think the most underrated rider is?" And I was like, "That's a hard one," but this conversation made me think of it. Tom Haugen. Mm, that's an interesting one because Tom made everything look way too easy. Mm-hmm. The dude did so much gnarly stuff yeah. that was like gnarly in today's standards, gnarly. Yeah. But he did it so just effortlessly. Technician. That it was just like, eh, I mean, that 
I could probably do that. <laughs> like, no, you can't yeah. do you yeah. can't do that. Yeah. You know, like like tooth to bars and bar, all, dude, such gnarly stuff. Yeah, I haven't thought about him in a while. Yeah, I mean, he's. That's true. I put front brakes on my bike years ago to learn the suicide three sixty. Oh yeah, yeah. Where you tab the front brake? Yeah. I because of of him. That's why I did that. That's cool. But then um, I put my lever in my pocket and I turned down on vert and I took it off. I understandable. Crashed yeah. really hard. Um, but yeah, so so snow so did yeah, that so the plus going and it was like out. in the pl- literally looking at the magazine like this is awkward because we literally just got back from Baldwin. did you say it did you tell him or not i don't fully rem- i don't remember yeah. if we i guess it didn't really matter if it's i don't like, remember if we put it out there yeah. or we kind of kept it on the under wraps a little bit i think we might have kind of kept it like a little bit like on the DL because that was back in a time when everything wasn't just instantly on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you, there was no you, Instagram. you film, yeah, you film a clip for a video part and that was my banger. Yeah. I'm not going to tell anybody I did that. Yeah, yeah. They're going to see it when the video comes out and there's, and then it's actually going to be a banger, you yeah. know, like that's kind of, I, I think we kept it like, I don't think we, we brought it up, Yeah, but that was also the one where I got the, the middle, the middle page of plus doing the S rail in oh, Boulder. Yeah, yeah. It was in that same issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, which was the clip right before the, the Baldy clip and dropped the hammer. But uh, I, I know that, like, I remember talking to Austin about it, like, years later. And I, there was definitely some, like, butt hurt. Oh, yeah. Which I, I love. I love both those dudes. And I would never do something like that intentionally. But, yeah. I mean, that's. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, you, you, it, you live here. Yeah. You could have gone. It's right there. It. You that's can the, do it any, anytime you want. It's like, it's, it's literally, like, right down the road. Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's no there's so, no rules with that stuff. I, yeah. I don't think unless it you know there's a whole that's but the a whole the other, spectrum, the other but. thing with that that was hilarious is the BMX Plus thing. That's I think that's probably my yeah, that's mine. The the BMX Plus thing like they ran an April Fool's joke as like the closing page. Yeah, that, that of Solinsky. Jim Solinsky looping Baldy. They yeah. photoshopped him riding around Baldy. Like yeah. they got a picture of him like in the pipe and just went and just yeah. And then in the caption it said something like. Blah 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 blah. This April, Jim. Blah, blah blah. You'd have to be a fool not to recognize how good a writer. Something I I just made yeah. that completely up. Yeah. But April Fools were the only two words in the caption that were bold. Yeah. And they were right on top of each other. So yeah. if you just glanced at it, it says April Fools. Yeah. Yeah. But people. Believe the story that. I heard. <laughs> the, the the story I heard is uh, Trans World Skate Magazine ran the cover of Burnquist Looping Baldy shortly after that came out and the story i heard was that the one of the dudes i think it was from, a skate mag was it i, I thought it was, was trans world uh, whatever magazine mag. had yeah. had bob yeah. looping body it yeah. was that whoever shot the photo basically said you know hey we have to get like because that's a famous spot yeah. for skating yeah. and bmx oh they motivated them to go do it yes yeah. and and i know bob Kind of pulled it. He went around it and then like slammed into the other wall. Yeah, he did go around it, slammed into the other wall, and then he tried it again. He came off the top and like broke both his wrists or something Ooh, like that. I didn't know. But that. they ran it anyway, even though it wasn't like a hundred percent clean. Yeah, and backdated it before the plus. Huh. Interesting. So as if they shot it before the plus, but it, that was fake, so it didn't <laughs> matter anyway. And then I was all nervous because that story, whether it's true or not, that's just what I heard. Yeah. I was all nervous the first time I went to Burnquist's house when I was filming for Grounded uh, when I was on Etnies. Yeah. Because, like, Manzuri, Mike Manzuri was filming Grounded, and he's obviously in, he's a skater, he's in with all those dudes and knows Bob and whatnot, and he called, hey, can we come around your house and film? Bob was like, yeah, sure, cool, no problem. Bob's freaking awesome. I love Bob. Yeah. Like, he's high up on my list of favorite humans. But, like, I didn't know him at the time, and I just knew this. This is the story that I had heard, you know, about this this Baldy thing, and I'd seen Bob at like a do tour a couple times, and it was just kind of one of those things where it was probably just like I just saw him, and he well, it's like awkward. He to probably didn't even up. know who I was, you yeah, know. He was like yeah. just looked at me, and I was like, oh shit, he hates me or whatever, you know. Like, cause, but because I went to his house to film for Grounded, and when we got there, they had the corkscrew open loop. Yeah. And it was like right there when you walk in, you're like, holy crap. And it's like this gnarly looking like spike device. And I was like, this is, this looks amazing. I need to do this thing. And I pulled it within a half an hour getting there. And uh, that was obviously in, in my section. And like my bike got stuck on it at one point, blew yeah. some spokes out or whatever, made for a really dramatic, you know, thing. But um, 
so I pulled this thing and the groundskeeper, Bob wasn't there, but the groundskeeper dude that lives there and takes care of stuff was there. And he was like, dude, congratulations, man. Bob stared at that thing for three weeks before he even tried it. And I was like, oh crap. Because now the whole baldy thing and then that. Yeah. And like, like I was just like, well, he's probably going to hate me, whatever. And then I saw him at due tour and he kind of like just looked at me or just went like something like that. I don't know. But I, I just took it as like, I don't know what that means. Like whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, Fast forward a few Actually years. Actually had a conversation. And he's just like, dude, this is... A, what, you know, he's just stoked. Yeah. Bob's stoked. Well, do we uh, do we talk about the lack of cover or no? Yeah, you can talk about that. Why not? Sure. Okay. Uh, it wasn't on the cover. No, it wasn't. And we caught a lot of shit for it. I was a little bummed, internet. but it, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, Baldy is... Like, that was like a monumental thing. I think, I think if given the circumstances... It had been... It, because yeah. it was like... Plus, just put a full pipe loop on on the cover, and then trend or whatever skateboard mag. I think it was skateboard mag, or maybe it was Thrasher. I don't know. One a eight yeah. major skateboard magazine put Bob looping it on their cover, and then we were like, okay, do we just like follow the curve? I feel like that was like a year or so, wasn't it? It was close. Or was it? Was no, it close? It was pretty close. Yeah, and I think. Uh, you know, in, I know, in, I know. Z Z like got into it. Over with Losi, didn't yeah. he? Over it, because like, yeah. I, I remember Z was saying he was fighting over it. But. Yeah, and it was like I, it, it was my first cover photo. So, in the sense of like, just to illustrate that I was, I See, was, I'm learning I was something. I, I don't know this whole yeah, story I from was, your yeah, side of it. Yeah, I was young. Like I, you know, there wasn't Losi was the boss. You know, mm-hmm. so um, there wasn't. You could state your opinion, but in the end, that was Losi's yeah, decision. Yeah. And I'm not knocking Losi. I love Losi absolutely. He's the one that literally put me here by giving me a shot at a worker ride there's so, a there's a thing in the, in like the south if you ever want to like talk crap on someone but you don't want it to seem like you're talking crap you uh-huh. just say bless his little heart before you know bless after his, it bless his little heart <laughs> low see you know no it, bless his little heart but and yeah. then you, you say whatever you bless want his little fine. heart it's fine or you but, say at the end no word. but there was also there was also this formula that we had is a little heart <laughs> no he's got a big old heart no he, but he's little oh Okay. You know, we measure like, like, like height. How many losies did you go over coping? Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it, now. Losies going to hear this and be yeah. like, yeah, it's a thing. I'm it's a cr- thing. Yeah. <laughs> How many losies was that? Uh, I mean, five foot air, it's about six losies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm yeah. joking. Losies, um, losies awesome. W- there was a formula with the magazine in the sense that, uh, Obviously, certain images, like a, a YouTube thumbnail is the way you could describe it, where it's not necessarily the, the best action, the best, the most difficult action makes the best cover image with the cl- cleanness of the image, etc. And then also we tried to tie in the cover with the feature mm-hmm. of the of the thing where where your photo yeah i remember that yeah because it was was just a floating mccann had the interview i think in that in that yeah and so it's supposed to be tied in with a major feature and and we didn't have a feature that related to drop the hammer or you and then there was the other full pipe stuff going Mm -hmm. around and at that time i didn't that was a that was a good photo though that it was that that photo was was legit it was better than the skate one that they used for sure Mm -hmm. and because of z of course but um z always gets it first go i just always love that with him I don't think uh, I was of strong enough will at the time to say, hey, <laughs> this is the correct decision or we should do this or whatever, you know? Yeah. And then, but I, f- I feel like it is a miss, you know? And I think That's like Micah, Micah, Micah Kranz, I think, got at me and I was probably defensive at the time because I probably tried to explain the way it worked, you know? But, and I don't think there was any, I can't remember who McCann rode for. Did you ride for Mongoose back then? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think like so. I don't. Uh, to my knowledge, I, I mean, to my knowledge, there was no, there was no like this is mongoose needs a cover type thing that was never once on the table or anything like that. Um, and and really to the end, I mean, to the end of ride, just what people s- say or whatever, it was covers weren't for sale. It wasn't like mm-hmm. oh this guy gets it because of this. Like we den- definitely held the cover at least when when Mulligan and I and. You know, when I was of yeah. mindfulness to be a big like deal. to understand like, cover how of it magazines worked, a big deal. Yeah, it wasn't it was never for sale like that. So yeah. I don't think I don't think there was any money stuff that was never said by Losi in any sense, but it was just about tying it in and then kind of the the time of it, the timing of it being like, Oh, Baldy getting Luke was just on the cover of another magazine. Right. Like, do we follow that? No. 
Like that was the main thing, and it's <laughs> yeah. like, but in the end, it's like it is what it is. Like I don't miss, you know. I mean, but, you can look at it either way. Yeah. I I remember being like a little bit like, <sighs> yeah, that's, yeah. But I mean, if it was anybody else, they deal. would have had their ass in chafed about. But it, you I know? yeah, like, I so. and I honestly like yeah. if if it was if it was an issue with me, it only lasted like half a minute. Yeah, because yeah. I was yeah. just like, eh, well, no, it is what it is. No, I mean, I holy crap, I remember like those uh, trans world things that would come out that would give like stats on mm-hmm. like the coverage of riders and different riders and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like remember, remember those things? Yeah, like yeah. literally you know, like news. I, yeah, that one, yeah. like I used to be tied with Mira in, yeah. in yeah. ride magazine, yeah. like every month yeah. and it would go back and forth between who got the most coverage in the magazine. Yeah. And it was right around that same time, you know? So it wasn't like I was hurting for like coverage. So yeah, I wasn't yeah, like, yeah. that was my shot. Yeah. yeah you had no, other covers. no. So, Okay, well, I'm glad we sorted no, that out. No, no big, it's no big, to, it's no big to, deal. It's sometimes it's, little it's nuggets of history. It's clearly been hurt, like, like nagging you for years, and you've just now. Well, no, it's funny because I didn't. <laughs> I had I had Baldy on my list, and yeah. I and I literally I when I went out to the kitchen, I was like, oh fuck, the cover. Like I forgot about that well, aspect of it. So no, it hasn't been that. You now, know? Ba- like, <laughs> but then you've looped Baldy ten, yeah, eight time, eight to ten times, at or least. Yeah. Uh, usually, I loop it. Five or six times every time I've been back, and you've been there. About, I've been, been back, back a times. handful of times since then. Can you double loop Baldy? Yeah, I think it's doable. Yeah, I, I, it's been on my to do. Yeah. I want to do it. All right, well, call me. I want to do it. Like it's like it's one of those things. Like I, I, I wouldn't. I don't want to say I'm doing. I don't want to call it out, but like I've thought of it a bunch mm-hmm. of times. Like, how cool would it be? Because you, you know how long it is, like to start at the top. Oh my god! And be like, rah, rah, womp, and then just keep going, and then yeah. do another one, and maybe do it the other way, like, and like, Fuck. I think it would be cool to do it multiple times in a row. Like, I think is yeah. what you were saying, yeah. but like, I also think it would be sick to do it multiple times in, in a, a run. run. Yeah, and actually, kind of like, I didn't even think about it like that. that yeah, because would be cool. like, I, yeah. it just would be cool. I mean, how much like. I mean, it would be that. Would, that would be like a viral esque video. Last Easy. time I was there. uh there was water pouring down yeah. it, and like I almost, like I, it, it would have been hard because of the guys I was with, I was with uh, Mike Hernandez and uh, Dane Beardsley. Mm-hmm. They probably would have fought me if I actually tried to do what I was thinking about yeah. doing, yeah, or refused to film, basically type stuff because it wasn't rushing like crazy. Like I think you could probably stand in the water and it wouldn't like blow your feet out. But I kind of wanted, cause you could ride up to that hole, you know, yeah. where it dumps in. Yeah. I, I wanted to like bunny hop in and get up in the pipe and actually do a run through the water. <laughs> but I didn't really want to get washed into the hole. Yeah. The hole's gnarly dumb. <laughs> I've fallen in that hole. That shit's up. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah. It's not cool. Um, but yeah, every time I go back, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, I'm here. Might as well do when it. When you loop it's, it, do you, do you cork it a little bit or no? Or do you go pretty straight? I, unintentionally, yeah. yeah. I try to go kind of straight, yeah. but did you ever see the video that I had where I came out of it out of the top? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Right out of the top, yeah. I literally yeah. came out of the top of the pipe and landed flat. <laughs> and then the next try, I came out and landed on the the vert wall part of it. <laughs> like I came out a little farther down and like stuck to the vert wall. So you did the Corey Walsh on accident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> total accident. It was just like the last little Survival bit, but it was like, Walsh. oh my gosh. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh well cool thank you I think we'll we'll wrap it up here I got okay. pick I got a I got a small child I got to pick up in oh you got to get child so, stuff yeah no but I, I feel you I feel um you. I love you I love you too right thank you for coming <laughs> thank you for breaking the record too you did, had, did I we? mean we took some breaks but I'm pretty sure you beat Mueller so Mueller's was fun to watch yeah that so, was a good one we'll do a part two with him maybe do a part two with you I feel like I feel like we're still there's a lot of stories and there's in, still there's a lot to talk about so. there's a lot there's a lot of history so. Yeah. And we say a part two with Moeller, part two, well, part two with Nyquist, part two with Moeller, part two with you. So Thanks. thank you for coming by. Take your coffee. Mm. You're sponsored by like a gun coffee or something, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> Black Rifle Coffee. They yeah. are awesome, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming down. Nice. Next unclicked is with Felix Prangenberg. Nice. So, the German. So, is he German? He's German. So that's it. Thank you, guys. Word. I don't know. I'm not the host. I don't know how to end it. <laughs> Doesn't like Dennis like do stuff like he this? He used to, yeah. <laughs> yeah.